All right, who is this person here? Somebody got a bunch of African flags. Is that a? I see you got one Nigerian flag. Is that a? Is that a Ghanaian flag? What's that other flag? The brother with the bunny. Put your microphone on, man. Okay, brother. Um, oat milk. Hop on, man. Oat milk. Hop on. All right. So oat milk don't want to hop on. Let's get in umgame in game. Let's get him game. In game. Let's turn your microphone on. Man, what is going on with y'all's phones, man? Um, Damiano or Imgame? Are y'all in between Postmates orders? I don't know what's going on with y'all. All right, let me get some more people in. Why you guys are delivering orders? Uh, let's get Command Dev. Command Dev in here. Command Dev. All right, his thing is connecting. Why is everybody's phone all janky tonight, man? Y'all slowing up the game here. All right. Command Dev, are you ready? Some of y'all niggas are in these housing projects, and the reception is bad. There's nothing wrong with the housing projects, but open the window. You know, the thick project walls. Okay. Let's get, um, let's get, um, Foxy Fry. Let's get Foxy Fry in here. Let me get Shay out of here. I don't know what Shay is doing. She's just sitting there. Like Foxy Fry. Okay. Ngame, you back? All right. I don't know why y'all getting in the mix and y'all can't talk. All right, let's get um, Fiad. All right, Fuad or Fiad, how am I pronouncing your name? Let's turn your microphone on, sir. Ungame, are you ready? And um, um, Ortensia? Or Tensia, are you can you turn your microphone on or y'all just want to listen in and just sit here? Okay. Don't wash under your arms when you're live on air. I know the smell is very, very strong. I know it. But at least wash your underarms when you get off the phone with me. Okay? And I hope you put some root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. I know you are very musty. I get it. But you could have done that before you got on the call. And please be sure to get root work deodorant. It's formulated for, for you. It'll even keep you fresh. All right. Umgame, Ngame, are you ready to get on? Because your brethren is over here tripping. Ngame? All right. Mgame is chilling at the Amazon warehouse right now. Let's get um Mariam. Let's get Mariam. Mariam in the building. Good evening. Well, good morning, Tyreek. How are you, brother? Hey, Mariam. How are you, beloved? I am fine, beloved. Um, I wish you would kick in Gambe oat milk off of your stage because he's posted something in your jumbotron. Oh, he did? Which one? Um, oh. In game. Oh, okay. In game and gambe. Um, you have oh, okay. all these um, tether trolls up here. And then, of course, you have the toilet flushing bad bunny bush meat eating rabbit dog over there in the corner um, that's yeah. um, doing flushes on stage. I mean, they are so unoriginal. How about burning some charcoal and putting it under your musty armpits. Crawl back into your <laughs> mammy's womb. 
I'm telling you, y'all need to go somewhere with that. I mean, you have two trolls yeah. on stage. They are ridiculous. But um, yes. back to FBA business, you are so correct, brother. Um, we could see the writing on the wall a mile away, all the tricks and games that um, these open oppressors are doing. Um, they can't mess with us because we're codified and we're standing with you, brother. And we can't wait until your wonderful, wonderful documentary, Microphone Check Drop. I mean, we are so anticipated. We have plan to have black parties to um, watch it. So, oh, yes. Love you, brother. Oh, yeah. Thank you, beloved. So, yeah, the, the, the tether posted up in the Jumbotron here, Tariq Wise, FBA carrying the American flag. The country of America is very young. You should find your African tribe and stop dividing blacks. You are better waving an African flag. Nigga, America is older than almost all of those African countries. What are you talking about, sir? That's why you're over there flushing toilets, because you can't stand on no real, true, for real business. Dude, those African nations over there are relatively new. America is older than that. Most of those countries are extremely new. Some of those countries, like, only formulated within the last 60 years. You don't want to play that game, sir. The tethers always try to shame us for standing up for our foundation of Black American patriotism. We built a phenomenal nation. We actually built this thing from scratch. We come from that lineage. We built this joint from scratch. We're not guests in this bitch. People want to make us guests here so bad. We're saying no. This is our joint. Are we dominated by the white supremacists? The white supremacists dominate the globe. They dominate the world. That doesn't take away from us building this joint. And, and we stayed and stood on the business we were supposed to stay on. We didn't flee. When the shit got rough, we put our chin up and we handled some business. And we didn't flee from it. And a lot of people want to project that fleeing failed mentality onto us where when things go rough, you bounce some damn where. No. And they keep trying to Africanize us to make it seem like we're supposed to be waving some African. What African flag are we supposed to be waving? Let, let, let me talk to some of the tethers in here. Nobody's over there offering us no dual citizenship in these brand new ass countries. Just keep it real. See, the, I, I, what I don't do, I, I'm not a Wakanda salesman. I don't play that selling Wakanda shit. If you deal with me, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. And it, and, and it might ruffle feathers. See, there's a lot of people who are non-FBA. Sometimes they get upset because, you know, I tell the truth about what's happening over there. You dig it? I'm cool with a lot of people. And again, I've done the, the Hidden Color series, which, you know, gave insight on foundational Black American history, African history, Aboriginal history, Black history all around the world. But I'm still going to keep it 100. In the current state, over there, it's not really popping like that. It's not popping. And we're the only ones who's going to get things popping over here. If there's any going to, there's going to be any kind of global black revolution, it's going to start here. Uh, and when I say revolution, it has to be a cultural revolution before anything. But if anything's going to pop off as far as black people getting their freedom globally, it's going to start here. You understand? And that's the long and short of it. Um, let me get his thing off the, the jumbotron. Um,
And right now, a lot of black folks are getting over that fear of deprivation. We got this thing where, well, let's keep quiet or they're going to take something away from us. That fear is gone because we're looking around and we're like, we ain't really got nothing like that. So we might as well go for hours. You see? They're not going to see the, the scare tactics ain't working no more. See, the Democrats were real good at that. Hey, man, forget about reparations. Y'all better vote for us because if you Trump get in office, oh, boy. Ooh, y'all been not. It's going to be hell to pay when Trump get in office. Oh, no. ooh, ooh, the scary Trump, the white supremacists, ooh, and the alt right. And you don't want Trump in office now. And Trump got in office and didn't a damn thing happen to us. And that's why we're looking around like, oh, okay. See, that's the thing that, that messed them up. That's that messed the Democrats up. They tried to oversell the Trump boogeyman stuff. And we're looking like, wait a minute, wait a minute. All of the weird shit that happened to black people was happening under the damn Democrats. But no, Trump, Trump's America. Trump, no, 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 no. Biden and Obama, most of the killings of black people out here on the streets by race soldiers was under Biden and Obama. Don't y'all do that Trump shit. Most of these killings of black people that they let happen, these were happening in Democratic run cities with Democratic police chiefs, Democratic mayors. You understand? Ferguson, all of these places. Up there in um, Minnesota, these are the Democrats. They're not going to scare us with the boogeyman right wingers. And that's where they messed up. When Alton Sterling, that was under the Democrats. Philando Castile, under the Democrats. Eric Garner, under the Democrats. Tamir Rice, under the Democrats. All these people killing black folks and just walking off scot-free. That happened under the Democrats. The Democrats didn't do shit, but created a, a bogus controlled opposition movement with the Black Lives Matter bedwinches that was co-opting the energy that was really popping off in the streets. They tried to create their little grassroots movement to head off that rebellious energy that was popping off in the streets. That's why up in Ferguson, so many of the real riders were getting killed mysteriously. What's up, Terry? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, brother? Uh, not much. Uh, I just wanted to put the tinfoil Kufi hat back on and uh, mention uh, the whole Israel and Palestine conflict going on. Um, it's a kind of a coincidence, or maybe there's a connection to you know how they're trying to get a lot of prominent black Americans to speak on it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, their charges, uh, not charges, but accusations uh, of sexual assault with uh, certain people who are prominent, like P. Diddy. <clears throat> but that that one might be a little bit different. But Jamie Foxx uh, recently got hit with uh, um, sexual assault charges. Right. Yeah. You know what? You know what? You might be so, over something, brother. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I was just trying to figure out maybe if there's a connection because uh, Hollywood is run by a lot of people who favor Israel and they've been trying to get people to speak on it, especially black Americans. Mm. So, man, brother, you might be on to something right there, brother. I, I didn't think about that. Thank you for the call. Right. Huh. That, 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 you know, that's an interesting theory. You know, I'll, a lot of black folks are, are being run through the ringer in the media. Is that a form of punishment? Because Michael Rappaport did say they got a list of who's naughty and nice. That's what Michael Rappaport says. And now they, a lot of black entertainers are just being thrown under the bus. So is this their little revenge? Well, they were doing that anyway even before the conflict started. So they that's the M.O. anyway. See, this is why we, black folks, every time the media starts demonizing black folks, we don't jump on that bandwagon so fast. We have to stop jumping on that bandwagon.
Because what happens is a lot of black folks like to jump on the damn bandwagon when a black person is getting attacked so that you can get some clicks and views on your page, which is a very fucked up habit that black folks got to stop doing. Learn how to get on code. Uh, let's get C.C. Friedman in here. All right, C.C. Friedman. What's up, beloved? Hey, man, how are you? Hey, beloved, I'm how good. are you? Just a quick suggestion to clear you up. I hear you're over there congested. Have you tried Slippery yeah. Elm? Um, no. You might want to try that. It's really, really good. Is it a tea? It's a, um, you know, it's a herb that you, you know, put in tea. Okay. Yeah, because you know I was got having it. all those issues from COVID. But yeah. uh, let me hit on a few points. What you were saying about Derek Chauvin, there was a space, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, some guy, I don't remember his name, white guy, crypto something. Every time we came in the room, he was like, oh, FBA's in here. So he only let white people speak. But they were in that space, the white people, the oppressive class were in there saying that Derek Chauvin should have had better protection. And that was kind of mind blowing to me because it's telling how they believe that this outright murderous criminal, a thug in blue, deserves special treatment in prison. Like how's he, yeah. yeah, how's he supposed to have special treatment? So like you said, if you don't commit the crime, you won't do the time. But what I've been noticing that's really telling is that they raise hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions for, for these killer cops. You remember Michael Slager that shot Walter mm -hmm. Scott in the back and then planted the taser? Oh, yeah. They raised millions yeah. for him. Kyle Rittenhouse, even though he's not a cop, he's a wannabe cop. And then Derek mm -hmm. Chauvin. So I've been looking at X lately as allowing people to use the N-word on the app openly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. watching the vitriol, it's gone like it's astronomical. I now see that these people, the oppressive class are so villainous, they would welcome slavery back. That's my opinion. So that's, yeah, yeah, that's the point I wanted to make. And then to the, hey. huh? Go ahead. Uh, Go and ahead. then to the Habesha guy that came up. Um, I like when they come up and say those dumb things because it's a great testament to the loving and embracing spirit that Black American freedmen have, that a lot of us are still thinking that, you know, the melanated immigrants, immigrants like Caribbeans, Africans, Afro-Latinos, are black that goes to show you that it's all a lie that we've never embraced them but right. yeah but but to as you say beloved habesha just know we're about to end all that since you all don't know how to act and can't end your tribalism but i'm gonna close with this last thing i put it in the um i should put it in the jumbotron i put it in the comment the you know the you know the comments below did you know that biden is giving reparations to um Mexicans? Yeah, I, I, I said that. Oh, earlier. I didn't hear I that. Like, yeah, 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 I said that. Oh. Yeah, they did for some reparations for Mexicans. I'm like, what the hell? So that's why I said we got to watch when they say reparations. We got to read the fine print. Yeah, man. but this came, let me read this one sentence from whitehouse.gov. And it says, um, well, let me read two sentences. Together, we're taking a balanced approach that lies at the heart of the Los Angeles Declaration on migration and protection. And we and 19 other nations have signed on to that agreement. So it includes enforcing our borders, increasing reparations, and opening a historic number of legal pathways for migrants. Mm -hmm. I just want to close with that. This is frightening. Yes, indeed. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You. See, that's why, yeah, the disrespect of the Democrats, man, we got to, they have to be checked on that. But um, the sister said something very interesting, too, how they raise so much money for these white supremacist killers and murderers. See, they've been like that ever since slavery. We brought up slavery. When, when Notice, when you talk about slavery, the dominant society, and we start talking about reparations, we always hear, well, I didn't own any slaves. I didn't have anything to do with none of that. Let me tell you something. The dominant white society were some of the main people helping to enforce slavery and anti-black racism during formal slavery. And they didn't really get any type of, at the moment, 
um, direct economic benefit from it. They got more of a psychological benefit. And they, they also did get an economic benefit because the whole economy was based on slave labor. Let's be very clear. So even if they didn't own a slave, you worked in a factory where the slave produced resources were being refined. But even the everyday poor white person, they were the ones in the militia groups, you know, volunteering to go round up black folks. You understand? They were the ones basically doing doing surveillance on black people all the time, helping to maintain those laws. They didn't own any um, black people, but they were the main ones doing surveillance, doing intel. Whenever a black person ran away from a plantation, white folks were lining up to, to go find them in droves. Don't let them act like they didn't have nothing to do with it. They did. When the lynchings would go down, go look at some of them lynching pictures. They would show up by the thousands, cheering, fighting over which body part to get. And they were always complicit in the anti-black racism. And then act like, well, I didn't, I didn't own nobody. I didn't, I didn't string nobody up in a tree. But you stood there and watched and cheered. During slavery, you stood there um, supporting the system, helping to to locate runaway black people. And even now, when black people are harmed by race soldiers or want to be race soldiers, they throw their little ducats in there to support them. You know, they, they try to act like their hands are clean. Uh, well, you should be mad at the police. No, I'm looking at you. You're the one supporting the written houses and the Zimmermans and all of these other people. Y'all sit up there and give these people millions of dollars in GoFundMe money. So it's supported by people who get a psychological benefit from seeing a white person do something oppressive to a black person. So they're all complicit in it. And let me see. Um, let me, so let's get Brother Terrain in here. What's up, Brother Terrain? Brother Terrain. How you doing this evening? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'll be better, man, when this food wears off. I've been dragging for the past three days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of points. Oh, uh, I wanted to throw one thing out there and make another point. Um, yeah. The situation with Derek Chauvin, um, I don't, you know, I'm sorry it happened that it wasn't finished, but I'll leave that alone. Right. But, um, <laughs> but um, I feel like that might be some internal prison politics that's going on because I guarantee you that dude is either being protected by the guards or by the Aryans um, gangs in there one way or the other. So, yeah. And so something, something about that is off. Cause I guarantee he's looked at as a hero in there on that. So that needs to be more investigated. The second thing I wanted to ask or throw out there is the um, politically, man, the, Biden administration is in serious trouble with black voters. And I know they are because I've seen more and more like more vicious attacks and more condescending attacks from a lot of the shills that are in the bag for Biden Harris. Now, I don't want to get into a conversation about who people want to vote for, but I've noticed that over the past couple of years, it was basically, you know, it was either stripping or get your booty to the polls or just shut up black man and just go vote because you're holding us back. But now I'm seeing this campaign of just straight up condescension, like you're too stupid to understand how the process works. And if you're upset with the administration and them funding Ukraine and Israel, then just shut up anyway and don't ask no questions and just go ahead and go vote. So I personally think that's going to be I think the Dems are going to be in for a very rude awakening by the fact that they're the issues that are important to their base. They're not paying attention to and they're being disrespectful to them about it because, you know, to the point where even Jamal Bowman is saying that the fact that we're not talking about reparations is going to hurt us in 2024 and people are disregarding that. So I'd love to get your take on what you think the political landscape is going to look like in 2024 in our land. Thank you, brother. Good question, man. And, and again, I've seen some of these videos and they're doing the same play with these Democratic shields. And, and Democrats, I hope y'all are listening. Y'all, people at the DNC, listen, we can smell your Democratic ops from a mile a damn way at this point because y'all have a, 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 a prototype that you use. There's always a little bed wenchy vibe 
It's always a tether. There's a tether bed winchy vibe. Uh, and like my man Terrain said, it's always a condescending tone. Um, they come out here, they start acting like black voters are dumb and we're too dumb to see that the Republicans are going to get us. They use the whole same, the same playbook. The, the sky is falling. If you let the Republicans get in office, the sky is going to fall. Everything, we're going to be back in slavery if you let the Republicans get back in office. The scare tactics that they try to use, they don't understand them shits don't work. All the hell that we've been receiving has been under the damn Democrats. You can't scare us with the Republican thing, that the Republicans are going to get us. That Y'all tried that, and it didn't work. And I've said this before, when, when Trump was in office, and I'm no fan of the, the Republicans, but Trump didn't really put any overtly anti-black policies out there. None. Trump didn't put any anti-black policies out there. But the damn Democrats, man, we were getting locked up left and right for anti-Asian hate crimes. We were being targeted for that nonsense. The Democrats are throwing all of these illegal immigrants into black neighborhoods. The black communities all over the country are begging for help. Like, hey, 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 Democrats, what are you doing? Y'all dumping these people into our neighborhoods. We don't know these people. They're using our facilities. We got to kick our kids out of sports facilities because y'all bringing in illegal immigrants. Y'all housing these people using our tax dollars. Some of these people are criminals. They had one dude from South America who was a damn uh, a murderer that got out of jail and came up here. I just saw a story about that guy from down there in South America. They even put him in a damn black community. So the black community is like, hey, man, what the hell? Y'all can't scare us with nothing that the Republicans are going to do. What are they going to do that you ain't doing? You dig? Y'all better cough up that bread that you owe us. We got to get that reparations thing happening. And bringing your disrespectful Democratic shills out here to try to shame us to try to talk like they're some kind of intellectual superiors, which they're not, especially with their tethers. That's another thing that I don't like. When y'all get y'all Democratic shills who are tethers, who are lucky to be over here and should be thanking us for helping them get over here, want to come and point their finger about how we're not smart enough to see the finesse that the Republicans are going to run on us. And no disrespect, I don't want no, I don't take political advice from tethers. You understand? If you couldn't fix your own homeland and people are pissing and chitting in the streets in your homeland, you can't say nothing to me. I don't want to hear nothing you have to say. You're not going to be condescending to me. And people over there in your homeland wiping their ass with leaves. You can't say nothing to me. No disrespect. I don't take any condescension from Democratic shield tethers. You understand? We're just not playing that game with them no more. So they're going to have to do what we're telling them to do. Break bread. Give us what's owed. Y'all give everybody else things that are not even owed to them. If they're grieved in any shape, way, form, or fashion, y'all write checks for them. Y'all need to start getting that popping for us. We don't give a damn if the white supremacists don't like it. They don't like anything we do anyway. We're past that like shit. We're talking about what's due. We ain't trying to sit around and hold hands and kick cans and sing Kumbaya no more. Black folks are finally getting a backbone and we're letting all, y'all know what the business is. All right. But let me get up out of here, man. I'm about to go get some of that, some of the herbs from somewhere. And um, y'all be good, man. I'll be um, on live tomorrow on my Tariq Radio YouTube channel. Y'all go to Tariq Radio and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll chop it up with you guys tomorrow. Peace. And then... All of these weird Negroes started popping up as the leaders. This is why we started to delineate. That was one of the main reasons we said, hey, we need to look around and see who's who. That was one of the main reasons the delineation movement started to pop off, because we would go to these protests all around the country and you know, we're ready for some action. We were like, what are we trying to do? Let, let's get something popping. Let's get some justice popping. And then we look around and niggas twerking and doing the wet coochie challenge and all of this weird stuff. And we start asking around, who are these people? Is this your man? Is, do, do, you, do you know this guy? And the people in the local areas was like, no, I thought they came with you. 
And we're like, no, I don't know these niggas. And we don't know them either. So we started checking everybody's paperwork. We start seeing all these weird Negroes pop up with Black Lives Matter signs and yelling and bullhorns. And they'll say one thing, oh, no justice, no peace, all these killings, and we need to understand trans lives matter too. And we're like, uh, uh, what? What the, who, who is this nigga? Whose man is this? So we started seeing that type of stuff all around the board. And then we start checking people's paperwork. Like, hey, where's this nigga from? Where's his mama from? Because in foundational black American society, somebody knows somebody. We know people. Everybody kind of knows each other. When somebody pops up, somebody can verify that person. Well, our parents are very good at that. Like, mom, who is that person? Oh, that's Clodelia's baby um, uncle's daughter. Okay. Yeah. Remember Clodelia? I went to school with her grandmother. She had a baby out of wedlock by Leophis. Leophis had went to another school, and that's his son. You know, you know how your mom and them, people know, you know somebody. We be knowing people. Yeah. We know people. If you are from here, we know you. But then all of a sudden, these weird people start popping up, and nobody knew them. Nobody knew who these people were. The D-Ray McKessons. Remember him? He kind of fell off. But he, he would pop up and nobody knew where this nigga came from. To this day, don't nobody know where he comes from. Nobody knows anything about this dude's background. This nigga just showed up in a blue vest. Like, hey, y'all, I'm the leader. And then the camera started going on this guy as the leader of black people. And everybody in the streets was like, who is this nigga? He ended up getting smacked up out there in Ferguson, too, by the way. The homie smacked him up for doing that. But people were like, who are these folks? And we got to understand how controlled opposition works. There's a lot of controlled opposition out here. All right, let's get Somali, the Somalian person. What's happening? Hop on, man. How you doing, Tariq? Uh, we spoke last time. I brought up the question about the um, uh, what to do as a black person in the corporate community if uh, if you're trying to um, bypass the system of white supremacy. I live in Boston. That a uh, couple of things I wanted to touch up on. That Ethiopian tether that spoke before me, that guy does not represent East Africa at all. Um, he's just the person that's bucking to the white system. As soon as he comes here, he thinks he's better than everyone. Uh, I've been on yeah. both sides. I've been on both sides. I've seen what it's like to be around white folks. And I've seen what it's like to be around foundational black Americans such as yourself. And the treatment is completely, obviously different. Um, I, I get much more love from you guys. Um, uh, two things. Uh, last time you never spoke on the um, issue for reparations in Boston. What do you think should be the next step? Should we ignore that? Uh, should we should, should we not even pay attention to it? And well, you know what? I got to look. Hold on, hold on. I got to look into it. I don't know what the, the plan is out there because they got all of these little reparations programs that they're popping up now. They're calling them reparations. And when you look at the fine print, the shit looks real janky. So when I hear reparations, I'm like, let me see the rest of what that shit says. You got some stuff out here. I saw some. They're talking about reparations for Mexicans. Um we got to watch when some says reparations. We got to read the fine print now, man. We got to read every little bit of everything. We got to read everything they they throw out here talking about some damn reparations because they know that's a buzzword now. The grassroots, we made the word reparations hot. So now they're going to use that and try to trick bag it up. So I don't know what the Boston reparations thing is. I have no idea what's in it. I don't know who's who's the, the author of the, the document. I don't know any of that. So I would have to look at that. Reparations, just saying it, that ain't good enough no more. We got to get into the meat and potatoes. Reparations for who? Well, people who experience racism, no. Yeah, yeah, I put up a clip of a guy who's um, was a Guinean from Guinea. 
and he had a do rag on covering up his damn hairline, trying to blend in, talking about we need reparations for four hundred year of oppression. We need, we need, we need reparations. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So yeah, we gotta, we really gotta get this thing straight about who's supposed to be getting what and all that. Because now people are trying to hide hairlines and 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 put janky ass documents out here. So we need to really get this bullshit cleared up. It's a lot of funny style stuff going on out here. When the the, the word reparations, we didn't made it a hot topic. So now everybody wants to get on that bandwagon. So we got to watch every word. All right. It's, it's very important to get those numbers up to show what the grassroots can do and to show and to flex our grassroots power. I'm very proud of everybody who got involved with this film. So I keep everybody posted when the ticket sales go back up for microphone check. And it will be on microphonecheck.com. Microphonecheck.com. So we're waiting on everybody to get involved. Everybody pile on in. Some of the new people, if you're new, you guys give me a follow. If you are new here, you're popping on in the room, give me a cool follow, ladies and gentlemen. A few things we got to touch on before we get calls. <sighs> family, family, did y'all see the story? And shout out to my sister, Nikki the God. She, um... She posted this story early on. It was a black kid in Georgia. Now, this happened about a month or so ago, but um, the family's still trying to get justice. The black kid went off with his white buddies and ended up drowning somewhere. He went somewhere with his white friends, a little black kid, and didn't come home. The parents got worried, found out this kid was with his white buddies and drowned. Family... Black folks, black folks, black people, black people, black, black, black people. Family. Let me talk to the, the, the black people in here. When did y'all start doing this? Letting your kids just go off with the, the little white friends? When did, when did this start happening? I, I'm, I'm old school as hell. Do y'all remember when that was a no-no? Let, let's keep it a, a bean. Man, when I was growing up, Back in the day in FBA society, that was a no-no, and for good reason. That was just a no-no. Look, I, I remember as a kid, I had a, a white friend at school. I was in like the fifth grade, something like that. Maxwell, big fat white boy, but he was cool as hell. That was my buddy, Maxwell, real smart buddy, real witty guy. That was that was the homie. And, um, and that was like one of my best friends at school. You know, we chopped it up all the time and, um, you know, we correspond on the phone and then he was like, hey man, why don't you come, ask your mom, can you come um, spend the night at our crib, at our house? And I asked my mom, hey mom, can my, my buddy Maxwell, the, the little white homie, um, they wanted to know if I can go spend the night over there. So like, hell no. I'm like, why? That's the homie. He's real cool. Just know, you'll understand when you get old. <laughs> So I remember she was adamant about not that because I got black buddies. I had black buddies. We used to stay at their house all the time. So it kind of back then it kind of threw me off because yeah, my, my the little homies we stayed at the house all the time. But she was like, no, absolutely not. Hell to the damn no, no. And our parents and grandparents at that time they didn't let us stay at our white friends' homes. They just didn't. That was kind of an unspoken rule. Like, yeah, you don't really be up in the house posted like that. And even black people, let's be real, black people who were domestics, a lot of our grandparents worked as domestics. That was another thing where black people didn't like eating at white people's homes. That was a thing. They didn't like, unless they were making the food, but they didn't, there's a thing about black folks not going to white people's houses and eating their food. That's why, at, and, and even to this day, at your job, when you're, you're black people, where you at? How many of y'all got a lot of white coworkers and then they bring stuff from home? They bring you little dishes that they made. Hi, Shaquisha. I made a delicious casserole. You should try it. It's for the whole office. Y'all know good and well y'all don't be eating that shit. Y'all sit up there and y'all smile, but y'all know good and well when they turn their backs, Y'all run right to the dumpster. Y'all know not. Y'all don't touch none of it to this day. You know you don't. 
when they bring that stuff to work, oh, thanks, Karen. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I just ate. I just had lunch, but I'm going to tear this up when I, when I leave. I sure am. Mm-mm. Boy, your ass leave from work and drive right to a dumpster <laughs> and alley hoop that shit into the garbage can. You know good and well y'all don't eat that stuff. Yeah? So what the, the, these cases I'm seeing where black folks are going to white people's houses and you end up missing, you drown, something weird happens, you go on a hunting trip with them and you don't come back. What the hell is going on? Well, who's raising these for? What, what, what? I'm confused. Are y'all tethers? Well, what's going on? Where who's raising these people who don't know the rules? Listen, where I live, you know, it's kind of racially mixed, and my my sons they have white buddies and Hispanic buddies, and my sons be like, "Hey, can I go to such and such house to do a sleepover?" Um, hell no. Why? You'll understand when you get older. And I just, I explain to them now. I don't even wait till they get older. I explain to them now, hey, man, I don't trust them. But they're good. They, they're this and they're that. I don't trust them. No, no, no. I don't trust none of them. I don't, yeah, man, black folks, there's an unwritten rule. Man, you go up in a white person's house, they can literally legally do anything they want to do to you. You have no legal recourse for justice. When you get around them inside their homes, they can legally damn near do anything to you, black people. I really want y'all to get that in your head. You got to be careful. This is a very real thing. Don't let people fool you into this racial equality. No, man, the people in the dominant society, they got unwritten protections, there's a common law of white supremacy. And one of the rules is if a black person is in their house, they can do whatever and most likely won't get punished. It has to be so egregious in order for them to get punished like Jeffrey Dahmer. Look how long it took Jeffrey Dahmer to get brought to justice. He It, it had to be just body parts piled up to the ceiling in this man's house for them to say, OK, yeah, we, we might need to arrest this guy. Because people, remember, Jeffrey Dahmer, people had been telling on him for years. The black people were telling the police, hey, man, this dude is weird. Something is off. Something's going on in his apartment. They'd called the police on that man dozens of times. They didn't do anything. In, in one situation, there were some black girls in the neighborhood. They actually rescued one of the damn victims. The cop came along and gave the victim back to Jeffrey Dahmer. You understand what I'm saying? When you are in these folks' homes, there's an unwritten rule that they're allowed to do whatever to you. Family, there's a case in um, West Virginia. Did y'all hear about this case where this white couple adopted these black kids and they're like, got the black kids living as slaves. The white couple just got arrested. They had black kids living in a barn during doing like field work. They had them like literally enslaved, like in the 1800s. They were... They were on that. This was in Virginia, West Virginia, right? It was a Virginia or West Virginia. Man, these folks are sick, dude. We don't, we got to understand what we're dealing with out here. We really got to understand what we're dealing with. Yeah. And letting your kids go off with their little old buddies who's non black, man. What are y'all on? When did y'all start doing that? Because I'm telling you, that was a no-no when we were growing up. Big time. So, yeah, we got to stop being on this naive kumbaya thing. It's very real out here. Just because these white supremacists are in denial. Just like um the sister who was the FedEx driver the other day. We posted that story about this sister talking about certain towns in Wisconsin and Illinois where they they feel a certain way about black people coming into those towns. And as a FedEx worker, she has issues there. And she's saying that, hey, some of these places, some of these little towns, they they don't really allow black people in there. So she felt a certain way about that. 
And then there were a bunch of white supremacists in the comment section. Oh, no, that's fake news. Oh, God, that's not true. Oh, that's so, uh, that's cap. There's black neighborhoods that I can't go to. So what about that? What about the black neighborhoods? Let me say this. That's a damn lie. White people can go to any neighborhood, black neighborhood and all. There's not one black neighborhood that white people are not safe in. White people are safe everywhere. Let's get don't don't get it twisted. White people are safe everywhere they go. White people stay in the hood. They be in the hood all the time. All right. You name a hood, there's gonna be some white people in there. White people are the landlords. Yeah, some of the they they run some of the businesses, and on the underground tip they be in there tricking off and buying drugs and all. They always go to the little red light district. Don't let them fool you. White people stay up in the damn hood. All right, there's no neighborhood where they can't go. Also, we got to understand these sundown towns. Um, these unwritten rules are reinforced by law enforcement in these sundown towns. That's what makes it so egregious. It's not just the regular citizens. It's the regular citizens um, with anti-black antagonism, and they're backed up by law enforcement. You understand? Because a lot of these sundown towns um, where black people would get hemmed up, it was the police helping with it. You understand? In many lynchings, it was the police helping the vigilante citizens. You don't have a, a black version of that. There's no neighborhood where black people are working with the police against white people. Zero communities like that. None. Nowhere. Don't ever let them try to make some kind of um, equal oppression game by talking about some low-income neighborhood that might be somewhat dangerous, but it's not dangerous to them. It's dangerous to people who engage themselves in street activity. But yeah, we got sundown towns out here, and it's very, very real. We're going to get calls in a minute. Y'all hold tight, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get calls in a minute. Um, did y'all hear about Denver? Denver was giving out... Um, and a couple of cities were doing this. They were giving out money to like homeless people. And I think in Denver, they were giving out like a thousand dollars to some of the homeless people there. They had some kind of program. And what happened was this kind of helped. It helped the city save money because a lot of the people kind of got up and um, used that money to get themselves together. So a lot of them got off the streets. A lot of them got it together to get gainful employment. A lot of them were not exhausting the resources that the the shelters and the mental institutions and places like that because that cost a lot of money maintaining them damn shelters so that little thousand dollars that they were giving people that low-key kind of boosted the economy because it got people up out of a rut so this is why the reparations thing is a great idea the reparations thing, man, when we get our reparations, that's going to boost the economy. That's going to be so phenomenal for the economy. The only problem people really have with it, just the psychic, um, psychological defeat they're going to feel that we actually pushed and got something done and implemented and we got a leg up, which is what we're supposed to get. So it's more of a psychological thing. It's not going to harm the economy whatsoever. Us getting reparations is going to be the greatest thing for the economy. That's going to boost the economy. That's going to limit a lot of exhaustive resources to some of these, what I call, abused institutions. Because you have a lot of institutions out here that's maintained to systematically abuse us. So a lot of these drug treatment centers, we can dry those up because we won't have so many folks strung out because of depression. Some of these homeless shelters, some of the, the city and the state funds won't be exhausted maintaining those. The These prisons, you understand, we can kind of cut back on the, the resources going into those for-profit prisons. Um, some of these janky little predatory pawn shops and payday loan institutions that are um, very detrimental to us and exploitive to us. We can dry some of that up because that doesn't help us. You know, that that's to capitalize off of 
our um, being down bad to a certain degree. So us getting reparations will definitely boost the economy. So we really, really got to um, stay focused on that. All right, let me get, um, we got a lot of folks in here. Malcolm, the mayor in the building. Malcolm, the mayor. Where Yo, Rick, can you hear me? Can you hear I me? can hear you, brother. I can hear you. What's going on? Yo, man, salute, bro. You know I'm a day one. You yes, already you know, are. man. <laughs> All day. All day. Uh, where you, a, what I'm city are you in? Are you still in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I live in Atlanta, but I'm part-time out the country, too, man. You know, we already spoke about the the foreign the foreign domestic the foreign and domestic play man with you get the foreign money and you get the domestic money man were we you down start... in costa rica weren't you down in costa rica somewhere <laughs> man you keep saying that man <laughs> where was that i, I forgot mean... bro i forgot <laughs> for, for some reason costa rica keep pop you must love costa rica nah i'm in colombia i'm in okay. cartagena colombia it's close it's there i knew it was in yeah. south america nah, it's close. With right okay yeah no nah, definitely man listen to all my fbas man but this is before I, I i speak what i came up here for i just wanted to drop this on my fba people listen man dumb people fleeing and coming to our land getting money let's go to their land and get money too i'm traveling and i brought uh, a couple properties man and i'm out here getting this airbnb money Let's get this money. Don't get don't get it twisted. The dollar, pesos, pound is all currency, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. All oh right. yeah. Let me let me just say this, uh, Reek. Listen, man. We didn't need no help. FBAs to all my FBA people. We didn't need no help making rock and roll. We didn't need no help creating house music. We didn't create no help. Well, I mean, we didn't need no help creating country. What the hell do we need help for creating hip hop, man? Right. Come on, man. Come right. on, y'all. Right. It's, it's common sense, man. It's common sense. We created it. We did it. Them folks was there. Like I said, they was across the street looking around. They seen. They wanted to be down. They helped. They helped. I'm not going to say they wasn't there. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. They what? I'm not saying they wasn't there, but you didn't create it, bro. Please. Right. Dr. Cologne or whatever your name is, stop. Stop. Oh, yeah. I land my plane, man. My man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. But yeah, man, that's why y'all got to really support microphone check, man. Keep this truth out here. Yeah, the, 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 the anti-FBA tethers are real mad and salty because this movie has taken off. And it's telling the truth. Um, um, Renee? Yeah, Hi. Hello, Renee. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having me in this space and giving me an opportunity to speak. Absolutely. So what's on your mind, Renee? Uh, well, my my name is Renee. It's actually Melissa Renee Frobis, but I go by my middle name, Renee. And okay. um, I, I saw your space and I had an idea this evening that was so urgently important that I just had to uh, get online and share it. Okay. Um, so I uh, recently decided that um, after seeing the trends and everything that's happened historically and currently um, that I was going to run for president. Um, I have inter-ethnic children, so um, I have experienced racism in my life as a result of having mulatto children. And um, I'm familiar with the reparations discussion. It's ironic that you were literally just mentioning this as I was coming on. Um, because um, I'm initiating a campaign that um, is called CREED, and that stands for Crime, Reparations, Education, Economy, and Democracy. Okay. And the basis of my campaign is to, uh, so we in America, we've learned that we're free. We're told that we're free. But our government was created during the height of antebellum slavery. It's literally not designed for freedom. It was designed by slave owners who were intent on controlling the economy and the people of the country. And that entitlement attitude has continued in the government ever since. Um, if you look closely at uh, politics, you'll see that um, gaining entrance to politics costs money. Um, like, for instance, I live in California, and uh, when I found out that Senator Feinstein died, I decided that I was going to run it to fill her position. 
And that's how I discovered that in order to register as a candidate, you had to pay 2% of the uh, first year's salary, which was for about $4,000. So, uh, and it's like that in a lot of states where you have to pay to gain entrance to even be a candidate. Okay. So um, that now Creed, um, it's the basis of Creed is going to co completely reset the global, well, the American economy at the very least. So this is the thing. The only reason why politicians get away with, and um, uh, capitalists, corporate owners, the only reason why they get away with the things they get away with is because we let them. We are 333 million people strong and the, cor the corporations, they, they are such a small percentage of the population and yet they control us. They hold us in economic slavery so that the majority of people are unable to have financial stability. They don't enjoy their lives. They don't have enough time, money, and resources to be able to have leisure and to enjoy their leisure. Um, so what I propose is, I, and I, I'm going to need the backing of the people, obviously, but my brilliant idea this evening was that if we were to, the only way we're going to achieve equality is if we have a complete economic reset. And what that means is that we have to completely reset everything so that there's no debt, there's no assets, there's no profits. So we have to make <coughs> it so that the owner of Walmart has zero assets and the lowliest of low of like, and everybody in between has okay, hold on, okay, okay, okay. Let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. So where does the reparations come in with this? With the uh, creep? Go ahead. Uh, okay. So, um, I, I have a, a different idea of, so the current ideas of reparations is um, recompense or restitution for uh, past atrocities that have occurred. Right. Again. Right. So, um, and honestly, it, that's not a horrible idea, but it's not the best idea either because uh, history shows that people who get large sums of money, and y'all, before I, please don't let lose me on this point. Because um, I, I know a lot of people are probably like, what? Go ahead. Um, go ahead and say it. Go ahead. Right. So, um, if, like, for instance, people who win the lottery, most of them end up pissing off their, their money and have nothing to show for it at the mm -hmm. end of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. So, and, and a lot of, honestly, a lot of people, um, I was actually just looking at the numbers yesterday. Black people make up 14% of the population, but they account for 20% of the entire impoverished popula population. Mm -hmm. So they're represented disparately in the poverty mar uh, market, I guess I'll call it, um, niche. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that the few Black people that do have assets have an outrageous amount of assets so that the rest of the, like the majority, like, 90% of black people live in poverty. And that's crazy. And, and the only mm -hmm. way that we're going to fix that is if we completely equalize the tables and we give everyone the same opportunity. So um, my idea of reparations is opportunity. Right now, it's proven that in communities of color, uh, the education system is not as good as in uh, more affluent areas. And it's an absolute fact that in communities of color, there's a lower rate of uh, secondary education. There is a low, a significantly lower rate of um, employment, not employment, but skilled employment. So people with degrees, people that are well educated. It, there's a very, very few black and brown people that are well educated and have opportunities to get good jobs. And so um, my idea of reparations is if we make it accessible, education accessible and um, and create employment opportunities, then. And oh, but we also we have to restore the respect of the community. So um, what as part of my economic reset idea, 
Um, every we're going to do a complete reset in America where everyone has zero dollars. And from there, everyone will receive a um, I'm calling it a safe, um, safe entitlement. And that stands for subsidy and family entitlement so that everyone has a basic income to be able to afford a basic standard of living. And from there, if we make education free so that everyone in like everyone everywhere can get access to education. There will be no student loans involved. There will be no debt owed. And everyone so will you, have an equal... Wait, slow down. So you're talking about almost like a socialism, like a socialist society. You just remove I've, capitalism? Uh, so, uh, kind of. So um, my idea, uh, if... So we have... Um, I Forget about your ideas of economy and how everything works for just a second. All right. If we have, um, if if we convert corporations from corporations into public trust companies, so that companies like Walmart they can't independently set a uh, profit price margin, so they won't be able to set a price for okay. on something. Yes. Okay, let's, let's scratch all of that. Let's scratch all of that because that's that. Uh, just give us our checks. Okay. And let's just give give a, give foundational Black Americans their checks. That's all you got to do. What okay. you're saying is so impractical. It's all around the world. You got to do a whole re. This is too much. Hey, That's, it's too is much. It? it is. When it comes to foundational Black Americans getting what we're just owed, what we're due, all of a sudden we get these crazy far-fetched ideas where we got to just scrap the whole economy and start over and liquidate all of the public and the private sectors and make them no just well, give us our checks that'll that'll be simpler give what about they, equality how are we <laughs> ever going to achieve equality if equality never existed the only way that equality no, no equality exist existed for people in the dominant white society and they got they got more than equality they got right. preferential treatment based on race we were forced with inequality i okay? i know so what about correcting the inequality okay so i i hear what you're saying the inequality that exists is an economic position so um when the government was established they abolished slavery. The 13th Amendment abolishes slavery except for the uh, punishment of a crime, which institutionalized the jail and prison system. From right. there, that they targeted created black people that exactly. targeted black people. Let's be very exactly. clear. I, All I, of these institutions were revolving around attacking it, and abusing regaining them. slaves. <laughs> it, the Go entire ahead. institution re revolved around <laughs> regaining <laughs> slaves. And so that's why af after that point, they created an economy and laws that focused on keeping financial oppression on people of color. But it ended up. No, 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 no. Let's stop that. It wasn't people of color. It was black people. When yeah. they had, no, no, let's stop that. Because when they had up them signs, it wasn't people of color. Like, niggas ain't allowed to get it. What? Damn, brother. Sorry about that. <laughs> Guy with all these weird sound effects. So it wasn't when we were going through Jim Crow, Jim Crow was all about anti black racism. Black right. people were being targeted. It wasn't the people of color side of town. It was the black side of town. Coloreds only, blacks uh -huh. only, whites only. Black people are not allowed in those housing contracts it was black people they were targeting hey black people no negroes so it right. wasn't people. we it was a very specifically targeted racism directed at us so it has to be specifically rectified ma'am right okay. i i understand and i hear what you're saying and what i'm proposing is going to it's going to reduce the level of entitled white people so that if we equalize everything so that nobody has anything more or less than anybody else, then that is an absolute equality starting point. No, and from a, no, no, that you're talking about one of these, again, it's, it's a all lives, all lift all program. It's a lift all. You elevate everybody and that's going to include black people. No, 
not going to do that. Affirmative action, not- affirmative action was a lift all program, and we ended up getting the short end of the stick on that. Okay. Well, like I told you, you remember me mentioning I have interethnic children. My right. children are half black. Mm-hmm. I, they're growing up in a society that is still oppressed by racism. Uh-huh. And I find that completely unacceptable. So I would not ever consider a, a program or a, a line of action that would have my own children be targets. They're I, already targeted. If they're non-white, you're already targeted. In the I, system. I'm well aware of this and I am experiencing it right now. Now, the father, now hold on, the father of your children, where is he from? Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Well, Columbus. Columbus, Georgia. Yes, sir. Got two kids? Yes, sir. Were you and the guy married before? No. Okay. Um, Is he a foreigner? Is he a foundational black American? Where is he from from? I know he's, you say he's in Georgia. He's he's from, um, well, he's from, he was born in America, Columbus, Georgia. Um, So I, I'm- his family. Where is his family from? Uh, um, you mean like his ancestors? Right. Uh, I I don't know that. I I do not have that answer. Okay. You, uh, did did he have any immigrants in his family? Did you know of? Or? Uh, no. He he was he's not like a dark skinned black man. So he has he has some um white back in his ancestry somewhere. Because okay. he's like a caramel color, com- a caramel complected man. Like like a little Lenny Kravitz type of thing going on. Uh, uh yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just trying to see if he's a descendant of slaves, descendant of freedmen, um, a foundational black American, if his lineage goes back to slavery. Honestly, in, in anybody in America who's black is, uh, a, a, is a target. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you're a foundational black American or a descendant of slaves or not, because you are still equally liable to be targeted. We understand that, but we're talking about compensation for slavery, and the only right. people quali- the only people qualify for that are foundation of Black Americans. That's why I was trying okay. to see if your I daughters. Understand. I was so, trying to see if your daughters were qualified for reparations. I, I have that's, a son and a daughter. Son um, and a daughter. Okay, got it. Yes, sir. So, what what's your view on reparations for Africa, though? Because Africa is still they. In fact, Africans are suffering so much more greatly than even the poorest of poor black people here mm-hmm. in America. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And because I personally like I communicate with Africans on a regular basis because as part of my um my creed is um if I'm able to attain the office of president, I'm planning on um uh, sending aid over to Africa, not not uh, money specifically, but I'm planning on sending tools and resources for agriculture, livestock, and mm-hmm. people who want to volunteer. Um, and I'm planning on demilitarizing the United States and converting our military establishment to a builder society so that people who choose to enlist, so to speak, they will be joining to go overseas to uh, participate in building in nation building Lord, and bless, bless our heart bless your heart man you don't ma'am i i know it's a, a tall order i know <laughs> Ooh, that what i'm suggesting is a tall order but this well, is the thing know. in the interest of having a sustainable free world where everybody has the things that there are people in india and africa right now that are dying from starvation and uh-huh. from lack of clothes that they, they, they are literally walking barefoot two miles just to get water. Right. I find that unacceptable. Well, let me, let me and say here we this. are in America. Oh, no. Here we are in America. We've got every modern convenience and contrivance that is the result of slave and military labor. If it wasn't for the slaves and for the military members, modern technology would not exist. Mm-hmm. Okay, now if hold, it wasn't on. For hold on. Slow down, sweetie. The slow Industrial down. Revolution occurred slow down, because Renee, Renee, of slavery. Renee, hey, slow down. I got it. Here's the thing. It's like, what about reparations for Africa? Do you know Africa, some of them, when we get our reparations from the U.S. government, we're going to have a little talk with some of the, the African tribes over there because they owe us too. How, yes, how do the African tribes, uh, oh, you said because of the uh, historical them, the enslavement, the uh, brother on brothers? Some of them were selling us. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 
Okay. Got, yeah, that, that ain't been rectified. We're going to have to rectify that with some of them over there because some of those tribes, they kind of brag about how they were slave traders too. So we're going to holler at them a little later. We ain't tripping on them now. And as far as the Indians, they can hold their own nuts because those Indians come over here, they're dirt poor, and then they send Divik Rimaswamy and they send, um, what's his name? Um, um, uh, what is his name? The Republican guy. What is, family, what's his name? Vic, Nikki, hold on, let me get my sister Nikki in here. Why am I brain for it? I'm, I'm, Nikki, you, who am I talking about? What's his name? The other Indian tether who hates on us, Nikki, what's his name? I don't even know his name. I came up to ask her a question. Yeah, okay. okay, I gotta think of this guy's name. Um, what's that? What's the guy's name? The Indian teller who went to jail and he's always denigrating. Why am I? God, I can't think of his name right now. Yo, is it Dinesh uh, D'Souza? Dinesh the damn Souza. Why did not? Yes, Dinesh D'Souza. Yes. Oh, he's one of the. the they come over here from the slums of India denigrating foundational black Americans doing everything they can to undermine us. They can hold hey. their own nuts. Nikki, go ahead and ask her a question, dear. Okay, my question for you is if you are so much con more concerned for the people, for immigrants in other countries, why don't you go run for office in an African country or an Indian country? Because over uh, here, we're trying to get foundational black Americans our reparations. So why don't you run for office abroad? All right. Well, because like I said, my children are, they're black, they're half black, they're here in America. And I was raised in America. I served in the military in America. I was homeless in America. I've experienced police brutality in America. I've experienced every hardship that, that, that America has to offer. And I'll be a good goddamn cooked goose if I let them get away with it. With what they did to me and my children, I will be a cooked goose if I let them do that. So I'm, I'm not disputing that there is a debt owed. I'm simply suggesting that there is a more uh, sound way to go about it than just get issuing out lump sums of money. There's that more be, to it. There's why, more to. They do equal. that for other groups. Why? Why? If it's good for other groups, why would it be good for us? I, um, are you talking about the Native Americans? Absolutely. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. OK, well, you, you do realize that. If, if 1,000 people, there were only 8% of natives left by the time the, the Trail of Tears was done. So mm -hmm. if you stood up 1,000 people, 80 of them were left. 80. And we're just 14% of the population. So we're 43 million. So they can do the same thing with us. They can do, and that's going to stimulate the economy. They can do the same thing and distribute the funds the exact same way they do with some of the red Native American tribes. All right, if what I'm suggesting too, though, is it's going to equalize everyone. And so giving out lump sum payments isn't going to fix the underlying problem of racism yes, and disparity. We're not trying to fix racism. We're trying to get a debt that's old mm -hmm. hate people that it's owed to. This is for slavery. It's not to fix racism. Right. And so um, I it, don't don't get too defensive on this point, but I'm going to ask you a question right now. Right. Um, <clears throat> in it, it's been several generations since slavery has ended. And mm -hmm. honestly, black, like I said, like I mentioned, black people in America enjoy a better even the poorest black person in America enjoys a better quality of life than the tribes of Africa from where slaves originated. And? And, and so if it honestly, if it, we enjoy a pretty good standard of living and if it, it's necessary, so we have to fix the on, big okay. social problem. Slow down, slow down. Our debt that's owed to us is not contingent upon how bad other black people are doing globally. All right, that's not going to be the bar. Y'all not going to hold them up and say, hey, look, they got flies on them. They're starving. Just be happy you're not them. No, that don't work. We got higher standards. Our okay. standards are very high. And we're owed something. So you're not going to point to somebody else who's down but, bad. Like, hey, you can be. No, no, no. That It don't work like that. We're owed so something. I, and, we have it, a, and, and we live good because we've created a comfort zone 
for us to live good as foundational black Americans. This wasn't something that was given to us. I, we, I know, but black, black people had to struggle tremendously to gain status. Right, and still do. I'm very, I'm very well aware of this. I've, like I said, I've, I, I've transitioned the lower and middle classes because of the event, the government, what the government did to me. I've, I've been a victim of a federated racism program that caused me to suffer significant loss. My, my children were taken from me for no legal basis. I have been targeted by the government because simply for the fact that I have mulatto children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ray, Ray, hop on real quick and chime in. How you doing, Tyreek? How you doing? I'm good, beloved. How are you? What do you think oh, about me? I'm blessed amongst all this hot Caucasian, Caucasian mess. Um, how are you doing, uh, uh, Renee? I'm well, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get down to it, Renee. We're not messing with you. Okay. Okay. The last time we listened to uh, 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 a white woman, it led to feminization, uh, feminist movement where y'all benefited the most. Okay. Okay. And our mm -hmm. homes were broken up. We're not doing that again. We're not African. Okay. The forefathers of this country bred us. And then we were mixed. Some of us have some other DNA. Some have a little bit of admixture. The Africans argue with us all the time. They're rude. They're ignorant. If you look at the long line of y'all, again, dumping them, you know, in our communities, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see the depletion of New York when we would say, well, why is black people? Before we knew who these people were in other cities, because we all didn't have that problem. Well, why, what is in the water in Florida? What's in the water up there in New York? Now, look at D.C. is going down. Look at California, okay? Mm -hmm. So, no, them are not our people. We've decided to delineate from everybody, including mm -hmm. you, because you go in under minority, and I, you don't want, I, I, I'm going to just tell you this, you're not going to like it, whether subconsciously or consciously, you have a problem. Even when you have a black Whatever, you know, um, nationality he is, husband, boyfriend, you don't want to give up that white woman privilege because you raise, we also know that white women raise these um, men that have shot up schools, killed people. I, I don't and, support and, that And are refusing or fighting us. Now, excuse me, I didn't interrupt you. Okay. Okay. We're not going to do that. Okay. Uh, so the audacity of you to come in here like everybody else including everybody you name, the Jew, the, the white races, uh, the white one that don't want to give up their little supremacy. Y'all always come telling us about world peace. We ain't never invented none of that. What land have we we uh, stolen? Huh? What land and have we stolen? Who, who have we enslaved? Huh? I, I, you know, that huh? is one of my who biggest Who have we taught our people. children to be racist? Who have we been blamed knowing damn well when you say black for decades since the 80s, we've been having all type of people from all these other places that may look like us, but skin folk ain't kin folk. But y'all tell us, oh, the statistics, the st black Americans ain't going to do hardly no statistics. We don't trust y'all. We want to know why you're in this room. And then and when you come asking questions in the manner that you did, right, like you're entitled to tell us to vote for you. I, I no, think, I came for feedback. I think I think that you should worry about mothering your children. I think that you should be taking them to the um, library and letting them know about who they are and their lineage, and taking them around the other side of the family. Black America, we got our own reparations. It's a debt owed. You forgot to mention segregation, okay? Because mm -hmm. I know my family. They came from Arkansas. It's still mm -hmm. sundown down there. And in and, and and, and 1919 was the first war. It was the Red Summer where we were just fed up and they were willing to fight or die. Okay? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to leave it there because there's other people that want to talk. But Thank you okay. so much, Ray. Wait, Thank you, and, right, um, go ahead. Just really go quick, ahead. I'm and I'll, I'll land on this note. Um, So to answer your question, Ms. Ray Ray, I came here because um, I had this idea that I wanted to share and I wanted feedback on it. I know that as a, a, a leader and as a, even a person in life, we must have the uh, respect and coordination of our community and the people around us in order to accomplish anything. 
And so I wanted to uh, present an idea and I wanted to get feedback on it so that I could get some critical feedback so I could get right. an understanding and of what's the, needed, the of what the people's expectations are and what needs to occur for everyone's needs to get met. So right. that's why I came here. And yeah. um, I, like I and said, I appreciate feedback, you. But the feedback is we ain't really buying that program. This is another one of these trick bag, um, keep your eye off the ball, um, lift all programs that helps everybody. And it keeps black people in the same bag. We're going to have to get specific compensation exclusively for us. We okay. were specifically targeted. We were specifically abused, specifically disenfranchised, and we need to be specifically compensated. I don't want another lift all program based on our suffering. So we just need checks written to foundational black Americans as a form of compensation and compensatory justice. That's all we need. That's going to make everything better. That's going to boost the economy, and that's going to relieve a debt that's been lurking like a dark cloud over this nation for the last couple of hundred years. It, it has mm -hmm. to be. You understand? So okay. that's where. But thank you so much, Renee. I, I thank you so much. Family, we got to watch out for that. You got to watch out for that. Man. That was a learning lesson, family. They'll come in, hey, I, I'm white and I got some mulatto kids, so I'm not like the others. And here's my plan. And your plan is like the others. All right, you saw that? She tried to qualify herself with the, little, with the black kids, which she don't even want to say that they're black. That's a lot of the white women don't never like to admit that the kids are black. They say, well, they're mulatto, they're biracial, they're children of color, they got some black kids. So you'll lead with that so that you, so I'm not, I, I'm not on the white supremacy thing. And then you start talking and you're on code with the white supremacists. And part of their code is to not give us specific compensation for justice. So it's another con game and we ain't buying it. Duchess, hop on here. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Um, thank you for having me. Yes. Um, Where are you from, Duchess? Where's that accent? Canada? Where's that accent from? No, my accent is from Armenia. Uh, okay. By Kim Kardashian, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even though she's like a disgrace for our people. Uh oh. Why do y'all look at her as a disgrace? Uh, well, she doesn't really represent anything our people represent, you know, which is family uh, values, you know, um, you know, um, a uh, close uh, husband and wife and just like uh, uh, you know for example like no sex tapes out in public <laughs> kind <laughs> of no. uh, <laughs> so uh, so what's on your mind yeah you know i really love your logic you're a very intelligent man mhm mm and uh, I love what you're, um, you know, what you're promoting. Obviously, I'm for, for reparation, but yeah. I really don't like the way you're promoting it. If how, I'm, how so I feel like, like you are creating a division. I think there is a healthier way to promote it. But how am I promoting it? I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm not... Um, in I'm I, I'm not able to do justice to uh, do a debate on this subject. Not you. even a debate. You made a you made a statement, and you're not qualifying what your statement yeah, is. Yeah, because you're you're very wise. You're very sharp, mm -hmm. and I know you're like you're immediately going to be able to like debunk whatever I'm able, whatever I'm going to say. You know, right. so. I mean, I would love to set up a debate with you and uh, Thomas uh, Sotomayor, if I may, if you are interested. That would be amazing. So why would you as a white person want to set up a debate with me and another black person? What What is that going to be? So that's because weird. I think it would be amazing. Two brilliant minds 
I think. So why are you trying to hide behind them? Just, no, no, because why are you trying to hide some of your suspected racism behind a black person? Now you you're playing your card. No, right. no, 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 no. This is yeah, not, yeah, 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 yeah. Racism. Why are you trying to hide your you, racism behind you, a black? This person? is what I don't like about you, Tariq. No, no, this no, no. Don't what, no, no, no. Don't try to use Tommy. This is what I say. No, 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 no. Don't try to use Tommy to hide your racism. He's not your slave. That's disrespectful to me and him. You understand? He's not your your Sambo slave. Don't try to use another black person to facilitate your racism so you can hide your hand. You understand? So he can say stuff that you can't say because you will be perceived as a racist. That's very exploitive of him as a so black person. Armenian, that's the problem. Have no that's the, no, 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 that's the Armenian problem. No, no because you want to know you're being, no, you want to be exploitive of black people. I'm not going to sit here and bicker back and forth with another black person because of you. It don't work like that, beloved. We don't do that. You should be stand on your own racism, ma'am. Don't try to get some black person. Now, y'all, people love doing that. That uh, What's that? That Colombian woman was up here denigrating Juneteenth and she used Candace Owens. Well, Candace Owens said that Juneteenth was ratchet and it, I think it is too. So you you use a black person to hide your racism. That's very exploitive, ma'am. You understand? But we got to watch folks like you. That's very cold-blooded and exploitive, Duchess. You understand? This is exactly what I was talking about, Tariq. The divisive part. I, I was literally. I am sure do want to divide myself away from anti-black racism. racism. I, I divide myself from anti-black racism. Really wasn't racism. talking about racism at all. But and that is racist. Trying want. to get a black. It's racist trying no, to exploit no. black people. It only had to slow down. It's that's very racist trying to exploit black people. You're trying to exploit black people, and that's very racist. You're trying to pit me up against another black person. No, we're not doing that for you, ma'am. I'm not I'm doing only that for you. To level you to your psychological level. It was psychological level. What are you saying, ma'am? You're just saying words, Duchess. I was saying he was at your level logically. He was. He would have been able to handle you logically. But I don't really sit around debating other black people because we're both victims of white supremacy. So it's absolutely pointless to Do just I look go and like circle. white supremacy to you, sir? The what now? Do I look like a white supremacy to you, sir? I don't know. I suspect that you could be, ma'am. I don't know. But if you try to pit black people against each other, it's safe to suspect that you possibly could be Duchess. You understand? That's very exploitive. Okay, what about not a, not if I to look. To Go ahead. another white person? Is that also like, would you consider that racism too? No, 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 no. Because I, I like debating white people because they're the ones in power. I love debating them, especially the white supremacist. I love Amazing. debating them. Thing. Okay, I have the best person for you then. Can Who we do that? I, actually, you know what's interesting? I had somebody else in mind, but I was afraid to mention him because I thought if I mention him, you're going to call me racist. Because I mentioned him. So I went with the black person. So then I mentioned the black person and you called me racist. Yeah, because the only the black That's person. Really funny. <laughs> yeah, because the only reason you want the black person is because the black person is known for just using your talking points because he gets money, and I, I ain't mad at him. He exploits the white supremacists by using their talking points. That's the only reason why you wanted to use him. You understand? What white person did you have in mind, by the way? What What was the white person you had in mind? Go ahead, dear. Unmute your microphone, Duchess. Duchess, unmute your microphone, dear. 
Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, um, yeah, I, I can, I, I can send you a message. It's, it's. I mean, it's not important. It's not no, like I probably already debated him. So who is it? Who's the white person? It doesn't matter. It, it, the okay. point is like that. That was like the plot twist. I was afraid to mention a white person, thinking it's gonna back. No, you uh, weren't. You weren't. Oh, you, were. you weren't. You weren't. No, you weren't. It's all cap. But wanted, that's what yeah. ended up backfiring. That's the plot right. twist. That's really funny, actually. Right, You're right. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't plan on me. No, you were you were just using a black person to try to hide racism behind. So we're hip to that game, Duchess. So don't do that. Don't don't do that. We're hip to it. Any form of white supremacy or suspected white it's supremacy. Not white supremacy. Oh. I was being I was actually being sensitive towards you people, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. No, you weren't sensitive to us, us people. No, you were not. Do you live in California, Duchess? Where do you live? Uh, California, sir. Glendale? Living Glendale? Uh, no, sir. Okay, okay. Just asking. And what was interesting, you're talking about all the family values from the Armenians. Boy, I know a lot of Armenians. And family value is, they, some of the Armenians got some of the biggest scams going on out here. They run all types of scams, and I know you're very well aware of this, aren't you, Duchess? Uh, Duchess? See, Tariq, this is what I'm talking about. You're like this uh, division, your negativity, <laughs> like you know. But you're don't. So but you, negative. Uh, how is it negative? You know, is there any Duchess? 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 You know. Especially out here in California, y'all be running a gang of scams. That's not negative. What me pointing out what y'all do? Really? That's the negative part. How about all the scams y'all got going on? I'm not. I'm not even being judgmental. You know, I, used, the, I used to be. I used to are, hustle. The, the I used to hustle. Armenians with, I, used to, listen, I, I used to hustle with a lot of Armenians. These guys had. So many intricate scams that were just beyond belief. These guys had so many scams going on, and you know that, ma'am. And I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not being negative. I'm just pointing that out, ma'am. Not all of them, but a lot of them did. They had a lot of scams and hustles and a lot of street business going on. Yeah, and you're talking about all of the family values and all of that. Okay, all right. Anyway, Duchess, what else is on your mind? Any any last words, Duchess? Turn your microphone on, Duchess. Um, my, uh, no, I mean honestly, like the the kind of Armenians that I socialize with are definitely on a, a different caliber, but mm -hmm. I I also know of the kinds that you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. I'm not delusional. There you go. Real talk. Yeah, of the, course. I mean, yeah. be be having the hookups. Hell yeah. Yeah, of <laughs> course. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, you know. You already know. You already know. Obviously, yeah. Yes, indeed. But, um, um, listen, uh, the reason I came up is like, you're really sharp. You're a mm -hmm. good uh, mind. Mm -hmm. I just you would use it in a more positive way. It's very positive. I, I look out for my foundational Black American family all the time. I'm very protective of foundational Black Americans. I go out of my way to make sure they are good collectively. So that's very positive. All right? Unmute yourself, Duchess. I don't have you muted, dear. Well, you know, sir, you say that, but like, do you have any solutions for your community? Like, absolutely, to oh. your community. Oh, yes, I do. Reparations, reparations, reparations. That's going to be the solution. Let's get these reparations. We're not going to move on the political needle until we get the reparations popping reparations for foundational Black Americans, and then we can get this thing cranked up. We can get this economy stimulated. We can get some real compensatory justice happening that needs to happen, right? So you know that the white people 
which you call them, which I don't like to call them white people. I like to call them, you know, European uh, Americans Mm -hmm. because they do come from European background. Um, You know, they don't have power, right? Uh They hold the shots. Uh Uh-oh. So whatever, you know. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, who who calls the shots then? Who really calls the shots? Not the white you, people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I, I would say it's the Jews. But oh. Audi space. Okay. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Don't it. hold my words against Tariq. This is not Tariq. This is me. God. Um, so whoever's listening, please. Um, Tariq is, this is not him. Um, Uh-oh. Here they go. But, the yeah. defl- Oh, like this is a deflection. This is all about deflecting. No, it's not about deflecting. Deflect from know, white but... supremacy. It ain't white supremacy. It's the Jews. No, okay. then no, if, it, if, if the Jews are woman. running in, why? Okay, why do Jewish people? So many of them change their names so they don't sound more Jewish, so they can blend in with white. If they're running, <laughs> white people, nope. do white people? Where, who are the white people who change their names the Jewish names? I'm Irish. Scottish, you know, English, Polish, Russian, Italian, you name it, everything but Jewish. They changed their last name to everything but Jewish. What are you talking about? Come on, man. Uh, you're proving my point. You know that, right? That's, you're proving my point. Oh, how? They changed their names. They change their names to sound more Anglo-white. And it's not the reverse. That shows you who's running things. If you're running things, you don't have to change your name to blend in. You understand? You feel me? So you you just proved my point, ma'am. Anglo-white people are not changing their name to Jewish names. So that shows you who's running things. It's run by white supremacist yeah that makes sense dear turn your microphone on duchess i don't have you muted definitely doesn't make sense to me sir oh, it, yes no it does no disrespect seriously it makes sense yeah i respect world. you but i definitely don't get this yeah you get it these people have so much money they can pay they can change their last name they can pay to get whatever the fuck they want you know they can get uh, they can pay to get their nose jobs mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> the fact that they have to to do all of this stuff they to can look anglo th- that shows you the, the, the white supremacists are running Sound european have a european last name pretend to be white people but right. why that pretend the end. to be the ones who's running things and that's the white supremacists ma'am no. you prove my point not you think the it's back you it, you just proved it ma'am you just proved that it's white supremacy they're trying to be more like the anglo whites that's what white supremacy is all about the closer proximity you have to anglo whiteness you have more stake at being a suspected white supremacist you see you just proved that ma'am so you're helping my argument i thank you for that duchess i thank you for that we brought it back full circle. So I guess this was a learning experience for you, ma'am. All right, Duchess. Um, let me get you up out of here, dear. Any last words, Duchess? <laughs> no, I'm done here. There Thank you go. You. Thank you so much. All right. See? There we go. Um, I had somebody up here I was going to get. I had somebody up here I was going to get. Oh, yeah. They try to do all of that deflection Notice it's all about deflection. Boy, these people try to deflect. They try to deflect on, well, let's do a liftoff program and an equality program. And it's not really white supremacists. It's really the Jews. No, no, no. We ain't going for that. And we got one of our professional white supremacists in here, Dr. Davinsky. One of our professional white supremacists. And I got a, I got a personal question for you, Dr. Davinsky, by the way. What's up, doctor? How are you? Salam alaikum, Brother Tariq. How you doing today? Um, good. Real quick question before you go into yours. Now, are you technically a doctor? Because a lot of you guys, you know, white supremacists are pretty smart. You guys know how to kind of hustle your way into things. Or is that just a title for online? 
Well, I have a, I have a double degree, but no, I'm not a doctor. Okay, what kind of degree you have, by the way? Law and accounting. Oh, okay. Did you ever go? You ever pass the bar? No, I just worked in insurance. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, what's on your mind tonight, Doctor Davinsky? So, my question for you is: Why do you always run cover for the Jews? I thought oh, Dutch brought up Lord. a good point earlier, oh, and you talked about how they changed their name to to um, sound more Anglo, right? Right. But what uh-huh. what about what about this example here? We've got. Okay, Leon Trotsky, born Lev Davidovich Bronstein. So they're not just changing their name to sound more Anglo. They weasel their way into every country and every political structure. And uh, you always just talk about, how come you can delineate from the Africans, but we can't delineate from the Jews? Because you all share the system of white supremacy and you benefit from it. What benefits do the Jewish people who are classified as white, what don't they get that the regular white supremacists get? What don't they get? Uh, can I say that again? What are white Jewish people excluded from in the system of white supremacy? What don't they get? Y'all get the same benefits and privileges and protection. That's why we don't delineate. You guys, we don't look at you as a different group. You all... Uh, who believe in anti-black racism, you all are on the same page with each other. So why would... Yeah, but a lot of the Africans, they they benefit from affirmative action when they come to America. They want to claim to be this oppressed minority. And we all know the real privilege in the West is being a minority. And I can prove this. It's because when you have... Hold on, let me let me go back and you were like, um, why do we delineate from Africans? We're doing that because of a reparations claim. We're owed something based on our lineage. So that's why we delineate. We're saying, hey, we got a reparations claim and we have to make it very specific to who's the money the money's gonna go to. So that's why we're delineating. Now we you know, I still look at some of the African and Caribbeans who are cool with us as our brother. We're still cool. If you're a rider, we're gonna look out for you. If you're a rider and if you're on code with me, if you're a foreign black person, I'll ride for you. I'll look out for you. I've been over to Africa. I've helped several people over in Africa. So the white supremacist Jewish person and the white supremacist Anglo, even though they might have some ethnic differences, they all get on code when it comes to black people. And that's the only thing that matters. It's impractical for me or any other black person to break up suspected white supremacists in all of these little groups because they have some ethnic beefs that they have behind closed doors. You understand? And all it is is a deflection, Dr. Davinsky. It's, it's a deflection to keep our eyes off of white supremacy, which is the only problem that we have. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, but... If you look at the core population of America, the foundational white Americans, those aren't no Jews. Such thing. No such thing. Who's who's the core population of America in terms of ethnogenesis? Who built the country? Um, well, foundational black Americans built the country. Um, Do you actually, white, hey, you actually believe, look, I'm not saying that black Americans didn't help, the foundationals didn't help, but if you're going to give the credit to any one group, it's going to be our foundational white Americans. No, because they failed. That's the problem. You can't give them credit because when they tried to do it on their own, they repeatedly failed, sir. This is very well documented, right? So, so if you took away all of the um, all of the input from the foundational white Americans and you just had the plantations, America would be like what? It would ha- you'd have some some plantations. You'd have maybe half a railway. Uh, there's nothing there. Uh- how so? When it was black people like Horace King building um, the railway, the railways and the bridges and many of the homes, many of the people who were the architects were the foundational black Americans who were enslaved. You had the Benjamin Bannockers designing. He was the real one designing Washington, D.C. They try to give the credit to a Frenchman and say that Benjamin Banneker memorized the blueprints. I don't believe that worth a damn. It was us doing that. It was us coming up with um, books about electricity and electric lighting. It was foundational black Americans doing that because we were 
doing all of the hard work out here. So we were coming up with the more ingenuity type of plans to make work easier and to make the workflow better. We were coming up with that. That's why after slavery, we got over 50,000 patents immediately. We couldn't even get patents while we were enslaved. So we are literally the foundation, sir. The white supremacists came and just colonized and took all of our ingenuity and took credit for everything. And then they started to expound on it. But when the white supremacists tried to do it on their own, Dr. Davinsky, history has shown they all failed miserably. So do you think that in, in, in Tariq's view of the, like early America, the whites were just sitting around like drinking tea and blacks were doing all the work? That's basically what they were doing, sir. They were only 5% of white Americans owned slaves at the height of slavery. Sir, it was the government that had us locked in slavery. This is why they would send the armies down into Florida to try to get runaways and try to get some of those black Seminoles. It was the U.S. government that had us locked down. That's why they had the Fugitive Slave Act, which was a federal law. The U.S. government, <clears throat> the entire government was completely complicit in it, sir. So I don't want to hear about the, the certain percentages because all of the economy was built off of our backs. Every institution was born out of anti-black racism. The banking the insurance companies, the railroad systems, even the medical system as we know it started off. Well, the Irish Americans built uh, half of the railways, at least. Irish Americans didn't do a damn thing but scratch lice off their asses and eat potatoes. <laughs> They didn't do a damn thing. They were indentured servants. Um, they barely survived that, and they got paid afterwards. They got freedom dues. They were. Have you ever seen those early videos of, say, like 1920s New York or 1920s Chicago or Birmingham or Sydney? You look mm -hmm. at these kids, the, the little white children. They look like 40-year-old men because they're working in coal factories. They're working sweeping chimneys. Uh, so the whole idea that like white Americans weren't hardworking or white people weren't hard working as just blacks that were doing this is disingenuous i think that you okay. need to put some respect on foundational white americans there's name. no foundational white american in the early days of america we were doing all the work the white supremacists failed when they tried to do it on their own they tried to get these colonies they ended up cannibalizing each other they ended up disappearing they tried to build up roanoke out there in north carolina they all disappeared um san miguel del guadape well, the, the black people ran them out, out of there. When they tried to build St. Augustine in Florida, they kept repeatedly failing down there and begging for black folks, begging the Spanish crown. So if the there's people. no foundational Come call on, no, hold on, no, 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 let's run it all down. I'm just telling you your, your, your resume of your people. Jamestown, before the that, that slave ship came in around 1619, um, before that, a couple of years before that, they almost ate each other in Jamestown. They were starving and eating each other, sir. It was, they were down bad. So they didn't get it together to the black people got involved and really helped them out. But go ahead. And, and also, let me get my brother, Dr. Randy Short, in here to chime in. Dr. Short, are you here, sir? Oh, yes, my brother. Oh, yes, my brother. Yes, and what Dr. Dubinsky is saying, sir. Can you please chime in? Well, yeah, what I want to say is his understanding of American history is off because even the Irish that were brought over, because he doesn't know who he is, and they definitely doesn't know who we are, that there were people who were not white who were in Ireland and Scotland who mm -hmm. were brought here. So there are no foundational white Americans. There are only foundational people of Moorish descent brought here who were the majority and you had the rich english patricians and many of them of which i'm descended of sir you're speaking to a descendant of margaret buford so <laughs> this idea that even the foundational elites of england a lot of these people are moorish mixes mm -hmm. okay it's just a fact and one drop of black blood it's a stupid rule you guys made made you 100 percent black therefore there are no foundational white folks doing much. And yes, they were drinking tea and getting paid and, and drinking rum and raping folk. They didn't do the work that built the country. Black folks built New York. They built Charleston. They built Jamestown. They built Richmond. They built Boston. They did most of the railroads. However, to bolster 
the sagging egos of people who got 3.6 million square miles of land off of genocide, slavery, and brutality to tell you how you earned all this through some manifest destiny, which you killed so many people until the greenhouse effect on the planet changed. So what you did was you killed, you stole, you destroyed, you enslaved. That's who you are. And that's why we're owed. And I don't even want no, because I actually have a damn doctorate and you don't. And so I don't know. I have one. You 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 don't. And therefore, let's not even try that. So that's racist. So you can sit up and try to tell me something and you don't even have the training in the subject area I have. And so wherever you went to school, I went better. What's your doctorate? So, uh, absolutely. Your doctorate? It's, it's in history. Doctorate? It's in history. And you said you what, accounting? And law. And we know we're accounting and law. What kind of law, sir? General law is a bachelor's. Uh, general, which means you don't know history. And in fact, law. Because no, we, we can't do education, sir. A law degree in reality is an undergraduate degree that was professionalized for lawyers to make more money. So in reality, you have a exaggerated undergraduate degree, and I have a PhD and three masters. We're not equal. Okay, so I think you're alluding towards Cheddar Man, and if you look at genetics, no, studies, I'm alluding to the fact that you Tariq, don't Tariq, that you, we're on, not we're not speak, equal. And brother Tariq, brother Tariq, brother Tariq is right. Well, no, I don't care. I can take fifty. We just listened to this woman who called herself a daughter of Alducci, which means that she supports fascist Mussolini, who did mm -hmm. genocide on people in Italy. I'm sorry, in, in in Libya and in Eritrea and in Ethiopia, and she's going to lecture this our brother Tariq our hero about how she has a problem with him being divisive what's more divisive than mussolini who started world war ii doing mm. genocide on black people in africa how dare somebody say anything to Tariq? so you know we're tired and we see this whole thing and i see the setup if you go to that lady's thing she's got this guy forgive me for forget his jones michael jones eric michael jones who is an, a person known for attacking Jews. They're trying to put Tariq Nasheed as an anti-Semite so they can silence him. That's what oh, this so bullshit's all Jews about. The the no, 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 no. I didn't say a damn thing about Jews. So he, he I'm talking talk about, about you. You came time, right, you came right hey, behind. Uh, this is, this is you funny, came, no, this no, 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 no. We, you, you can't tell me how to talk about my oppressor. You can't tell me how to talk about my oppressor. You can't tell me how to talk about how we've been treated. You can't. Yeah, that's you that's can't. You no, no, no. Not you only, not only is it hilarious, not only is it hilarious, the people that you think are Jews aren't. So as a person of people descent, I'm offended. You mean the little European people, the Kazarians? Your okay, type, so your, your hey, type, on, your Tariq converts? Okay, Tariq. So um, is, is, is it correct what he said? Is it correct that you are worried about getting canceled by the Jews? That's why you can talk about white people all that, day that, and not no, have that fear. Well, no, that, that that doesn't work. That little weak peer pressure thing where, oh, are you scared? Are you scared? That doesn't work because I'm never taking my eyes off the, the real problem, which is white supremacy. The problem is white supremacy. The whole, well, it's really the Jews. That's a deflection that you guys try to use, and it just doesn't work. But he said that you would get canceled if you spoke about the Jews. You'd be on that uh, Nick Cannon kind of world tour of yeah, apology. Because what, oh, what, I'm sorry, yeah, Jews. I'm sorry. A, yeah, because what you, the, the white supremacists, you and your white supremacist brethren, that's a trick bag that we're not falling for. Because if we start saying something about Jewish people, you guys will be the first ones siding with them against us. When they were going after Nick Cannon, y'all white supremacists weren't supporting Nick Cannon. When the when the ADL and all these people go after Minister Farrakhan, you side with the ADL. You don't protect. Why is it? Why is there no ADL for white people? You understand that? Uh, why you, is there no ADL for white people, Tariq? The hell you don't. You already got an ADL. It's called white supremacy. That that's <laughs> ADL within itself. That's white supremacy. Uh, you already uh, have a court system. You you have all of the systems that's already in your favor, sir. 
But you don't why need, can you come you on need, here and defame white that. people 24-7 you you and you don't, you don't have any social repercussions? You don't have any you do cancellations? What? You're on YouTube. You're on Twitter. How come you can say all of this stuff about white people, but you'll shy away from the Jews? Because doctor said it himself that you would well, be cancelled. So that shows who has the power. What you said isn't true. I don't say anything negative about white people at all. I only talk about white supremacists, sir. Okay, so let me address something. That Did you, 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 you feel of... me? Did you do you feel me though? I don't say anything. Look, Tariq, about... I know that you have to run cover. You're in LA. You make movies. No, you're in that. No, you're in that no, media no, no, you're business. Project, projecting. You're projecting. I don't say anything about white people. I talk about white supremacy. I Have don't. You, go, I don't go after you, people because of what they're born as. If you're born as a Jewish person, there's nothing wrong with that. If you so are, do you love white people, Tariq? Do you oh, love no, white? Go on, because you're trying to. I'm, I'm telling you what the deal is, and you're trying to explain your way through it. I don't go after people because they're Jewish. I don't go after people because they're white. I don't go after people because they're foreign. I don't do that. That's called bigotry. To sit here and say the Jews are the that's bigotry. I don't believe that. I don't talk like that. That's bigotry. Now, the white supremacists, I got a problem with because that's an action. They're doing something that makes them white supremacists. That's action-based. A person who's a foreigner undermining us, that's a tether. I got a problem with a tether. You understand? But I don't yeah, so, go. I don't go after people based but on Judaism. Based on, is look, look. Judaism's not. It's an ethno religion, right? But there is a supremacist uh, aspect to no, Judaism it's not. because they they posit themselves you as know, God's chosen people, and in a lot of their you prophecies, the Jews have will have slaves two, called the Goyim. And you can't have two supremes. It's an oxymoron. It's illogical. You cannot have two ethnic groups who are supreme. You can't have white supremacy and some other type of supremacy. By definition, sir, by logic, doesn't make no, sense. No, of course. If different groups have different kind of power systems in different countries, then you're going to have supremacist groups of those regions. In in China, no. for instance, the supreme group is being Han Chinese, and they've done a but Hanification the white of Xinjiang province. The white they've done a Hanification. But the white supremacists, they can decimate China anytime they feel like it. All right. When we talk about ethnic groups, there's only one supreme. That's the white supremacists. So you're saying that, like, just innately we're supreme because other groups have national no, not movements innately. that have racial supremacists. Not, in, uh, not innately, but systematically. They've created a militarized system to back up their supreme views, and they can, wi they can white people off. So in China, know. in China, there's a Hanification. It, it's been a Don't long matter. process throughout China to absorb all Don't of these other matter. ethnic groups. They got European warships on the coast of China waiting on China to act bad, waiting on China to get froggy. So, yeah, they got China in check. All right. There used to be a saying, you don't have a Chinaman's chance in hell. The China, yeah, China. and Ireland used to be the poorest country in Europe, and now it's in the top ten continuously for Human Development Index. Right. So, so what's your point? The the point uh, is white supremacy is the point. That's the point, sir. I'm just telling you what white supremacy is about. Okay? What about Arab supremacy? Well, you know, there's, there's more. Arab, there's more slaves alive today than any point in human no history. Most Arab, of those are in the Arab no, world. There's no Arab supremacy. Okay, I'll give you an example of. Arab oh, oh no, there's no Arab supremacy. The white supremacists, they go over there and smack the Arab community around anytime they feel like it, sir. They always got a Look, war. Look, Tariq, on in that. every popular... Sir, they got the Arabs by the nuts with the oil. They just use them to get that oil over there. They got them guarding their oil. That's what they use. Tariq, the Arab you're feigning ignorance because you know that different I'm countries not. have different ethnic struggles. And sir, in the Sahal... And the white supremacists can go over there and topple any Arab leader anytime they feel like it when they want to go get a Qaddafi and knock him off they can do it anytime they feel like it right but that doesn't help the people that are oppressed in, so that, in Palestine for instance would, one of the most oppressed sir, countries on earth this is this we're talking about white supremacy white supremacy means my group can kill your group with impunity and you can't do it to me 
That's what Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said. That's what Sir. Supreme... You won't let you won't let me speak for more than ten seconds. No, 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 no. Because listen, you know I'm about to cook your entire world. No, you're not cooking anything, sir. I'm just telling I'm you. Gonna cook your, I'm going to cook you like some bush meat. Okay, white supremacy is my group can kill your group with impunity, and you can't do the same. Now go ahead and cook me. Okay, so every country has uh, a dominant uh, majority, and then they have uh, repressed minorities within that group. And I brought up slavery because we always want to talk about reparations, and we want to talk about the transatlantic slave trade. You but if you look at the Sahel, if you look at the Sahel region of Africa. Uh, Mauritania, Chad, and Niger, there's a group of people there, and this predates the transatlantic slave trade, and so it's a racial stratification of the Berber caste system. At the top, you have so-called white Berbers, Arabs, and at the bottom, you have uh, blacks, uh, they're called Auckland, and that translates to be black. And this trans this predates transatlantic slave trade. About 10% of Mauritania's population are currently enslaved. So black people ruled by Arab Berbers. If these people run away from their slave masters, they're returned. Uh, in Palestine, one of the most oppressed countries on earth right now, there's still a racial stratification there where the Arabs are on top. You can look up the Afro-Palestinians. They refer to these people as slaves. They refer to their quarters in Palestine as slave quarters. So you always talk about about white supremacy. Look at the ethnic tolerance index. Australia, Canada, America, all of the Anglosphere countries are in the top 10, top 20 nations for the least racist. But you okay. want to you want no. you want to look at white okay. people slow down because you're talking about some Mauritania. It don't matter. Mauritania was colonized by France. Okay, so you you you're talking about countries that got colonized by the white supremacists. So you're proving my point, sir. You it doesn't it. help the look. Even if they were colonized by France, it doesn't right. help the millions of black people enslaved by them today. How does that? How does that matter? So, to the, well, so what? That, well, hang on, hang on. Listen, listen, Tariq. If you're in Mauritania <laughs> right now <laughs> and you're a black <laughs> slave, they're like, oh well, these poor Arabs were colonized by and France. The no, French they're like, we're a slave the, to these Arabs. We're and a slave the to the French are still running the show. They're still running the economies over there too. The French are still running the economies, sir. So you're, you're proving my point. So, uh, it, so, it, goes, so look, it goes back my, to My point is, Tariq, is that you want to blame everything on white supremacy when because, in actuality, uh, okay, like in actuality, if you're an oppressed ethnic group in, in Palestine, the Afro-Palestinians, they aren't talking about white people. They're talking about how the Arabs are oppressing them. The same in the Sahel region, the same all over the world. Look at how the Indians and East Africans are treated in the Gulf regions. They're treated as slaves. They're forced to sleep in shipping containers. They get their passports stolen. Is that white supremacy doing that? Yes, I don't it, think is. So. Oh, it, it is. It is. The white people in Europe. They're getting those Europe. slaves the European white people, so the market is there. It's a simplistic worldview that you have. It's the same thing that white people do with Jews. Or oh, oh, no, sir. We're still talking about white supremacy. The slave market up there in Northern Africa, the buyers are European, sir. So we're still going back to... <laughs> hang on, hang on. Can I, can I, can, can I go... Yeah, yeah, slavery is alive and well. You got Europeans going up into Africa, adopting children and taking them back to Europe and treating them like slaves. So yeah, there's a buyer's market. So and I, I can go to the slave market in Mauritania, which they still have. I can go buy a black slave and then I can bring my slave into Europe or Australia. I can just put them in like luggage or whatever. Is this, is this the world that you live in, Tariq? Sir, they, they take black people to Europe and Australia all the time and treat them like slaves all the time. We're dealing really? with Really? Yes, they do, sir. And you know that. So I could go buy one. Okay, yeah. And now you're playing dumb. No, so no, thank- I'm being serious. Okay, now you're being dumb. Yeah, you can go buy somebody. It's a slave market. That's what a slave is. You get a person and sell them. Uh, you're trying to play dumb. All right. Anyway. Let's get um, Mama Lindsay. Mama Lindsay in the building. And we got we got over a thousand people here in the middle of the night, as we always do. Mama Lindsay, you good? Mama Lindsay. All right, Doctor Davinsky, I, I, you 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 cracker babbling right now. I don't want to hear that. Okay, because now you're playing dumb and I don't want to hear. All right, DeSabio, DeSabio. 
Hop on D. Sabio. Unmute your microphone, sir. And Mama Lindsay, if you can unmute your mic, that'd be good. D. Sabio, what's up, brother? Many blessings to Tariq Nasheed. Yes. Amen. I appreciate that. What's on your mind, Desabio? No. Yo, you know what it is, is that he is uh, trying to say that it's not the white supremacy that is doing all that um, things in uh, the Arabian continent, but it is the white supremacy because they're doing exactly what the thing is in society. When the racist tries to show out for the white supremacists to show they're a person of color, but they're for the white supremacists. That's exactly what they are doing. Right. That's, yes, that's what yeah. they're doing. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Let's get um, Voluier. 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 Voluier, how you doing? There you go, brother. You Haitian? No, I'm not. I'm actually, um, I'm black. Okay. Just an interesting name. The name has a little French thing to it. Yeah. That's, so uh, what's on? No, nah, what you saying? What, what so you what, what? What's the name based on? My name is based on my logo. Okay. So what's on your mind tonight, bro? Uh, just listen to different conversations, and um, you know, I, everybody has their own point of view on things, and you know, I listen a lot. And uh, really don't want to take action unless action is basically where we need to take it. But uh, I've been hearing a couple of things. And as um, far as the, the white lady, I uh, forgot her name, but uh, she just didn't have her facts together. She could have wow. did a lot. She could have did a lot on this platform, but she didn't have her facts together. So uh, me and her talked on uh, DMs while y'all was talking. And um, I'm actually talked to her to get her facts together. And uh, I've been hearing a lot of things about reparations, um, how the black people should actually uh, have reparations and, and, and have our just do. I just got to keep it real. We, we, we build entrepreneurs over here and we build black entrepreneurs uh, as far as Oakland, California, we build them. Uh, different cities, I've been in Texas, uh, we have a lot of entrepreneurs over here and I feel like we, 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 we cry for reparations. We, we ask for reparations but at the same time, we are the reparations. And what I mean by that is we can be the most successful uh, heritage in America. But what, what we don't do, we don't do just like uh, we have Jews on here talking. We have white people on here talking. We don't really stick together like the Chinese do. And the reparations, because I, I, I sent a lot of messages. And what we do, we don't really care about the reparations, even though Black Americans should have reparations. We don't really give a, a I ain't going to curse on here, but F about that. Even though F is our just due. Okay, we'll give it to the people that need it the most. You're losing me, brother. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean we don't? What? Where, where are you getting that where we don't care about reparations? Based on what? You got no, no, no. When I said when I said we, I mean my organization. We don't care about it. We just want other black people to actually get it. What, brother? Are you? I'm so lost with what you're saying, brother. I'm saying like. Far as far as me, I'm an entrepreneur, and we actually came to a point to where we thought about it, we talked about it, discussed it, and said, "Okay, let's make our own reparations." That's cool. We doing that, and we're we're actually good. How 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 you make your own reparations? That don't make sense. 
you're not making your own reparations because uh, America is is beautiful. You're and not making your own reparations. You didn't harm yourself. You, if you're running a business, you're making a profit. That ain't reparations. Reparations is something that a group of people took from you, and they're compensating you based on what they took from you. So you're not giving yourself reparations. What are you talking about, sir? What I'm saying is America didn't really take nothing from me. They took something from my ancestors. Which is that's up. Which, which I would like to get back. But if I don't get back, my reparations to my people is helping them with jobs, helping them in the community. No, but here's doing... the thing. Hold on. No, here's the thing. Okay, I'm listening. They took money. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of money off of that free labor of our ancestors. You're right. And guess right. what they did with that money? Mm-hmm. They passed it down to the next white supremacist generation. Exactly. That money built up, and then they passed it back down to the next white supremacist generation. That money didn't go anywhere. That money is still here, being compounded, being aggregated, and being boosted up into more trillions of dollars. That I money agree. Is still here. And the debt is still here that we've been passed down. They passed down the debt. We couldn't get our shit together because of the lack of resources that they've locked us into. And we have to fight our way out of it. So some of us can come up um, because we are phenomenal people, but we shouldn't have to struggle to come up. We should have what's owed to us. We should have compensatory justice. You understand? I do. I really do. I do. And this is the reason why we're having this conversation. And this is the reason why I, I, I jumped on your, your, your platform. It's because, yes, we do. But how many years do we have to wait on that? How many years do we have to talk about that before we decide to say, you know what? This is our reparations. Y'all gave us a little bit and we're going to take a lot. And what I mean by that is y'all gave us the freedom. Well, actually, we paid for our fucking freedom. But we fought for y'all gave freedom. us enough. Y'all gave us enough to actually do what we need to do. As far as who gave us what? Intellect. Who gave what? Who, who, who gave us what? What are you talking about, brother? Who gave us what? Who, who gave us enough? Who and what was enough? What What are you talking about? Okay, let me break this down. Can me and you agree? That we built this country. Right. Who gave us enough? Okay. Who gave us enough? Yeah. I, I keep saying, we. We gave us enough. No, okay. To where it's, okay. We gave us enough yeah. to where it's, we can do. Have our- a good night, brother. I'm not about to hear plebiscite babble. This is the damn problem when it comes to conversations about reparations and when we do these hearings, a lot of times we get these plebiscite babblers who just pop up just to be talking. It's satianisms. Just saying shitisms. All right, that's all that is. Let's be real. There's nothing constructive about that. Cats say, okay, there's a lot of people in the room. People don't be listening to me. This is my opportunity to get on the mic. Um, um. First of all, um, I like to say I'm a black American and uh, um, we are giving ourselves reparations um, because we don't need reparations from the government because uh, they don't owe us anything because we are really from a distant planet in a parallel universe called Sputnik. All right. And as a Sputnikian, when I came to this planet, I came with $2, and now I got $30, and that's from my own ingenuity. I gave myself reparations. <sighs> okay. You, you see, plebiscite babble. Damn plebiscite babble. Just talking to be talking. Goodness freaking gracious. Beth K. Let's get Beth K. in the building. Miss Beth K. Hello. How is everyone this evening? Everyone is great. Beth, how are you? 
I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um, what city are you in, by the way, Beth? Oh, I'm in Wisconsin, Milwaukee there area. There you go. So what's on yeah. your mind? Um, I was just curious. So the crazy comedian, Owen Benjamin, he laid, he laid out an idea or a plan uh, for reparations mm -hmm. where, where instead of paying out reparations, he could just have um, people on his plantation picking cotton. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? A lot of y'all suspected white supremacists. Y'all really got to work on your wit and your trolling. Y'all really got to work on that. Because a lot of you have a lot of vitriol and because we're making progress with the reparations conversation, y'all don't know how to deal with it. So you fall back on this real weird out of context, lame trolling, and it makes y'all look bad, and it makes you look like you're shook, and it makes you look afraid, and you're hiding your fear behind that weird trolling. What are you really afraid of when it comes to reparations? Let's talk real. I'm not going to even dignify that troll shit with a response. What are you really afraid about reparations, Beth? Um, I'm not afraid of anything. I mean, the fact is... Um, this government has been throwing reparations around to uh, troll you, the black Americans, for the last, I don't know, 50 years. It's never going to happen. They did it as a carrot to say, oh, you're going to get reparations. Just vote for us. It's never mm -hmm. happening. Yes, it is. No, Beth, it's not. Sweetie. Beth, it's going to happen. You know why, Beth? Because what happens is the money that's being... That should Tell be me where it's coming from. Tell me where uh, it's coming from, from our budget in this right. country, from taxpayers and all the money that's being printed. Tell me where it's coming from, please, sir. The U.S. government, ma'am, is going to come from the U.S. government. No, the U.S. government is the taxpayers, which means right. all of us that are working right. for our money mm -hmm. and the GDP and everything that's going out and coming in. So where is it that's coming from coming. when we are broke? Where we're not broke, we're not broke. We're giving money to the Ukraine. We're not too broke for that. We're giving no. Money. They're printing we're, money and right. giving it to the Ukraine. We're printing for us. We are printing money and giving uh -huh. it to well, they, Israel. It is broke. printing it money. It's fake money. Right, right. No. It ain't that fake. It's they're not our money. Uh huh. You're just babbling, ma'am. I want the same money. They're not that broke to give money to the Ukraine. They're not that broke to give money to these illegal immigrants coming over here. They're not that broke. So we're going to get that money, too, for us. Then. Correct. Right. So we're well, gonna, that's you just said we're not that broke, but we are. And no, you know not. we are. Yes. No, we're not. And you know we are. No, we're not. You know this we are. Why, why we are a bank. No, stop, stop, stop the little mayonnaise mouth, ma'am. This is why reparations for foundational black Americans is very important because we're the ones who we're going to stimulate the economy. We're not going to be like some of the immigrants who send money back and some of the Ukrainians and that money is not being spent here. We're going to boost the economy with what's owed and we're going to get reparations back. We're going to get it and you're going to be very happy because the, the economy will be boosted there because listen, Tariq, Beth, it's not, no, listen, don't Best think people. that I don't want you to get reparations. You don't. That's oh, not what it is. Of course you don't. You, you, uh, we know you don't, but it's going to no, happen. No, you Beth. don't know. You don't know what I think in my mind. Beth, you came in here with a uh, an anti-black troll, um, some lame troll. I asked you, you a question about right. Owen Benjamin's joke. Right. right. Okay. You came in with some lame anti-black troll material. So that shows your mindset, Beth. So, Beth, we're going to get reparations because, listen, Beth, the money... You're not already, going to get reparations. We get, we get, it was Beth, 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 listen, dear. They can't just keep... They're already throwing the reparations money out trying to contain us. They spend billions of dollars on militarized police weaponry and millions of dollars on payouts for non-justice for cops harming people in the city all around the country these cities have to pay out millions and millions and millions of dollars it's Man. all a manipulation sir <laughs> they are not going to pay a dime in 
Yes, they are, ma'am, because they're already throwing the money away. And at some point, ma'am, they're going to have to just be practical about it and just give us the money so that we can produce justice. You cannot sustain a society militarily and just keep funding a militarized society to suppress people. The money what runs What militarized out. society are you talking about? I'm talking about the system of white supremacy. They, they create a militarized white system. supremacy? Are you yes. being serious right now? Where? Yes. What? You, you, ma'am. You are a, a, a perfect example of white supremacy. You. You came in the room displaying white supremacy, ma'am. That would be you. You just muted me. <laughs> right, because I'm telling you, you asked me a question, and I want. You said you know? white supremacy, yes. right? Correct. Uh huh. Is the majority yeah. of this country? Is that correct? White supremacy, ma'am. Listen, white supremacy dominates the entire planet, not just this country. No, it doesn't. All countries. Yes, it does. What name a country? What name a, okay. of the world All. is white Europeans? Oh, no, not Jews, no, no, no. white no, Europeans. No, 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 what no, percentage? We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do that here, man. We don't do the Jewish deflection. We're talking about white supremacy, not religion. Um, the white supremacists dominate. I wasn't all talking the world. about religion. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to deflect. No, white there's, a, there's a big difference no, 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 between no, white not, Europeans. No it, ain't, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You all practice white supremacy. Yes, it is. Yes, it no, is. Yes, I, it is. I say so, and we've already debunked that, so we're not going to cover that here. But we're talking there about There is white no debunking about that. It is, ma'am. You it's know white. there's a difference. You're, you're no, saying not, no, that, and you know no, there's not. a difference between no, white Europeans and Jews. No. No, when y'all deal with black people, there's no difference. The white supremacists in both communities are anti-black towards us, and that's all that's that matters. That's not true, because yes, foundational black Americans that you talk about separate themselves from the migrants that are coming up over now to USA from Africa. They separate themselves, Correct. Um, no, well, the migrants separate themselves from us, and we are delineating because of a reparations claim, because our reparations claim cannot go to everybody, ma'am. So that's why we delineate. That's for a specific legal claim. So you're so, so you're you, only delineating you, over you share the same views, protections, and set asides and benefits as. All of the people classified as white who believe in white supremacy, ma'am. So we don't break so, people up. So in other words, we go to work, get jobs. You go what, dear? Go ahead. Say what you're saying, dear. Beth, I don't have you blocked, dear. I'm, I don't stop have, muting me. Um, have, go ahead, dear. So, so the white people, the white, the white uh, supremacists, supremacists. Right. we go to work and get jobs. That's the problem in the country. That's what we do yeah, wrong. That, that's some that's some janky straw man argument that you created. No, Nobody. it's not a stram, straw man. <laughs> it, yes, it, man. you just made you just you just made up a straw man. You you being a white supremacist, ma'am. You're just saying stuff. It's I'm white and I say so. You're doing a lot of I'm white and I say so, ma'am. That's what makes me suspect that you are a white supremacist based on your tactics and your views, ma'am. But but Beth, and you're not Beth, addressing the fact that. The Jewish no, no, people. No, no, no. What? No, no, no. We don't. We don't deflect into Jewish people. We don't man. talk about Jewish people. We don't. We don't deflect into Jewish deflect people. Deflect. Right. That's Jewish bigotry. People. That's that's bigotry. You're talking. Bigotry. We don't. Do Is bigotry. it anti-Semitism? No, no. You you you're Is it racism. You're engaging in bigotry. That's more white supremacy. Bigotry. Man. Right. I don't know. Why am I going to criticize okay. a person based on their ethno-religious beliefs? I don't criticize white people, ma'am. What percentage of the population? Why are you engaging in bigotry? That's very bigoted. No, man. I was going to ask you a question. But no, but what ma'am, percentage why of the population? Why are you denigrating Jewish people? Runs That's the big- country, like as in media. But ma'am, why are you denigrating Jewish? people? Are they people? primarily Jewish people or are they white people? They're white people. Are, are they black run people? Television. Black people. Oh, they're white people. White. What black? Europeans? What black people are running the media? I don't know. I was asking you. Right. No, not too many. Black people don't run the media. It's run by the white supremacist. No, it's run by the Jews. No. That's a, there's a difference. 
It's run by the Jews. No, there's white people, the white Jews. The no. black Jews don't well, own yeah, it. Yeah, they're white. There you go. No, there are no the black Jews. That's yeah. Not, unless so what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean there's not black Jews? What are you talking about? Unless they're Bouye, the the uh, the rap people that sign over the What are you knife. talking about? They are black Jews. What white what black, black, Jews, Jews? black Jews? Black Jews all in Ethiopia. The black Jews go to Israel. There's black oh. Jewish tribes in Africa. So in the United States of slow America, down, man. Slow what down. white slow down. wait no slow down. You you said something and you just got easily debunked and now you want to change the subject. Why did you lie like that and say there were no black Jews? Why would you tell that lie? See, this is why we, we if you're going to lie, we, we can't really continue. You can't lie and then run away from your lie. How are you going to say there are no you black You just changed people? the subject. We were talking about no. who runs the country. Right. And I was asking who Jews. runs the media. No. And you said, I said Jews. Who? And, and I said, well, there's black Jews. They're not running anything. And you said there are no black Jews. Stop muting me. <laughs> right. All right, but no, no, you're not going to talk over me. Why did you lie and say there were no black Jews? There, yes, there are I black. I didn't. Jews. I asked you, who are the black Jews? There aren't black Jews. Where are they? And I just told you, there's a Jewish, there's Jewish tribes in Africa. You have Ethiopian Jews. You have Jews who go over to Israel, and they're discriminated against by the white ones. This is very well so, documented. So what? So whitey the problem. All the way around. White, is white White people are the problems. White supremacists, not white people. You sound like white a Jew. People. Are white you Jewish? People. Yeah, you're trolling again, ma'am. No, I'm asking means a I'm question. Winning. Are you Jewish? Trolling, no. Trolling, trolling means I'm winning, ma'am. You're not winning. Actually. I'm winning because you're trolling, ma'am. And that means no, I'm. No, I asked you a question. I, are you Jewish? A, do I need to take a victory lap, ma'am? Because you're trolling at this point, ma'am. I'm enjoying this. Right, because you've run out of material. And black I have not run out of black material. Daddy, black I'm enjoying daddy this conversation. You, you like getting spanked by black daddy? Oh, that's sad. No. The black daddy is spanking you intellectually. So you're a Jew? So you're just you're saying anything? You're a black anything. Jew? That's weird. Okay, so now the unfunny trolling is about to start. So let me get my victory lap on. Hey, Beth. Okay, Beth. So you're tapping out. When you start trolling, that means you're tapping out. And I, I will... Except your defeat. I didn't tap well, out. I'm yes, still you did. Here. No, no, no. You're trolling, ma'am. And that's, no, I'm still here. That's the white supremacist way of tapping out. And I accept <laughs> White supremacist. Yes, I want to go ahead and... No, it's and, really silly. There's no, no white supremacy in this country. You're being <laughs> silly about this. Everybody did, would then, agree with then it. Then why no. did your people... Every why did you, normal why did, human being... Then why did your people have laws talking about white supremacy? Why did your people say that, ma'am? Why did they say that they're building a system? Stop like muting me. No, ma'am, no, ma'am, ma'am. Ma when? This, what? Joe Biden this or is something? Ma ma when? When? Yes. Ma'am, you are not. You can't talk over Black Daddy now. You can't do that. All right, you got to calm down. I apologize, sir. Go all right. ahead. All right, all right. Use that mouth to shut up and smoke meth, but not talk over me. Um, ma'am, white supremacy has been the law of the land. They've been practicing white supremacy by name and reinforcing white supremacy. This is their term. This is from your community. They told us they were Who's white. Who's they and when? The white supremacists. And they've been doing this for the last when? Uh, for the last 200 years. They've been promoting. Tariq, white... Tariq, Tariq. It's 2024. Can you And please? we're still dealing with white supremacy. No, still... we're not. Where? Just... Tell me where. All areas of activity. Tell me where. Then why does DEI exist? Because that's a figment of white supremacist imagination. No, it's you're just being it's funny. A, it's you're a the white troll. Like, that's dude, you're being fucking man, funny. Man, man, DEI is another boogeyman acronym to attack black people. Just like CRT, just like affirmative action. You guys always have to create these boogeyman ideologies as a way to attack black people, which is further proof of white supremacy. Okay. I never attacked black people. You keep you muting me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yes, you did. And you came in the no, room. No, I didn't. You came Stop. in with, with weird trolling. Beth, Beth. No, I was Beth, making Beth, a Beth, joke Beth, because Beth, Owen yeah. Benjamin. Uh -huh, what? Beth. Go ahead. Beth, um, where'd you go to college, Beth? I am super intelligent. I didn't need college. There you I go. Have hey, high IQ. Right, me either. I didn't go to college either. I'm not saying that as a, um, 
so you didn't go to college. How many black men were you with when you were in your teens or your early 20s? Are you being serious right now? Being very serious. How many black men were you I, with? I didn't. Really? Really. I find that hard to believe, Beth. Why is that, Tariq? Because a lot of you white supremacist women had a little run you, here and there. Tariq, stop and then when, with the and white supremacists. And, and when you get it's older. It's really funny. And then when you get older, and then when you get a little older, you get a little long in the tooth, then you take on these white supremacist views. My tephuses are not long. Yeah. Okay. Your teeth and your titties are long. My tephuses. Yeah. Yeah. No. None of them are long. Yeah. 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 And I think them long titties were in the mouth of a brother back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Let's agree that I think, handshake. I think listen. them titties. I think them titties were sucked on Tariq. by a Tyrone. All right, <laughs> Tariq, you're being very gross. No, <laughs> no, ma'am. I shake ma your hand. Does your titty uh, nipple smell like Hennessy and Newports? Ew. What? Ew, no. You had you a hood, <laughs> <laughs> did you? Oh my God. <laughs> and and no, now you want to flip. The, now you want to flip the script. All no, right. but I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm I would like to just like Daquan had fun up in your cooter cat. All right. Wow. Yeah, come on. Let's let's. let's you don't on. have to be so rude. I, I'm, I'm um, y'all y'all be having a rendezvous with the brothers, and then y'all want to switch up and be on some white supremacist stuff. But there's no white supremacist. What the hell are you talking about? Man, man. Oh. My goodness. Right. Anyway, Beth. Anyway, thank you so much, Beth. I appreciate you, dear. All right, let me let you get back to the trailer park. All right, Beth. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell these women that had a little rendezvous with the brothers. All right. This this Marcus dude. You what's with uh, this? You you're doing a lot of trolling in the comment section. Which is weird, dude. A lot of weird trolling. You got to cut that out, bro. Yeah, you got a lot of weird dudes be popping in the mix just doing weirdo stuff. Watch this stuff. You are re trolling real hard in the comment section. You got to watch a lot of people on these spaces. You got people who be deliberately trying to instigate little beefs and stuff like that on some real oppie shit. You got some real oppie cats who lurk around in these spaces who try to low-key instigate altercations and beefs and it's very clumsy the way you're doing it because you can tell that somebody didn't sent you in here to try to do something weird all right all right let me get boys we're having a decent conversation tonight we got a lot of people in here we got 1100 people in the building right now this is the middle of the night. Um, what's your name? Um, David. Hop on, David. And um, Tariq. What's um, up? I, I just want to give you um, a couple of facts. Um, Jews are not white, even though they might have uh, yeah, they are. as they, white skin. The, the uh, white just ones listen are. to the facts. The I'm, I'm literally going to speak the truth. The a white Jew will are. actually admit that they are not white. The white ones are, sir. The white ones are. A white Jew will admit that they're not actually white. They will always tell you that they're a Jew. They are not actually white. They white might have. It's a lie. That's a lie. That's just not true. You're already lying. So that I'm not lying, Teresa. Yes, you, yes, you are. You're lying, and that nullifies everything that you have to say. What you're doing is practicing white supremacy, sir. This isn't white supremacy. This is what the Jews will actually tell you. This is what I've been told by actual Jews. They will admit no. that they are not. No, it's Jewish people who classify themselves as white, and you're trying to deflect from that, sir. And that's what a white supremacist would do. So we're not buying it, David. All right. Just, Just because you can't handle the facts, we're not fucking buying. stupid nigger oh, cunt. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to be racist as fuck right now because there you kept muting me. There Instead you of letting go. me there make a go. valid there point, you go. stupid there low you go. IQ. Oh, no, no, no. See, there you go. I wanted to come on out. Come on out. Just be the white supremacist you are. Don't try to hide behind Jewish people. You be the white supremacist that you're supposed to be. I like when you're very, you're very honest about being white supremacist. Don't try to hide it. 
Do not try to hide it, ladies and gentlemen. And don't try to throw the N-word around. That doesn't bother us, by the way. That doesn't bother us, David, because we know you're sitting in that trailer park with struggle jeans. Uh, actually, right? no, I live in a fucking stone-built house. Uh, you're the one living oh, yeah. in you, you sound like a methed out Harry Potter, okay? You over there in Hogwarts with a meth pipe. So, sir, you're struggling. And you're, you got struggle jeans, all right, the low birth rates are kicking that ass right now with your pepper uh, pig. Tariq, yeah. can I give you some facts? You Did can't give me nothing, little struggle gene. Irish white people were slaves before niggers. Okay, it doesn't matter because you were the N-words of Europe. You weren't even classified as white until later. They didn't even let you into whiteness, all right? They used to portray you as simians and ape-like creatures, so, yeah, so we two N words sitting in a tree, ain't we? All right? So, yeah, you think you eat? Yeah, I get called potato. You, well, what you say with your little broke cell? I, I couldn't hear you, your, your little struggle phone. Uh, I said, I get called potato nigger. Uh, you're just a slow. Okay, it's not really that. You're just a low IQ nigger. Well, damn it, I'm not struggling and fleeing like you, sir, from the slums of Europe. All right. So how high is Oh, that? I didn't leave Europe. I'm still here. Um, sir, you're probably somewhere in Canada or over here in the United No, States. I'm actually in the country I was born in. Um, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You're not in little... Yes, old... I'm Irish. You're not over there in little janky Ireland. Okay. I'm Irish and I still live in Ireland. You look... Okay, you sound like a musty leprechaun. All right. Trying to get me gold <laughs> with your struggle genes. All I right. can sound American if that'll help. Okay, well, why don't you get them birth rates up? What are you going to oh, do? Oh, I am. I'm actually... Uh, How are you going to do that? Th 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 there is what? Three different women um, impregnated by me recently. And yes, they've done the pregnancy test. They are actually pregnant. They're all white women as well. Well, stop it. Stop it, sir. You probably got you an Indian refugee over there. You about to have your little tar bash. You uh, to... No, I don't. I don't touch. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I... yes. You got you an East Indian woman pregnant, and so you about to have a, a little baklava eating baby. All right, you about to have a little leprechaun with a red dot, sir. It's about to be real funny style. No, I'm not a race mixing food. No, oh, no, 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 sir. You are babbling white supremacists with struggle genes, and you're very mad. So anyway, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm yes. delighted that I'm irritated. Uh, well, I'm delighted that you can leave. Top of the morning to you. There you go. I got you up out of here. Let them genes struggle, buddy. Let them struggle. Boy, we in here heavy. Speaking of musty, um, the root work deodorant. It's available at RootWorkStyle.com. RootWork deodorant, available at RootWorkStyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right. <clears throat> well, we are in here deep. 1,100 people in the middle of the night. Um, let's get Prodigal. I think I remember having you in here before, Prodigal. Prodigal. And I got to do, do a shoot in the morning. I got to do a film shoot. Well, not in the morning, in the afternoon, so I ain't going to be up here too, too late. Prodigal, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good. How are you, Prodigal? I'm all right. I'm just confused because how many Jews are Nazis, KKK, or in white supremacist organizations? I mean, is that your argument you're making? Um, yeah, you do have a lot. Well, you did have a lot of um, um, white supremacist Jewish people who were actually in Nazi and white supremacist organizations. You had a lot of Jewish people who were connected to the alt-right. So you have... Um, I, I, just, I just find it... I, I, listen, I'm not anti-Semitic by any measure, but right. somebody, somebody said it earlier. Depending on the situation, they identify as white, they don't. If you look at mass migration, a lot of the groups are led by people of Jewish ethnic faith or religion. And this is something that affects FBAs as well as other groups. I mean, you're being pushed out of, you know, a lot of your own communities. Look at Compton, look at other people. The Latinos are just supremacy. taking it over. That's the white supremacy. That's white supremacy pushing yeah. the border policies. That's what you're yeah. saying? 
Yeah, white supremacy. You're talking about Compton and all. These were these places were sundown towns. Some of these places used to just have signs saying whites only. It didn't say Jewish only. It said whites only. I, I'm talking about the last 20, 30 years. Right, but I'm saying mass but migration. The, <laughs> but like if, rem- you're, if you're going to deal with a product, you have the, to deal with it. At- remnants, the remnants of that, just because they took the signs down, the ideology didn't go away. So the same mindset, it's still there, the white supremacist mindset. We're talking about white supremacy. So, I mean, uh, you got to you got to actually, you know, be able to talk about the facts. I'm not sure if you're paid. I mean, a lot of leaders are paid by certain groups. Right. You know, you Which the, is a you project. Look at, you, look, you look at the SPLC. That's you, look a project. At the, you look at the ADL. These uh, th- right. those are led, allegedly led white organizations seem to right. hate white people and want to erase them. And they're no, not. No. I mean, what are you talking about? Have you looked at some of their definitions and, and what they state? You know, even saying something as, as simple as it's okay to be white and being as racist. Like, this, it's just come, weird, because I heard Myron call you out on this, and you started like a fool, the, and you're... Who? Okay, you're projecting, sir. You're trying to act like you got some imaginary win. Nobody called me out on anything. I debunked about 20 anti-black races, and I washed all of them and embarrassed them all across the internet, prodigal. And that sounds it's like why you're, weird. You can't talk and, about certain, and you're salty because of that, sir. And you're mad because the whole Jewish deflection thing kept falling flat, and it's falling. No, flat. I think you're bad faith. I think no, that no, you no, can't. No, you can't no, 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 no. You're upset because that ain't working. We're not I'm not. Letting you do I, that. I, I know that's you not know, working. Starting- it's not working, prodigal. You're never going to deflect away from the real issue, which is white supremacy. You're not going to make up on another imaginary... Well, it's going to be hard to get reparations. No, no, no. Don't worry about that. We I, I don't work. need to. Your own, your, the Democrats are replacing you. They're bringing in... Right. Uh, they're, it's, always, oh, it's always the Democrats or it's well, the Republicans. I mean, it's clear. I mean, oh, they want... No, 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 it, no. It's not a political group. All of you I, got... I'm talking party. about political power. You have to have a means to an end. When you're being no. replaced by... Asians and Central and South and Americans, and your voting block is, and the white supremacists are orchestrating that, sir. That's orchestrated by the they're they're allowed in by the white supremacists, sir. Right, right. The white supremacists are allowing them in, sir. Right, come on, man. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. I, I'm muted. You mute every two seconds because I right, make right. a point. It's pretty sad right. that you can't let no. me speak. You're that scared. No, but no, because you're not going to talk over me. You're sir. that scared. Yeah, you yeah. You're, not, you're, not, you're not going to talk over me. This is not your uncle's penis. You're not going to open your mouth and start bobbing. Yeah, that's down. scared. It's weird. No, no, it's no, very no, 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 no. You you don't talk and just babble over me, sir. You, you're not going to do that now. You got to have some decorum in here, prodigal. I'll take the victory. It's, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Right. No, 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 no. You're not going to crack or babble. You're not going to do that. You got to have decorum, sir. All right. He he left. Right. You don't get to come in here and babble. All right. You're not just going to say a bunch of nonsense. You're not going to deflect. Y'all think you're going to come in here and deflect on the Republicans, then the Democrats, then the Jews. You know, no, no. It's white supremacy. That's the problem. And you're not going to deflect away from that. All right. We got some more white supremacist deflectors in here. Okay. Let's get Larry the camel and he got something about Zionism on his page, so that's going to be interesting. Larry, hop on. And Wakil, you in here, brother? Wakil? Wakil? I was yeah, going to say, yeah. Let, yeah, I'm I was gonna say let Dr. Davinsky up. Thanks I'm for here. letting me up. I was going to vouch for him. You've had him Hold on, before. Larry. Hold on, Larry. Hold on. Let me get Wakil. Wakil, what's up, brother? What's going on? How's the brother? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you gotta. Uh, these guys, they be bringing up this Jewish thing. They like uh, obsessed with this Jewish thing, ain't they? Oh yeah, big time. It's a major deflection that they're trying to do, and it ain't working. And they're getting frustrated because we're not letting them deflect. Uh-huh. You know, and when I was in, in, in the joint, the Italians, the Jews, all stick together with the Anglo's. Against the blacks, and then right. the Puerto Ricans are join in at some times. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And they've always been like that. And I'm, that's why I don't, we're not going to divide them up in little subgroups and they're all working together. No, no, no. You work together, you get judged together. So 
everybody from these different ethnic groups who practice anti-black racism, you're one and the same. You are all one and the same. Larry the Camel, hop on, man. How you doing? How you guys doing? I would say uh, I came up to let uh, Davinsky, you've had him up here before. I've seen him waving his hand. Dr. Davinsky, I think he's in your uh, requests. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a white man, and uh, he's got some interesting insights. I think he spoke on your uh, show before Larry, here. Larry, Larry, slow down. You're, you're, you're coming in late. We already talked to him. <clears throat> I already had him up, Larry. I've talked to him. We oh, had, you already had him up? Yeah, we had a long conversation with him already, so... So you yeah, can't. I'll, I'll, I'll switch down. To this. On your mind. Now, don't don't try to hide behind him. What's your ideology? Where are you from, Larry? Where am I from? I'm from. I'm stateless. I'm from a sanctioned country. Oh, I'm from God. a poor African country. And I, th I see the world heading out. I think basically what I'm seeing here is governments Stop around that. the world are behaving Larry's like third Larry. world politicians. Stop that. Stop I think uh, I think it's happened in the United States. I Larry. Think I, I, Larry, 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 you stop. You don't don't start babbling. It wasn't a trick question. You should, don't be ashamed of where you're from. Where's your family from, man? What part of Africa? Where am I from? I'm from I'm from East Africa, a country called Somalia. Right. Now why is that so hard to say, Larry? It's not hard to say. Don't be ashamed. We know it's down bad, but don't be I'm, ashamed. I'm, I'm from a sanctioned state. Third yeah. world. Africa. Right. right. What was your, you know, I know your name isn't Larry. What was your name back home? No, this is my, uh, this is my. What was your name back home? Larry? Alhamdulillah. Larry? One of the 25 prophets of the Islamic faith, of the Abrahamic faiths, I would say. Larry, are you living in Minnesota now, Larry? No, I'm not from Minnesota. You where are you living now? Right now, I'm in uh, I'm in Africa. You're not in Africa. I'm back in Africa. I, I left the no, West. I left no, the West. Not. Currently in Africa. Okay, Larry. Why wouldn't I be in Africa? Why wouldn't I I'm be not, in I'm Africa? I'm just going to have a musty tether sitting here lying just for the sake of lying. All right. This, fam, y'all want to know why we delineate? This is why. That's why. This dude just, he... He couldn't even get the conversation started without just lying for the sake of lying, lying and babbling. All right. And we're not supposed to de delineate from lying, babbling tethers. Huh? This man was just coming up with lies just for the hell of it. Yeah. And we're supposed to be on some Pan-African vibe with that. huh? We're supposed to be building with that. You see why we ain't never got nothing popping with that? What we gonna get popping with that? Nothing. All right. Che, let's get let's get Che in here. Che, hop on. All right, Che, your microphone ain't working. Um, Beth, I've already had you on, dear. You, shouldn't you be looking at um, a Black Planet page or something like that? Hello? What's up, Che? Hey, what's up, man? Um, I just wanted to piggyback off of what that white supremacist lady was saying, a whole bunch of bullish about um that there's no such thing as white supremacy. If you go to her page, all she does is obsess about black people and specifically black women or you know, little stuff like that. Um, these people are insane. They act as if we're not seeing what we're seeing or going with what we're going through as black people in this country. And it's just, it's fucking irritating. So, you know, I really, yes, I really appreciate you spending 10 toes down on everything regarding these, these individuals. I really yes. appreciate that. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you so much. I appreciate no you. Problem. All right. But well, we in here heavy. We're in here heavy. Um, by the way, everybody can go to Hidden History Museum. Don't forget, we still got the Hidden History Museum. Everybody can make donations to the Hidden History Museum. Make your weekly and monthly donation to the Hidden History Museum. And also get the book on the Hidden History Museum website for Hidden Heroes from A to Z, a children's book that breaks down a lot of good historic game. Very good book for you kids. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. That's where you can get the book. 
All right. Let's get some more folks in here. Um, you know what I found out um, the other day when we were talking about hip hop and MC Shan made a video talking about how black people, only thing black people brought to rap was, or hip hop was the rapping and all of the Puerto Ricans and all these other groups brought everything else. The, the They brought the fashion to hip hop, talking about how they were, the black artists were dressing like the Puerto Ricans in the eighties, which is horse crap. And people are like, where the, what the hell is this dude talking about? Now we, we know that Shan was on the pipe at one point. Somebody asked him and I saw it. I should have put this up. They asked him about his background, his lineage. Shan said his people are from the damn Virgin islands. So that explains it. When he was saying that, I said, we need to check his background. And somebody asked him in like in a comment section, then he responded that his people were from the Virgin Islands. So MC Shan is a damn tether. Okay? That's why you see these people saying all this weird stuff about hip hop and who created this and who didn't. And you'll see that they got some foreign backgrounds. But MC Shan is from the Virgin Islands. I, I wish I had the screenshot of um, the sister who asked him about his background. You there? So yeah, that explains a lot. Y'all hear my zapper in the back? I got my insect zapper. I love my insect zapper. Because late at night, little bugs, my kids be running in and out the house, so bugs be in here. I know y'all hear a popping sound in the back. That's my guilty pleasure. I got my zapper on my desk and it be zapping the hell out them damn insects. I love it. We light my asses up. Yeah. All right, let me see who we got in here. Well, I ain't going to be on here too, too long because I do got stuff to do in the morning. You good over there, Beth? You know, Beth, I don't know why Beth is trying to get back in. Hold on, Beth, let me get Beth in. Beth, why are you trying to get back in, there, Beth? Hop on, Beth. You, you, you're requesting to get back in. Why are you trying to get up under Black Daddy? Why are you trying to get back in? <laughs> What's going on with that? Uh, listen, I like talking to people. Um, I, I'm not, listen, I'm not someone who likes to uh, get in altercations. Of course so, not. Right. It sounds like you don't either. So, right. No altercation at all. This is an education. It's an education, not an altercation. It I was is. Educating. Yes, I was educating you. This is a school for you. You're educating me? Yes, yes indeed. Oh, well, yes indeed. You're going well, to Black I'm Daddy enjoying... Uni you're going to Black Daddy University. You're going to an HBCU <laughs> right now. Yeah? You're right. like Rachel Dolezal, but go ahead. Uh, except I didn't like brown my skin and pretend I'm a black person when I'm a I white know. girl. I know, but kind of back in the day you know. the brothers the brothers browned that cooter cat. But go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Dude, yes. why do you have to be so disgusting? It's That's just inappropriate. No, it's inappropriate. I know you're married. I know Don't you're married. mute me, though. Don't mute I'm me. I'm not. And I know you're married to a nice, nice, good white supremacist male. I know that. No, listen. And, and you don't, it's you, not. Why do you have to? Listen. Why do you have to do this? You have a huge following. Right. You don't have to make. Right. You don't have to make every white woman into a white supremacist person. But based on, act, based on some of your actions and your words, ma'am, it's safe to suspect that you are white supremacist. No, I'm and, not. And most I, likely you might be married to one, ma'am. No, I'm not. Who are you married to? What, what's your husband? Where, where's he from? Well, none of your business. That's how it is. <laughs> well, well white supremacy, probably white supremacist. What's right? your wife? My wife is a beautiful red bone black queen. From what I recall, I think Tommy Sotomayor said that your wife's father or mother is a Jew or something. So your wife's right. a Jew. Okay. So you're trolling. kind of tied the Jewish. No, I'm just Tro saying. Trolling, I'm right. You're and, trying and, to get and, into my personal business. And shout business. out to Tommy, by the way. Shout out to Tommy for finessing you white supremacists. Tommy just it's says. It's not it. finessing. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, shout listen. out to the homie Tommy. For finessing you white supremacists. He says off the wall shit so that he can get clicks and views and money from the clicks. And I ain't mad at him. If y'all believe that stupid shit, that shows how low your IQ really is, ma'am. But go ahead, dear. 
And shout out to Tommy. Go ahead, dear. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, out of however many people are listening right now, there's me and you. Nobody there's, else yeah. wants to come up as a speaker. So maybe yeah, there's a act, problem with you. No, no, no maybe people don't want to be in. No, actually, there's dozens of requests, ma'am. There's about 40 people who's requesting right now. I just brought you up because you kept making little hand signals, and I just wanted to see what else you wanted to say. You just wanted to talk to Black Daddy. That's why you... I didn't follow- make hand signals. Yes, you did. You're trying to get back up. That's why you listen to the time. You're listening to Tommy. You're listening to me. You're sitting there fantasizing when you're laying up under white daddy and that wet dog smell ain't really satisfying you you're like oh my god what are the blacks doing right come on beth talk to me talk black to me (laughs) well if you unmuted me i would be able to talk it's funny how you do that so unmute me and then i can talk right so i know you 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 got you got soul fantasies. I know. I know. I have ma'am. soul fantasies. No, actually, I was just speaking to the topic. Right. And I can see that out of desperation, you have nobody else fucking coming up to speak. So I did. But that's not true. That's not true. I've been talking to people and watch your mouth. I know. I know you're not the most um, you know, refined person. I know you came from a trailer park, but you don't have to act like that. Yeah, let's not have a potty mouth, okay? Um, but there are several people calling and talking, and I'm corresponding with them. No, I didn't come from a trailer park, and you know nothing about me. Yeah, ma'am. And no, nobody else is coming up. But yeah. I did. Ma'am, you do come from a trailer park, ma'am. You have a trailer park mindset. And you have to focus on black people all day to get your mind off being poor trailer trash. And you sitting up there drinking a Paps Blue Ribbon, um, smoking meth. No, I'm like to, every and and listening to some Ariana Grande albums. Whatever you white supremacists like doing. No, but, I'm like every other white person who has to see videos of black women and men beating people for no fucking reason. Are you crazy? <laughs> and the only thing that's getting beaten is white cootie cat by black soul poles, which is what happened to you when you were younger, ma'am, when you were 1920. That's the only thing that's getting beat. Nobody's beating on anybody, ma'am. That's a fantasy that you have. You got these weird fantasies that you're projecting on the black people, Beth. You will never get reparations because of your behavior. Ma'am, we're going to get reparations. Um, And the reparations is coming in the form of white cooch, that's a form of reparations to some of the, the Tommy Soda Myers and people like that. You guys are paying people like that, their reparations in white cooch. And we're going to get the reparations in cash, too. OK, so no, you won't, because we the will. country will no, the country will suffer and everybody will go under because if any money is paid out. The people will spend the money cause inflation it will crash the entire economy ma'am when you and your community went out there and bought all of that meth and fentanyl that didn't crash the economy it didn't and our reparations checks are not going to crash the economy it's going to boost the economy because we as foundational black americans we're going to use our ingenuity to build this right right ma'am right just like you have foundational meth in your pipe So, yes, foundational black Americans, we're going to boost and stimulate the economy with our reparations checks, ma'am. And you know what that means? That's going to be more fentanyl for you. So you should be happy that we're going to do great. There is no such thing as foundational black Americans. (laughs) There's 43 million of us, ma'am. Yes, we are. And if it weren't for us, you wouldn't it's have had make believe and your your ma'am, 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 everything is make believe. We're foundational black Americans. We are a distinct lineage. If it were not for our distinct lineage building this nation, you would still be somewhere in Poland scratching your ass, eating an egg sandwich. All right. Are you serious? <laughs> As a heart attack. No, you're not, because you know better. The white Europeans are the reason why 
everything exists today. Good luck with your fucking... Man, watch your little dirty potty mouth, man. We don't want that potty mouth here. This is not the potty mouth hour. All right, and she left. She left. She's getting very frustrated because she knows reparations is coming and, you know, she thinks that means less meth. No, it's going to be more meth for you, ma'am. Because the economy is going to be boosted, so there's going to be more businesses. So you can still get get high, and you'll be able to smoke and do what you do. The wet dog smell will be more pronounced, but because of you sweating and being mad, but you know it's going to be a great thing. It's going to be a phenomenal thing. All right, let's get um. Let me see. J W. J W. in the building. And a um, lot of folks in here. What's up, Sister Brooke? I see you down there below. What you doing up this late, Brooke? One, two, three, four. It should, should be four o'clock in the morning out there in New York. All right. Um, JW, you good? JW, are you good? What's going on, brother? I appreciate What's... you bringing me up. My man, how you doing, JW? I'm doing good, man. Hey. <sighs> How can you explain white supremacy when foreign blacks, Asians, Indians are benefiting more from the system than whites? The hell they are. That ain't true at all. There's nothing remotely true about that. They're not the big, top economic big. earners are Asians. There's multiple different no. ethnic groups from Asia. That's not true. Indians, West Indian, uh, black true. immigrants are, are benefiting more from the American system than whites. No. No, they're not. They're not. No, they're not. They're not. No, they're, they're not. That's true. What y'all do, y'all get those medium household incomes and then y'all try to conflate it into something else. No. They show some of these immigrant groups, they have high medium household incomes per capita. But all that means is that it's a bunch of them living in a damn house together. And yeah, they work a whole bunch of minimum wage jobs and there's 20 people in the house. Yeah, the medium- That's not accurate, brother. We're talking but, about wages and earning. No, we're not talking about wages. Yes. What's not? No, it's not. We're would talking you, would about- Would you say that you, you benefit from- Slow down, because you're not going to sit here and lie. We're talking about just the medium household income. And if you got a bunch of people working minimum wage in one house- yeah, the medium household income is going to be higher, all right? It's not that they work harder, they got some kind of an end. It's none of that. It's just more of them you living... You would say that there isn't a difference in the culture? No, no, no. they come from a culture of failure. It's all right, not listen, the... would you agree that all Americans have privilege? How? How? Wait, wait, you go back. You say something and elaborate on what you're saying. I mean, you're, so not, you're, gonna, gonna, you're not gonna uh, accept elaborate the facts that elaborate. the top earning... Ethnic groups in America are Asians, okay. Indians, West Indians even make more than white Americans. That's a fact. If you go off individual income, so so it doesn't that's, really that's validate the claim of white supremacy. That's not true. What you just sitting here lying. You're lying your ass off. No, right? it's not a lie. It's a fact. You're lying. Listen, your ass off. they don't earn their wages. Listen, we're on, the cusp, we're on the cusp of world. They make. You're not going to talk over me. The f don't talk over me. You can tell when somebody lying, you just get to talking fast and you won't elaborate. That's how you can tell somebody's lying. You lie and then start talking fast and talking over somebody and won't elaborate. We're going to, uh, I want to break down. Sir, all I, I want to break down your lies one by one. Cause you know, I'm going to debunk your lies. That's why you keep trying to move on to the next lie. Now, we ain't going to do that now. Now, let's cover the first lie. You said it was about, is it their culture? Elaborate on that. What's the culture that makes them earn all of these high wages you're talking about? What's the culture? Unmute your microphone, Jay. Oh, my bad. What's the culture? <laughs> Let's take a look at acceptance rates in universities. What ethnic group has the lowest standards? What's the culture? I asked you a question. Don't change the, the, the culture. The culture is better education, more discipline, higher, higher, uh, lower single parenthood rates. 
So why are they full of paternity fraud suits and poverty and filth and degradation in their homelands? Because they come to America and benefit from American privilege. And that's my point. Oh, we're on no. The, listen, said, we're on oh, the cu- oh, you just said the culture. So if they come from yeah. this culture, why are their homelands not reflective of this culture? Because why the they- immigrants that come here are the best from that area. The best Nigerians, <laughs> that, the best from Nigeria then come to come America the- and benefit. <laughs> How come the best ain't making that a livable place then? Because of this, because of the opportunities that are here in America. How come, that are, that they, don't have the, how come they didn't create the opportunities over there? Like because we create they're benefiting the, from the American system. How come they couldn't benefit from their own culture? Because it, there aren't opportunities there. There There's, you go. They're that, underdeveloped that, third world that, countries. That, right. So they had to come over here. That's uh, that's not. Uh, That's not pertinent to the yeah, discussion we're having. Yeah, we're talking so about just, culture. So yeah, so their individual culture, is, culture of so their culture is failure in their homeland. Right. So if the, you have to come around us to exhume this great culture, that means we're the secret sauce, right? Right. If you have to come over here in order to be successful, right. American culture. Right, which is us, foundational black America. No, it's not black. It's yes, American it culture. It's foundational Listen. black. It's foundational black American culture. Those immigrants would not have been able to come over here if it weren't for us. You wouldn't have birthright citizenship if it weren't for the grassroots of foundational black Americans. Let's get it straight. Listen, it, brother. It's black culture. The, the birthright Please stop. Please stop muting me. Hold on. No, because you're, you're going to get a history lesson, sir. Birthright citizenship, y'all, tethers being able to come over here and anchor your babies, that was a black grassroots movement. William Nesbitt and brothers like that created that. They fought and died for that. That was a black movement. The immigration movement in the 1960s was on the tail end of the civil rights movement. That was an offshoot of our movement. The fact that you can come over here in large numbers, especially as a melanated person, that is black culture, sir. And that's pertinent to the overall discussion as well, how the civil rights movement was subverted by the neo-Marxist postmodernists, along that's with the, with like the third wave feminists. They that hijacked play. the popularity of Martin Luther King. Uh-huh. Then Martin Lyndon B. Johnson I, came into office, pushed the, 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 the great war on poverty. The single parenthood rate started skyrocketing. Mm-hmm. The culture broke down. And Kids you know what? They're being this, raised by hip hop culture instead of their and, parents. They're being raised you know, by the streets. Okay, and the, you know one of the reasons why the single rate, the single parent rates hopped up too? A lot of the, the immigrants coming over here anchoring these damn babies all over the place. That's another reason people don't talk about why the single mother thing popped off. A lot of people were foreigners and they were coming over here laying up with folks to anchor them babies over here. Great. And that, it, that you created- need to take accountability. What other culture celebrates fucking bitches and sending them home in an Uber pool? Sleeping with women without responsibility. Y'all tether, y'all do that all the time in your homeland. Man, see, this is the problem. Uh-huh. We're on the cusp of World War Three. We're on the cusp you, of a civil you, war. You over, Listen, let me speak, and, brother. And you ain't over in your homeland doing anything about none of the wars. Sorry. No, I'm I'm American. I don't care where no. I come from. Oh no, you a tether. No, I'm I'm an American. I don't care about identity you politics. Tether. You a tether. I'm grateful for the American system, and I'm tired right. of it decaying because of internally parasitic culture. No, Listen. but yeah, parasites like people who flee, like you. You no fled. grifters, Your grifters family. like you. No, no, no. You gripped it on a boat to flee here, sir. That's I don't know where thrift. I come from. I'm not interested in, no, in no, my no, lineage. No, I'm no, interested no, no. Well, in you making te- an impact. Listen, sir, you're a tether. You fled here. Your family Listen, fled. Listen, brother. The fact you is, we here. all have American privilege, and it's no, no, eroding. No, no, Listen. No, 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 no. The way you pay for privilege is with no. virtue. That's what no. justifies the privilege. You are a parasitic tether whose family fled here. You're different from me. Okay. Listen, I know that I impact in a positive way. No, you I don't. Impact everyone impact. around you me. Didn't, you didn't impact the place you fled from. How are you going to impact us? Huh? How are you going to impact us and you didn't impact the place you damn fled from? Listen, Make it, brother. You you use the same tactics. I, I was born here. Now, I, don't I don't know where I, you're an anchor baby. 
All right. You keep cutting me off. Let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're not like you, not like us. You, not like us. You, not like us. The song is about you. You can't sit here talking. The talk song about is you. corny as hell. No, it ain't that corny. It's corny to a tether. No, it's a it's, it's a about terrible you. beat. It's a corny song. It's it's a it's, it's overhyped. It's, it's, and, it's, and who cares it's about you're not like us? You We're ain't all like the same. We need to cooperate no. and stop defecting. We need, to, we need to integrate with each Why other. And we stop. need to cooperate with a flea and tether who has vitriol towards us and who's ungrateful. No vitriol. I have nothing but love. You got you vitriol. Great hell. What the hell? I need to call, do something with you. What are we going to do with you? Collaborate on intellectual ideas and, and create synergistic opportunities. Do you understand what Did synergy is? Did you create is? that in your failed homeland? That your I created it here in America. This is my How homeland. How come you didn't create it back in your homeland? Because I've never... Listen, brother, you I, keep I, muting me. It's listen, hard to keep a train of thought. Stop muting talk, me. You over here pointing a finger talking listen, about hip-hop. I've and never the... been anywhere... You're right, sir. I'm muting you now. You're sitting here talking about hip-hop and all of that. And you got all types of weird stuff in your homeland, don't you? You ain't like us. You, 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 you are. You are an freak. Wouldn't you say that hip hop culture is the most degenerative culture? No, ever it created? ain't. No, it ain't the most degenerate. The, the old tether culture, y'all. Listen, over there. when are you going to take no, a no, 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 no? What's degenerate is crapping in the streets leaving orphans all over the place, having paternity fraud in all of these foreign countries, female circumcisions that you're forcing on people, selling your children to white tourists. That's degenerate culture. You understand? You're not going to come from some of these little filthy places and then try to point your finger at some rappers saying words because a lot of these rappers are performative with their stuff. Many of these rappers, you look at a lot of rappers now, most rappers, a lot of these guys are married with family. Snoop Dogg, married with a family. Lovely wife. Nelly's getting married to Ashanti. Two You're chains. talking about old rappers. Killer Mike is married. Yeah, you get married when you get older. You young, you're going to be out here doing the single man thing. Tariq, yeah. listen, man, when are you going to take accountability there, for no, proselytizing? No, no. You take, when you take responsibility for being a fleeing failed tether. Why am I going to... You have somebody from a fleeing lineage tell me about taking some damn responsibility. How'd that work? Huh? How's somebody who's an anchor baby going to tell us about responsibility? Brother, I was born here. I'm not sure where an my, my lineage baby. is from because I'm not interested. Yeah, I'm yeah, interested yeah, yeah, in yeah. making the most of my circumstances right. and for those around, fellow Americans. I love right. everyone because, in this room. I want to see people see, overcome. I hate no, seeing people no, overcome no, with, with these issues. Within sir, no, no, no. You're trying to project your failure onto us. That's what failure. I'm more successful than you, brother. No, you're not, sir. You're not more successful. Yes, I am. Do you know no. who I am? Do you remember when I humbled you years ago? Sir, when, how, when they tried to cancel me for, for exposing the fraud, Tamika Mallory, exposing all the false narratives pushed by BLM. Oh, oh yeah, you're the producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah remember you now oh so, so you remember when everything i said was righteous and you were you were proselytizing your audience to go against trump now right. you see where we're at with biden getting into so, world war three well, no people can't put food on the table can't put no, gas so, in the tank and, and now you're this? switching hey, up trying on. to endorse trump now, this is a white man by the way this is a this is a white man he's you know you remember i humbled you you were punching air in your little interview with rizza afterwards that's a that's a fantasy your fantasy no, i was you telling you about the issues with the touching from these no, no you took an l you you took an l from black daddy and you feel a certain way about it you took an l from black daddy and what's interesting you're talking about how did generate hip hop is you've made money off hip hop producing hit records right so how are you going to sit here I, and and i speak out about against the culture and i mentor boy. all the kids i collaborate with wow this listen, is a person you know anything this, about this is a person who's leached off our culture and listen to him this is a white Brother, man. i've contributed more to the culture than you have no you haven't sir yes, you i have supported our culture no, you, you haven't, haven't done shit but grift and make corny ass Dude, documentaries. I'm a I'm a foundational black American, sir. How and can I grift a, off my a, what have you done? How can I grift off myself? It's my culture. You're a white man. This ain't your culture. You're a guest in this culture. Listen, brother, when this are we gonna advance culture? and stop?
hold on, this isn't your culture at all. You're a guest in the culture. You're a guest in the country. You're not even from the lineage. You're a foreigner, dude. What are you talking about? You're very confused. You're very, very confused. Listen, stop muting me. Let's talk. Let's grow. Let's build. I love you, Tariq. Right. If it ain't love, it's fear. What are you afraid yeah, of, brother? But you're very confused. Well, you're the one with the struggle. What are you uncertain about? Let's get to the facts. Yeah, let's get to the projection. Okay. The, when when you were you pushing have the BLM device. shit and pushing the defund the police, now look at your city. You can't even go outside with your watch on. You get you get it snatched. That's you. You're soft. Where can I go? Who's gonna snatch something from me? Bro, are you telling me there's not an issue with crime in LA? With these I, uh, with these woke dude, George Soros prosecutors that aren't uh, prosecuting dude, any criminal activity? I, I can go all over LA. In every hood. You remember I'm I sent good. you the DM and told you, let's get a celebrity boxing for 50K and you never responded. The, how are we going to have a celebrity boxing match with one celebrity? You're not what do you mean, celebrity. bro? You're not oh, a celebrity. Whip your ass have up, get 50 that, racks. That's we'll a, put, that's we'll put 50 up. Because you were yapping, me. saying I was soft and a white boy, this right. and that. You're not, yeah, but you would never put 50K up and get a boxing match with me. You're not a celebrity. You're not a celebrity. You can come get your ass with for free. Bro, everything if, happened. If we can put it on camera. Or right. we could build. You're, you're not a celebrity. That's not... I, I don't care about that. Listen, right. what I care about is, is, you are, you are is making adjustments to the poor culture and get into cooperation no. so we can start creating a bigger piece of the pie and no. start redistributing yeah. fix, resources fix instead of having the, grifters like you snatch No, up. no, fix the... No, you grifted off my culture. That's you projecting. No, but you're no, brother, I built... Like you're, you're a suspected white supremacist grifter. Off my culture, sir. That's you projecting. You are a leech. Well, how am I projecting? Sir. I built everything That's from you. scratch. No, you haven't. You've been leeching every beat off I my made. Culture. Start with started. By You've leached off my culture, sir, and you continue to leech off my culture. Hip hop is foundational Black American culture, sir. That's why you got a problem with our film microphone check, don't you? Because you said something about the deck. How do you feel about microphone check? Have you seen it yet? I wouldn't watch any of your corny shit ever since you now, made why, that buck breaking why, shit, bro. Yeah, that's about your community too. The the sexual no, you, 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 you got your rocks off with that homo shit. No, no, no. That's you. That's your Greco Roman culture. You guys got mad because I explore I explored no, your culture. I didn't watch that goofy shit. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's your culture. That's white supremacist culture. You guys have always been homoerotic, sir. That's your culture. All right. And this, the, my film microphone check probably has you salty, too, because we're letting folks know who's guest in our culture, and that would be you. You're a guest in the culture, sir. All right? Listen, brother, when are you going to take accountability and start contributing in a positive when way? When are you going to go to Europe and fix up the slums that your family fled? Bro, I'm American. I'm not. Yeah. You're, listen, you're, I love people globally, but we need to handle these issues in terms of European. You're like European. I said, we're on the cusp of a civil war because of this sir, polar. Sir, you're a European wigger trying to act like me and my. I would country. never say, don't you see all these goofy motherfuckers you saying try, that? Listen to you trying to have the same voice inflection as me and my community. Listen to you. Listen to you. You're trying to sound like us. You're trying to act like us. But you ain't got the majora spirit of a foundational black American. That's why there's Listen. hate. That's why there's no, hate. No, bl black Americans are the that's, strongest yeah, that's human beings. All that, see, that's why I tell people that old yo, yo, yo word to the mother. I tell people I ain't never like that. When these guys come around with that yo, yo, yo talk, y'all remember back in the Mac Lessons days, I said, you watch out for them. The yo, yo, yo word to the mother dudes like that, they are the sneakiest dudes out here. I don't like it. Get away from me with that stuff. If you come around me, be white. Talk white, act white, just do white stuff. I can respect that. All that, yo, 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 let's build my brother. Uh, no, that's all cap. Dudes who do that, those are ops. Because I've seen how those dudes get when they get around police. Boy, the, they start talking like Justin Timberlake. I'm a white boy. I don't, I don't want a gangbang no more. 
I'm, I just want to be white like me and you, sir. I's not a nigra anymore. They switch up on your ass. You see, and listen to him. This guy has exploited our culture. And now he's talking about how hip hop is such a degenerate culture after you've made your money off of it. Boy, these people are parasites. Listen, Tariq, have I said yo, yo, yo once? Yeah, that's your no, whole No, I haven't. Vibe. Stop that's with the same old aura. antics, brother. All the ad hominem vibe. attacks, because you can't debate me, because I'm slaughtering you right now. Dude, You're I'm not built to... Get, get out of here. I've already destroyed you. Yeah, I'm done. I've already packed this guy up in a debate years ago, and he's still salty about it. Yeah, see, this is why the yo, yo, yo word to the mother dudes, I'm not impressed when I see that. Red flag. R major red flag when I hear that yo, yo, yo word to the mother talk. All right. By the way, for more information about Microphone Check, go to microphonecheck.com. When it goes back in theaters in a few weeks, everybody go out and see it. Gotta go see Microphone Check. Man, we got 1,100 people in here in the middle of the night. I love y'all, man, but I got to get up out of here because I do have a shoot in the morning. I thank everybody for tuning in. We had some good conversations tonight, man. I think it was a good vibe tonight. Some very funny, good conversations. And y'all go to my Tariq Radio YouTube channel. Subscribe. Everybody subscribe now, and then you will um, you get to hear the playbacks over there. All right? Fuck you, niggers. Fuck niggers. Oh. Fuck you, niggers. Kira. Kira. That doesn't eat. That that doesn't eat like you. Shut up, nigger. Go with your watermelon. Okay, watermelon is very good. It's better than avocado wraps, okay? Watermelon is very, very good, white supremacist man. And that's not really offensive, you yelling the N-word. You dig? You're just yelling the N-word over and over again because you're yelling out of a sense of pain. Talk to me, Kira. Okay. Well, what what are you posting up? You posting up weird white supremacist stuff. What are you posting up, Kira? I can't see what he's posting up, but I'm gonna take it out of here, Kira. All right, Kira. Anything else to say? Any more racial epithets you want to get out before we go? Let, let's hear it. Let's hear some of the best ones. Give me some some good racial epithets. Well, uh, you know, I did want to speak earlier during the debate that you had with the lady from earlier right. and the guy that you were just speaking with but um i did want to bring up a lot of points but you didn't really seem to bring up any other people it seemed sort of like a one-on-one -on -one discussion but uh i've noticed that you don't really touch on the topic of the jews in which you talk about american culture right. um and that's quite ironic okay so if you could just yeah okay so you ain't got nothing to say so i've already defeated you so all right thank you I no relapse all right i've already defeated you um, how come you don't talk about the Jews means you defeated me. So I'm going to take my victory lap. I will accept your concede and um, you've conceded to me and you're saying that I won because all that is is a deflection. So yeah. So I'll take that win. Anytime they start deflecting into, well, what about the Jews? That's their way of saying you've defeated me. And now it's that's how white supremacists they you know they, they're 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 like children almost they have to just deflect and try to change the subject and then babble and waste time when they lose so that's a tactic that y'all got to get used to so when they start babbling and cursing and whining and yelling racial epithets that means black daddy spanked them intellectually and I'll take that they got a nice black spanking from. FBA daddy. All right. Let's get um, Yankee Bourbon in the building. Yankee Bourbon. Yankee Bourbon, hop on, sir. Yankee Bourbon. Hey, Tariq. How you doing, bud? It's been a while. It's been a while, Yankee Bourbon. What's happening in um, the white supremacist world over there? Oh, it's beautiful. But there's hardly any black folks around me. It, it I, is, I know. I, hey, man. It's we beautiful. <laughs> That wet dog smell, we can't be around it too long, man. It messes with our nostrils. But what's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to say it's unfortunate you took the W when uh, Prodigal came up here. He was touching on a really good point. And it's a point I think 
you actually are well aware is true that you've you've already been replaced you guys lost the chance for reparations you had it no we didn't no we didn't no we didn't because we're getting reparations we, we, we're on the track of getting that now so we didn't lose anything that's that's white supremacist wishful thinking but go ahead with your fantasies go ahead well no it, it, they're your fantasies not mine i'm not in favor of reparations but i think you guys i know that i know that but we're getting them and that's what it is but go ahead well unfortunately you guys bought the shuck and jive the Democrat sold you. And right. now... So yeah, the, and the whole Democrat thing, we don't give a damn about the Democrats. We don't give a damn about the Republicans. We're looking at all of them are just one big glob of white supremacy, and they're just going to have to give us our money. So yeah, we're not doing the... Republicans are the bad guy, the Democrats are the bad guy, the Jews are the bad guy, the Zionists are the bad guy, the Illuminati, they're the bad guys. Don't give a damn about none of that. All of y'all give us our money. How about that? Right? Well, I'll just say they want you as politically irrelevant as the Native Americans. And thanks, right. to, thanks to your voting record, that's exactly where you guys, you're going to find yourselves now. We're Irre relevant enough. To be, well, the, politically they're, irrelevant. They're trying to gain our vote. So they're campaigning very hard to get the vote from us, both parties. And we're saying in order for us to move on a vote, y'all better come up with those tangibles and that's going to be reparations. All right. That makes uh, sense. Well, I suspect they'll they'll do the shuck and jive one more term. This is probably it. You'll hear you'll hear the usual crowd saying, yeah, yeah, we're in favor of uh, reparations, just like they did three and a half years ago. Right. It, they said exactly what you wanted to hear. And 90 percent of the black American community came out and voted for them. And what'd you get out of that? You got nothing. In fact, what you got was open borders. Now, that's not a Republican policy. That is very much a Joe Biden, Obama, Democratic policy. They now, what did you get? Now, what did you get for voting for Trump as a white man? What did you get? Well, I did have a closed border for pretty much. Not really. Not really. The border was open under Trump, too. They weren't deporting a lot of had, people. under. had a pretty Trump. solid economy as well. Right. They weren't deporting a lot of people under Trump. So let's get off that. They were still letting people over here flooding. Well, the zone. Yeah. No, no, man, what did you get, sir? Well, you, see, you don't really need to deport as many if you're not letting that many in. Okay, oh, come sir, on. As under, a under, white under, man, what did you get under Trump? Well, I've already told you two very solid tangibles, right? You've got Nothing. 15 million people just under, under your boy's watch here who've come in and they're flooding your community. They're not flooding my community, Tariq. They're flooding yours. But, but, they're, now, getting, but they're getting your tax dollars, too. You understand? They're getting well, your tax dollars. Well, so, is, so is everybody else, my friend. Right. They're getting your tax dollars, sir. You understand? So you didn't really benefit when under Trump either. You didn't benefit, and y'all well, been. See, I sympathize. I sympathize with the foundational Black Americans. I I appreciate I sympathize with, Black and I American sympathize with I sympathize with some of the poor white supremacists because you guys have to toe the line for the rich ones who exploit your ass and don't give you nothing. They have you working as the foot soldiers while they count all the money and then leave you in the trailer park um, with your four chan memes. So I sympathize with you to a certain degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are my people. I love those guys. I know it. I know it. Hilarious. That. You guys share a very similar sense of humor. There you go. Thank you so much. All right. Anyway, family, boy, these white supremacists are doing the most. And anyway, I'll be here all night with these white supremacists going back and forth. All right. Let me chill. Let me get out of here. Anyway, man, go to rootworkstyle.com and get your rootwork deodorant. Everybody loves that. Lucky Lavender. I got on some Lucky Lavender now, ladies and gentlemen. That's my personal favorite. It, it, it feels good on your body. That Lucky Lavender kills the game and it gives you good energy. Some of that foundational black American spiritual energy. You understand? And um, go get the book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z. You hear all these white supremacists in here? You better start getting your children gamed up very young. We need to get their minds right and get them on the right track to understand racism and black empowerment at a very early age. Because family, like our brother James Small says, once you know your history, boy, these people can't really mess with you. When you know your history, 
you own everybody's ass. They can't really touch you like that. They can't really mess with you. You know, so these white supremacists coming in, they come in here with all the, all of their lies and trolling and deflecting. And because I know history and many of you know history, they don't stand a chance in these spaces. They don't stand a chance. They get blown out of the water very quickly. Then they just reduce themselves to racial epithets and N-word and, you know, because they're not used to black people spanking them like that, you know, especially black people who are grassroots and intellectual like we have in these spaces. Why y'all, look at how many of them in here. They stay in these spaces. Family, look at what time it is right now. It's like five o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. Over a thousand people in here. You understand? But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get out of here. Hey, man, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get the book, Hidden Heroes. small minority dominates every damn body because they done broke y'all up in different colors. So if you're a little lighter, you're the coloreds. And if you're darker, you're the blacks. Over here, we don't have that. We don't have little colored communities like that. We don't have that. We don't get little incentives for being a little lighter or a little dark. We don't have it. So nigga, you black. You come over here, you black. What's up, sister? What's up, brother? You black. It's real cut and dry. And tethers seem to have a problem with that. We don't. The tethers seem to have a big problem with that. We keep it real simple. Now, if you want to be something else in your head, and that works in South Africa, over here, they'll remind you very quickly. Use a Negro. See, the, the Creoles learned that down in Louisiana. See, the French played that little game. The French played that game in Haiti. They played that game in New Orleans for a long time. And then when the U.S. acquired New Orleans, they went down there and they started getting everybody segregated. They're like, okay, all oh, y'all Negroes over here, the white people over there. And then the Creoles was like, well, we're a little different. We're we're Creole. And the white supremacist is like, what the fuck is that? We're, we're, we're mixed with um, little Negro and French. Oh, Okay. Get y'all black asses over there with the rest of the Negroes. Okay. Let's make it real simple for you. Yeah, we, we don't we don't do that here. We're OG white supremacists. We're the real deal. So all of y'all the same to us. You a light skinned Negro, get over there with your darky brothers and sisters. I don't know what the French told you, but we're a little different than the French. You dig? So, yeah, we, we, we don't play those little games like that. Let me see. Um, let me, so let's get Brother Terrain in here.
What's up, Brother Terrain? Brother Terrain. How you doing this evening? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'll be better, man, when this food wears off. I've been dragging for the past three days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of points. Oh, well, I wanted to throw one thing out there and make another point. Um, yeah. The situation with Derek Chauvin, um, I don't, you know, I'm sorry it happened that it wasn't finished, but I'll leave that alone. Really? But, um, <laughs> but um, I feel like that might be some internal prison politics that's going on because I guarantee you that dude is either being protected by the guards or by the Aryans um, gangs in there one way or the other. So, yeah. And so something, something about that is off. Cause I guarantee he's looked at as a hero in there on that. So that needs to be more investigated. The second thing I wanted to ask or throw out there is the um, politically, man, the, Biden administration is in serious trouble with the black voters. And I know they are because I've seen more and more like more vicious attacks and more condescending attacks from a lot of the shills that are in the bag for Biden Harris. Now, I don't want to get into a conversation about who people want to vote for, but I've noticed that over the past couple of years, it was basically, you know, it was either stripping or get your booty to the polls or just shut up black man and just go vote because you're holding us back. But now I'm seeing this campaign of just straight up condescension, like you're too stupid to understand how the process works. And if you're upset with the administration and them funding Ukraine and Israel, then just shut up anyway and don't ask no questions and just go ahead and go vote. So I personally think that's going to be I think the Dems are going to be in for a very rude awakening by the fact that they're the issues that are important to their base. They're not pretend to pay attention to. And they're being disrespectful to them about it because, you know, to the point where even Jamal Bowman is saying that the fact that we're not talking about reparations is going to hurt us in 2024 and people are disregarding that. So I'd love to get your take on what you think the political landscape is going to look like in 2024 in our land. Thank you, brother. Good question, man. And, and again, I've seen some of these videos and they're doing the same play with these Democratic shields and, and, and Democrats. I hope you all are listening. Y'all, people at the DNC, listen, we can smell your Democratic ops from a mile a damn way at this point because y'all have a, 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 a prototype that you use. If there's always a little bed winchy vibe. It's always a tether. There's a tether bed winchy vibe. Uh, and like my man Terrain said, there's always a condescending tone. Um, they come out here, they start acting like Black voters are dumb and we're too dumb to see that the Republicans are going to get us. They use the whole same, the same playbook. The The sky is falling. If you let the Republicans get in office, the sky is going to fall. Everything, we're going to be back in slavery if you let the Republicans get back in office. The scare tactics that they try to use, they don't understand them shits don't work. All the hell that we've been receiving has been under the damn Democrats. You can't scare us with the Republican thing that the Republicans are going to get us. That y'all tried that and it didn't work. And I've said this before when, when Trump was in office and I'm no fan of the, the Republicans, but Trump didn't really put any overtly anti-black policies out there. None. Trump didn't put any anti-black policies out there, but the damn Democrats Man, we were getting locked up left and right for anti-Asian hate crimes. We were being targeted for that nonsense. The Democrats are throwing all of these illegal immigrants into black neighborhoods. The black communities all over the country are begging for help. Like, hey, 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 Democrats, what are you doing? Y'all dumping these people into our neighborhoods. We don't know these people. They're using our facilities. We got to kick our kids out of sports facilities because y'all bringing in illegal immigrants. Y'all housing these people using our tax dollars. Some of these people are criminals. They had one dude from South America who was a damn uh, a murderer that got out of jail and came up here. I just saw a story about that guy from down there in South America. And they didn't put him in a damn black community. So the black community is like, hey, man, what the hell? Y'all can't scare us with nothing that the Republicans are going to do. What are they going to do that you ain't doing? You dig? Y'all better cough up that bread that you owe us. We got to get that reparations thing happening and bringing your disrespectful Democratic shills out here to try to shame us 
to try to talk like they're some kind of intellectual superiors, which they're not, especially with their tethers. That's another thing that I don't like. When y'all get y'all Democratic shills who are tethers, who are lucky to be over here and should be thanking us for helping them get over here, want to come and point their finger about how we're not smart enough to see the finesse that the Republicans are going to run on us. And no disrespect, I don't want no. I don't take political advice from tethers. You understand? If you couldn't fix your own homeland, if people are pissing and shitting in the streets in your homeland, you can't say nothing to me. I don't want to hear nothing you have to say. You're not going to be condescending to me. And people over there in your homeland wiping their ass with leaves. You can't say nothing to me. No disrespect. I don't take any condescension from Democratic Shield tethers. You understand? And we're just not playing that game with them no more. So they're going to have to do what we're telling them to do. Break bread. Give us what's owed. Y'all give everybody else things that are not even owed to them. If they're aggrieved in any shape, way, form, or fashion, y'all write checks for them. Y'all need to start getting that popping for us. We don't give a damn if the white supremacists don't like it. They don't like anything we do anyway. We're past that like shit. We're talking about what's due. We ain't trying to sit around and hold hands and kick cans and sing Kumbaya no more. Black folks are finally getting a backbone and we're letting know, y'all know what the business is. All right. But let me get up out of here, man. I'm about to go get some of that, some of them herbs from somewhere. And um, y'all be good, man. I'll be um, on live tomorrow on my Tariq Radio YouTube channel. Y'all go to Tariq Radio and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll chop it up with you guys tomorrow. Peace. Let's get, um, let me see who we got. A lot of people in here. It's a lot of folks, and I ain't gonna be on here too, too long. And everything. Um, let me see. What, the, what happened to that Sarah lady? All right, hold on. Who is this? All right, Mira. All right, Mira, hop on, Mira. Mira or Myra? Um, it's Mira. All right, how are you, Mira? Um, I'm doing... you, have you called? Sorry. Have you called before? You have you called before? Um, maybe. Okay, you have. That's yes. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Um, I just have a question for you. Um, yes, ma'am. How do you feel about your people uh, washing their turkeys in Dawn dish soap for uh, Thanksgiving this past week? Uh, my people. Yes. What yes. my people? The people with the melanated skin, sir. Ma'am, don't you have melanated skin too? Um, no, I'm I'm white as snow, crystal white, uh, snow white. Some may say. Ma'am, you're that white Hispanic chick who calls up and act like she's not Hispanic. I know your voice. You're that wannabe Anglo. You're white Hispanic, and you try to act like you're not Hispanic, ma'am. You real? Do you really want to go there about? Um, I am not habits? Hispanic, sir. Um, I, I yes, could post my uh, twenty three and me for you if you'd like. Ma'am, ma'am, the only thing you got that's twenty three, a twenty three miles over the border that you got to get over here. Well, from you know South what you America. have, sir. You have twenty three baby mamas, so. Ma'am, and you got twenty three hairs under your chin. You testosterone wench. Uh, so, ma'am. No, no, no. So, what you have wrong there is that's actually black women, and I'm white. So. Oh, uh, ma'am, you're not. You're, you're wannabe Anglo. You're you're white Hispanic. There's man. nothing you're wannabe Hispanic. about me. I'm quite a realist. Yes, it is. I, I can. Ma'am, see, I'm looking at my hands ma'am. right now, and it's practically translucent. And I can see the other ma'am. side through it. And ma'am, you got big buck teeth. You're a white Hispanic with buck teeth, ma'am. Your teeth look like dinner plates. Speaking of Thanksgiving, ma'am. Well, my teeth are People big, white, me. and shiny. That's why I, uh, I'm aspiring to be a dentist. So, uh, ma'am, well, you need to be a beaver and go build a dam somewhere and get the hell out of my face. All right. Now, um, thank you so much. No. All right. Bye, bye, ma'am. Hey, Tariq. Um, I got two questions. One of them is. Um, how do you feel about doing a compilation of your um, your past um, spaces that you did when you were talking to the tellers? Your ass is funny as hell. Um, if you want to laugh, all you got to do is go back and listen to your past. I have been having a good time listening to those, but oh, those are hilarious. oh my god, you yeah. should do that. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of people cut them up and make compilation videos. There's a whole bunch. It's so many of them. 
So there's a lot of them already out there. And it's funny. But the other one is about this Derek Chauvin thing. Um, about the last name of that that guy, they claim he's supposed to be what, a Mexican uh, mafia, but his last name is a Jewish last name. What do you think about that? Um, I put on my yeah. tinfoil koofy this morning, and I was like, mm, yes. no, uh-uh, that ain't, that's a lie. Right, right. Thank you, dear. Yeah, so Derek Chauvin, they saying that this dude who stabbed him up is this white guy with a Jewish last. Listen, this is this is what they're telling you. It's a white dude with a Jewish last name who was in the Mexican mafia, who happened to be an FBI informant. He stabbed Chavin up twenty two times on Black Friday to show solidarity with Black Lives Matter. That's literally the official story. Family, that is the official story. I told y'all a week ago when, when they said he got stabbed up, this is the biggest crock of horse shit I've ever heard in my life. This sounds like somebody from the CIA wrote a script. <laughs> this is the worst writing ever. I believe this is, and I, if I didn't told y'all from day one, I didn't believe that this dude really got poked up like that. I believe this is being manufactured to justify letting him out early. That's, that's my conjecture. I believe all of this is being manufactured so that will justify leaving, getting that man out of jail early. That story is horseshit, dude. That don't make no sense whatsoever. A white Jewish dude who was with the Mexican mafia, who was a police informant, stabbed up Chavin because he wanted to show solidarity with Black Lives Matter. And that's why he did it on Black Friday. That sounds like um, a wet dream for the white supremacist websites. That, that sounds like 4chan trolling. Come on, man. Sometimes you just got to put the tinfoil koofy on a little bit and just let it sit. I ain't buying none of that, dude. To the Mexican mafia, those dudes, many of them dudes are aligned with the damn Aryans. And uh, dude, there's so many holes in that na narrative. It's a lot of holes in that story. So he was like, black women, this and that. Oh yeah, yeah. Being attracted to thugs and shit, and um, I um, I um, I started thinking get, like um, the reason man, why thugs thought. have so much respect is the origins of what how they began. You know, like uh, they started off as the community protectors, and um, you know, basically police. You know, uh against police bro brutality that's why they kind of have that respect on them and uh i was just thinking like maybe they a way to combat like the crime in our community is if they got back on a job what their original purpose was and that's really all i wanted to say for real all right but well, thank you so much all right well, then we don't have we don't have dudes like that you know a lot of these dudes ain't really thugs you got a lot of a lot of moist niggas just running around here. You know, it ain't, it ain't really thugs. You ain't really got no no real hustlers like that, like that. It's people get these. We, we got to, I got to start getting these terms right. You know, and when I did my first book, The Art of Mac, and that cleared up a lot of terminology because people would just kind of throw everybody in the same boat and the terminology would be all over the place. So, all street people ain't created equal, all right? Just because somebody is engaging in some street activities, that don't mean that they're a real hustler. You understand? So we got to really get these terms together because um, a lot of dudes who are real hustlers, that's what women like. Women like a dude who knows how to get it. And he can be a hustler on the streets or he can be a hustler in the, the legitimate world. But oftentimes, you know, you, you got some dudes who street cats who might be out here hustling and women like a dude who can just get the hell up and get it. You understand what I'm saying? 
sometimes women just like a nigga who just knows how to get out of here and get it. Like, hey, look, I gotta go. I gotta go pick up some real quick. I'll be back about four five hours, but I'm, I gotta go pick up something. You know, women can respect a nigga who can just go out and get it. You understand? The legitimate way or the street way. Because, you know, the other alternative is getting a nigga who's like a beta male and a dude who ain't really got no drive, a dude who ain't got no ambition, a dude who be on Twitter whining about other niggas all day. You, you dig? Little informants. You know, women don't want no dude like that. Women don't want these little sassy dudes. You know, little sassy mama boy baby beta males. Women don't want that. You know, cause listen to some of the, the tethers who'll be calling up. Yeah, then, then you got tethers out here. They ain't got no game. They're not witty. They don't have a sense of humor. Yeah. Women don't want that. A lot of street dudes, a lot of hustlers, they're, they're, many of them are very personable because they got to have somewhat of a level of charisma and charm. So women are attracted to that. So we got to understand the whole thug thing because people just kind of throw the thug thing out there. There's a difference between a street dude and a thug. You know, I was a street dude. I used to be a street dude way back in the day. That's why they all y'all tethers be calling up, putting all these weird crimes on my ass. According to the tethers, I was the most gangster nigga ever. I done killed a million niggas, pimped a gazillion hoes, sold all types of bricks. And according to tethers, I was uh, damn James St. Patrick. Shit, according to them, I was the most gangster nigga ever. But uh, I've never been under the thug blanket. You know, there's always there's a there's a there's a like a sleazy opulence with the whole thug thing. There's something sleazy about that. I ain't never been that. I ain't never been no slimy sleazy nigga. There's something sleazy about the whole thug narrative. Women like hustlers. I don't think women so much like a quote thug, but they, they like a hustler. Yeah. All right, let me get some more folks in here because we are in here. How many people we got in here? And by the way, um, don't forget to get the movie Microphone Check at microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. Microphonecheck.com the hottest documentary on hip hop in the game out right now. Let's get um, Danny Dan is Dan Bazarian's troll fake. It's a fake Dan account. What's it? Okay. The Dan. What's going on? What's Dan's last name? Is it Bazarian? What's his name? Yeah, yeah, it's that one, man. What ha what happened to him? Because me and him, we we got into it one time. What happened to his little old short ass? I don't know. Maybe he got shot. Maybe he didn't. No, he didn't get shot. But yeah. I'm just playing. I'm just yeah. playing. Okay, where's your accent? You got a weird ass accent, nigga. Where's your accent from? Where? Guess where I'm from, man. And then I'll tell you. Oh, hold on. Let me let me try to guess. Um, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Wait, let me let me have you keep talking. Um, sure. Uh, now, what's your name? My name is Raz. Raz, okay. Where the fuck is your accent from? I'm really good with accents. But you I gotta can't... guess now. Now I'm, now I'm gonna make you wait. Then I'll tell you at the end. But you gotta guess now. Oh, because I do want to guess. I want to because I'm real. I'm good with accents, but nigga, your shit is on something else. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I ain't gonna tell you right away. Now you gotta wait for it. Now. Hold on. It's kind of nasally. Is it? Uh, hold on. Where the fuck is you from? Yeah, uh, like like Norway. Are you Norwegian or some shit? Nah, I feel way far off, man. Or so, or wait, wait. Is like a Filipino type of thing? Absolutely not. You're way off. You're on the wrong continent. Okay. Okay. So very nice. So um, Argentina. Nope. You're on the wrong continent, man. I'm gonna make you wait now. Oh Lord. It's only if you. <laughs> now I'm going to make you wait. <laughs> you started it, man. Not with that accent. Damn, you family, where's this nigga's accent from? Um, yeah, it can't be. I, I didn't name about three continents. It, you ain't from Antarctica. so you, uh, you There know. you go. Now, now, where you from? Well, you got to take two more guesses now, and then I'll tell you. 
okay, I didn't, I didn't took enough shit. That's enough. And it's not Africa. That's not no. I'm absolutely Africa. not African. Right, right. Um, so uh, is it Italy? Somewhere in Italy? You're getting closer. Okay. It's not, uh, it's not France. I'm from North America, man. I'll give you that continent. Now you guess which country I'm from. In North America? Oh, Canada? Yeah, Canada. That's it. I'm from okay. Canada. Okay, but by way of something else, though. See, that's the thing. That accent, the Canadian accent, it, it, it accents another accent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so where did your family move to Canada from? Well, you guessed the first one. It's uh, closer to Italy. It's Greek. Greek. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Okay. And I've been, yeah. to, I've been to Greek. Love yeah, Greek. I've never been there, though. But I know where you're from. You're from the Caribbean somewhere, initially. No, I'm not. You sound kind of Caribbean-ish. Well, the hell I do. I found there's nothing Caribbean about me, and no disrespect to the Caribbean. No and disrespect. you're from, then you're from the States, but somewhere from Brooklyn, maybe? No, 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 man. I'm from Detroit and Alabama and L.A., Okay. So oh, yeah. that's why you're talking. You're from the streets, man. Detroit. Yeah. I'm a full. I've been full foundational Black American. My family built this country from scratch. Um, so how come you haven't been back to um, Greece? How come you haven't been to? to I just never been there. I was born in uh, Canada. There you go. Um, what's going on up there in Canada? What y'all got going on up there? Well, it's pretty boring. Uh, it's the election year, but uh, it's Canada, man. It's boring. It's nothing really going on up here. It's uh, it's all the states. Right, right. All right, man. But thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Well, his, his accent was a beast. Bro. All right. Y'all raise your hand. Let's raise your hand if y'all want to get in here. Because we are in the building heavy. We are in the building heavy. Let's get Kevin in here. Kevin. Bando Kev. Let's get Bando Kev. He's promoting his mixtape. What's up, Bando Kev? Hey, Kev, turn your microphone on, bro. Tariq, man, what's up? Thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely, man. What's on your mind, Kev? Yeah, man, you know, it, it, it kind of made me sick to my stomach to see what happened uh, to the survivors. Those was the last two with the uh their case being dismissed yeah uh, it's it's terrible but i do want to give a shout out to my home state california <clears throat> i did hear about the initiative they're trying to get was like a, the number is 800 million um, yeah, i think for, it's billion, billion, I think. Billion, oh, billion. okay that's beautiful and then also last year you know the the family that owned um the Bruce Beach property in LA. Yeah. Um, yeah, like that just those those types of things just lets me know at least even though I'm not I wouldn't say I'm a democrat, I am proud of what my state does. I oh, really yeah. am. Yes indeed. Yes indeed. Where where you stand now? Okay, what what state you in now? Well, I'm I'm still in LA. I mean, okay. you know, I'm taking care of the grandparents going back and forth, but I, I also travel internationally. No doubt. No doubt. My man, I appreciate you, Kev. Thank you so much, brother. All right, let's get um, Tafari, Tafari the God. What's up, Tafari? How you doing, Tariq? I'm good, man. What's going on? Long time listener. Um, about the Tulsa thing, do you think it's uh, like a prevention of the transfer of wealth to foundational Black Americans okay. that are sent that uh? will come after the descendants of the massacre in Tulsa? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, look, they were, this was to send a message because, see, this, that, if they would have gave them their money, that would have set a precedent. That would have set a precedent so that opens the doors for all of these other towns that were destroyed by these white supremacists. We got to understand, Tulsa, that was just one. That was just one, and it got the most press because of just how, um, destructive it was when they were using planes. That was the first time that a bomb was dropped on American soil from the air was black people, foundational black Americans in Tulsa. 
That was the first time in history that bombs were dropped on this country. It was dropped on us by the damn white supremacists. You understand? Before Pearl Harbor. You understand? That was a, an act of war. That was a damn war crime. See, this is that's another thing. We're going to have to start looking at this thing and just speak on it as a race war. We're going to have to start using those terms. See, we got to you know, we got to tighten up. See, yeah, this thing, it's uh, the decision even though it's a it's a horrible decision, you know, that puts a battery in our backs. We we need to use this to put a battery in our own backs to say, okay, we're going to have to stand on business for real and wake up and understand how warfare is. We, ladies and gentlemen, are in a race war. We have to look at it like that. These are acts of warfare. These are war crimes that these people have committed against us and are committing against us. Did y'all see the video? There's another video of a brother that they took two years to release down in Atlanta, I think, right? Um, I can't think of the brother's name, but he was in a restaurant. The race soldiers pulled up on this brother and just executed him. Just executed this brother while he was in a restaurant. You understand? The video is circulating around. I, I wouldn't even post it. I, I'm not going to even post that video. But yeah, that's that's a race war, family. We're in a race war. You understand? You look at it from those terms. You yeah. think? And we got to get more bold about what we need. We got to get more bold about justice. We got to say, hey, we're not going to be out here participating in your system if you're not going to produce justice. And this is warfare. We got to look at it like that. There's a reason why they, they, the white supremacists are always sending their ops in our mix so that we don't get organized. Every time we start getting organized, we start trying to stand shoulder to shoulder and get on some some coded codification and some code business. We get all of these weirdos who pop up, who are sent by the alphabet boys to try to disrupt anything we talk about. You understand? So that's what it is. We got to understand what we're dealing with. That's the sign. That's warfare. Let's get um, Kiana. Let's get Kiana. Hop on, Kiana. You turn your microphone on, Kiana. Hello, Kiana. Uh oh. Well, she said she's shy. She's shy as hell. Okay, she didn't. She must not admit to get on. Okay, get your shy ass out of here. Yo. Oh, who is that? Was that Kurt? What's up, Kurt? Yeah, what's up, Tariq, man? I'm good. What's going on with you, brother? I'm good. Just calling out of Chicago, man. Rep in Chicago. Chill. Shout out to Shot Town, man. Shout out to Shot Town. You coming out to the, the, the rally this weekend? Yeah, I might uh, I might come and slide and see how it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. But um, on the massacre um for the Tulsa thing, man, that's, that's crazy, man. That shit crazy. I feel some type of way about that shit. Oh yeah, that's just crazy, man. Yeah, man. But it is what it is, man. We gonna we gonna keep we gonna keep pushing. We can, you know, we gonna yeah. keep pushing and and coming up with new strategies and alternative strategies, and we are gonna keep doing our thing. Um, Canali. Somebody named Canali. Canali, what's happening? Yo, Canali, you good, Canali? Let's turn your microphone on. All right, Canali. Canali's microphone ain't working. Let me give you one more try, Canali. Or Canal, whatever your name is. All right. Let's get um let's get Big Don in the building. Let's get Big Don in the building. What's going on, Tariq? St. Louis I'm calling in. What's going on, brother? How are you? Doing good, man. I got three questions. I'm going to try to be brief. I don't know if you want to back to back or just one at a time. But I was going to start with, the, of course, the Tulsa thing. You know, I feel like these these lawyers are taking bad angles. And I, I'm wondering, like, why they take the angle they took. I know it feels like no matter what angle we take, they won't give us no justice. But it just don't feel like 
it feels like Johnny Cochran was brilliant and Dr. Co- and Conyers was brilliant, but we it's like we don't have no more brilliant people. How you feel about that? Do you feel like we don't have no more brilliance in the yeah, in the legal yeah. game? Man, you know, and I, I don't I don't want to shoot them down. I me I did think well they could have used a different strategy. I thought the same thing, but hey, um, we we've never gotten reparations, so you know people are just trying different things. Um, yeah. yeah, when Johnny, our good brother Johnny Cochran, they he had a whole team of lawyers getting ready to go down there and throw down. And right after they started getting everything organized, he mysteriously got that damn brain aneurysm and died. You understand? So um, I really yeah. wanted to see the strategy they were going to use, and I'm going to look into that too. I got to. We got to go back and see what strategy that Johnny Cochran and their team were going to use, because I'm pretty sure he he crossed the the T's and dotted the I's and they had a real good game plan. And I want to go back and see exactly what the program was as far as that so we can hopefully revitalize it. But again, that's what we're doing, man. We're we're, um, we're coming up with different strategies and we're just keeping the momentum going. You know, that's why we're coming out here to D.C. this Saturday to stand on that reparations business, man. Yeah, we're not letting nobody off the hook. Let's get um, Brozo. Brozo. Brozo, you there, brother? Okay. Now, hey, we're not trying to get people up here and they don't be saying nothing. Hey, I'm messing the flow up. Let's get um, Moshi. Let's get Moshi in the building. Moshi, Mr. Moshi. What's going on, Tariq? I'm good, Mr. Moshi. How are you, sir? Hey, right here in D.C., man. Waiting on you. Waiting yes, on the rally. Man. Looking forward to it. Got some uh, young brothers coming down there to support. Oh, yeah. So, definitely looking forward to it. Just um, I saw, you know, the ruling today had me down. Had the family down to talk to my sons about it. Just let them know what happened. And uh, then I saw the story come out of Atlanta. I don't know if you guys saw the guy that was going to shoot up the uh, the rap concert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we definitely in a race war, man. Yeah, man. And that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up, man. It was a suspected white supremacist. Uh, was tooling up. He was going to shoot up a rap concert. But, yeah, they, they caught him. And look, they be, they monitor these people, man. They they monitor these white supremacists. They know what these guys are about. They know they get down. These guys, they know where to find these dudes. That, that's another thing. They know all of these. These white supremacists be all on the same websites. They be on 4chan. <clears throat> they know. And they be sitting up here planning and plotting the stuff they going to do. They know these people, man. They, they're hip to them. And luckily, they got the guy before he you know, went out and did what he did. I, I don't know which rap concert it was. You know, he might have was going to go to a, a concert thinking it's going to be a bunch of black people, but you got to understand a lot of rap concerts have white people. So that's probably why they stopped him. You dig? Because these white supremacists don't understand rap crowds. They think rap is synonymous with black. And um, they had to stop him. <clears throat> he's probably going to go to a Post Malone concert, not even knowing. So they're like, oh, no, he's about to go shoot up a bunch of white people. We got to stop his ass. He did. So, yeah, they, they stopped him. But we got to, you know, they, these people out here, man, these are, they're, they're out here planning and plotting. And um, speaking of that, there was a brother. I forgot what city it was in, but it was a white supremacist who was harassing this brother, his neighbor, just yelling a bunch of racial epithets at the brother and just kept harassing the brother. And the brother said, hey, man, and the neighbor was, you know, coming at him sideways and the brother shot and killed his white neighbor and they threw charges on this brother. Well, I don't agree with that because in New York, when the special needs black man was on the subway, just kind of yelling to himself, uh, Daniel Penny, that suspected white supremacist, snuck up from behind and choked the brother to death. And they reluctantly charged him. They didn't even want to charge him. Yeah. So, yeah, if a person is yelling, they're trying to justify, well, that person's a threat and they might need to be neutralized. Well, shit, that's what this brother did with the white supremacist yelling at him. He neutralized the threat, right? You see? 
We got to start using their language and, and their logic. All right, let's get um, Waki Sabi. Wak Sabi. I think that's your name. Wak Sabi. All right. You, you good, Wak Sabi? Kanale? Kanali, you good? Yo, Kanali, you want to unmute your mic? You can't. Hey, can you hear What's me? I can hear you, ma'am. Okay. So um, I'm a big fan of yours. I just want to start by saying that. Um, yes. I do agree with a lot of the things you say. You know, I'm an yeah. immigrant. I'm from Africa myself. What and part I of Africa? With the, um, I was born in the Ivory Coast. Okay. But my parents are from Senegal, and I grew up a little bit in France. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so <clears throat> I agree 100% with some of the things you say. And I, I think Black Americans opened the door for immigration. Yes. Um, you know, I think after the civil rights, um, it was the backbone for immigration, basically, right? Because oh, yeah. back then, immigration was only like white people. And right. then after the civil rights, they fought for other people to come here, like Asian and African and all those people. So I think immigrants should kind of like be a little bit thankful when it comes to that, you know? So I, I do agree with that 100%. And I also mm -hmm. think even the birthright was to safeguard the, the children of slaves. So they can right. be American. So everybody that's born in America that are not from here, they're actually Americans and they have citizenship because of slave, because of uh, um, uh, African American as well. Yeah. So I do agree with that. And I think if I was in your shoes, I would be really upset. If people come here and they disrespect African American, I would be upset myself, right? Oh, yeah. Because you guys did a lot in Fort. And I do agree with that 100%. The only issue that I have with you, I think you should probably preach a little bit more unity. Because someone like myself, I don't have any issue with African American. Like I understand the cause, I rock with whatever you. I think it's hundred percent true, and I think you guys deserve reparation, and I don't. And I don't have a say so in American politics. I'm not American, and I completely understand. And there are a lot of people from Africa that share the same sentiment as me. We don't like we don't have any problem with you guys at all. You know, me, yeah. my friend, yeah. my cousin. So there are people like us. But I feel like I'm catching strays every time. Like, you, you're talking shit about African. I'm like, damn. Like, I understand your cause. Honestly, like, I completely get it. And I think I'm here because of, like, civil rights. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I do respect and I do understand your point of view as well. It's just that I think maybe you should preach more unity because there are people like us, like me, that, like, I understand, you know? And I don't have mm -hmm. any problem with that. And I don't think, I don't think I deserve reparation. I don't think I should even should have a say so when it comes to that, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I got you. Thank you, thank you so much, and I'll address that. The, we, the unity thing. We we unified with people who support us the way we support them. We haven't changed on that. Listen, let's be very clear. We didn't said it for the umpteenth time. I don't have any problem with any African people. I don't have problem with African people. I don't have problem with Caribbean people. I'm cool with Africans and Caribbeans. I have zero problem with them at all, especially if you are a rider, if you down to support us the way we support you, ain't got no problem. For the Rally for Reparations, we got a lot of our FBA family. I got some of my African and Caribbean brothers who's actually helping behind the scenes. We're work they're working with this. My right-hand man, Ola. Ola's Nigerian. My right-hand man. If Ola needs a kidney, I give Ola a kidney this week. That brother gets anything on the planet from me if he needs it. That's a rider. My cameraman, another brother from West Africa, one of my camera guys, good guy, have, phenomenal. This guy has high-powered cameras that I like. Great guy, my dude audio. Great guy. You dig? Work with these brothers all the time. Have no problem with them. One of my barbers, my guy from New York, who travels around the country, is a superstar barber. My, my brother Jay, phenomenal. He's Jamaican. Good guys. He's got been in my house. My kids love him. So I work with brothers and sisters from the diaspora all the time. Who's cool? If you're cool and you respect us and our lineage, we have no problem. I have zero problem with you. But if you bring your ass over here and we're all types of Akatas and we're Jareers and Yanks and we start talking about reparations and your ass jumping up talking about we don't need no reparations and 
we're trying to fight for justice because a black person got shot and then your stupid ass hop up talking about what about black on black crime nigga yeah well, then we got a problem oh i do have a problem with that and we we're not having no problems no more we're checking tethers the tether class we're not tolerating that shit no more this is getting to a life or death situation now these tethers, man, are trying to wipe us the hell out. They'll get with the white supremacists because we've ignored tethers for a long time. The tether class. I'm not talking about the riders. Again, we're making a distinction from the um, non-FBA riders and the tethers. There's a damn difference. And these tethers, they... Let's keep it a buck. And some of y'all who call up say, oh, no, we, we need unity. Listen, y'all know y'all got them hateful ass... Um, anti-FBA tethers among you. You know that they lurk around because these are the same niggas that were over there in your homeland undermining you. They were the ones over there undermining your community to the point where they had to leave. They were the first ones to keep the shit in shambles and then run over here to us with that same janky-ass mindset. And we start to look around and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, family. A lot of weird stuff going on out here, man. We got to ask, who are these people? Where are they from? What's going on? How come every time we start talking about building something, all of a sudden we get these weird off-code people? Where are these Negroes from? We started just asking, where are these niggas from? And right there started opening up a Pandora's box. You see? Where is this dope coming from? Where are these guns coming from? Who are these dudes actually shooting in the neighborhood? Where are they from? Who are these weird dudes running around New York stabbing people? Who are, who are melanated? Who we gotta we get the negative publicity from? We get the negative stigma from. We're starting to say, hey, no, 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 no. We ain't gonna be just one big nigga. Because see, when people wanna do this pan-African thing, they wanna do it so they can dump their garbage off on us. See, a lot of this pan-Africanism stuff is in bad faith. Yeah, they want us to sit up here and like, yeah, we all black, we all black. We're the only ones who are supposed to be doing that while in their homelands, they're tribal as hell. They ain't all black. These niggas be bopping each other over the head with, with uh, goat bones and shit. They don't look at themselves as the same. That's why shit is in shambles over there. They're always calling us, wanting us to uphold this one-sided pan-Africanism. Like we all one big global Negro. While they look at themselves as different when it's positive, but when it's negative, they can say, hey, look, we all pan-Africanists. We all black. So if we got a criminal in our ethnic group, well, he black, we all criminals. So we have to absorb their criminality? No. Hell no. That's one of the reasons they hate that we delineate, because now they don't get to pick and choose when they can delineate. See, that's the thing, family. The, the tethers, they're the first to damn delineate. When they get a win, when they get anything that looks like a win, they go out of their way to distance themselves from us. See, don't, don't let them shame you at all of that. We need unity, my nigga. No, no, no. When, when y'all win a goddamn award, if you go get a damn degree, boy, you make sure. And, uh, Uganda. This is, oh, I'm not like those niggas. I am Ugandan. This is a win for Uganda. Stand up, nigga. Boy, you make sure you don't get lumped in with us. Boy, that win is going to get taken away from us. We don't get to enjoy none of your wins. We don't get to enjoy none of your wins, but all of your damn riffraffs, we got to be responsible for them. No more, nigga. No thank you. And that's the problem that they really have, family. That's really the problem that they have. Now that we have delineated, they can't dump trash on us no more. So now when we see all of these little janky crimes, the first thing we say, don't look like that nigga's FBA, huh? You see a lot of these crimes now that we are delineating harder and we're starting to look at last names and we're looking at foreheads and we're looking at flip-flop shoe sizes and we're like, hey, wait a minute. The nigga who just ran that scam, that's not one of us. 
Yeah, he he melanated, but he ain't one of us. Hey, somebody who just robbed that bank. Hold on, that nigga hairline started behind his ears. Where is he from? That's not one of us. So yeah, we're not absorbing none of your stuff. We're letting you hold your own nuts. And that's horrible to them. You understand? We're not trying to infiltrate your circles. We don't even be in your spaces. We don't be in your conversations. We're not on your message boards. We're not going to your homelands trying to take over. All we're doing is saying, hey, you're going to have to be responsible for all of your riffraffs. We're not going to be responsible no more. You niggas hit us. You see, you niggas hit us. How do you niggas hit us so much? You, you see, they run around talking about we hate them. Nigga, you, you have nothing to hate. Y'all talk like how white folks talk about Caitlin Clark. Yo, the black women, are je you're jealous of Caitlin. Caitlin is running around here flopping and missing shots. There's nothing to be jealous of. You're saying that to big yourself up, to make yourself more important. Huh? Yo, Waxabi, are you ready? You want to unmute your microphone, Waxabi? Are you? That was yeah. my phone, man. My, uh, my Bluetooth, my Bluetooth. Uh, die, not the switch, my switch, and I hit the button. That's my, my apology. Are you in an amusement park right now? Funny, man, on my phone, too. Brother, what, what music is that? Are you at an amusement <laughs> Nah, my little girl is playing a game and shit. I just kicked up where she left off. <laughs> now, where you from, Walk? Where you from, bro? Station. The little girl's playing a game. And I started playing it because it was yeah, like it was yeah. fun and shit. Okay, I understand. Where are you from? Where are you from, bro? I'm from uh, <clears throat> when my family came out of Texas. But my family came out of Texas. I'm FBA. Oh, where I'm from? I'm from Buffalo, New York. Okay. Okay, brother. Yeah, yeah okay, brother. Y'all were looking at Coco Miller. Now, I can't sit up and listen to that shit. Damn, brother. And that baby need to be asleep. Why is that baby sitting up this time of night listening to Miss Rachel? Y'all kids watch Miss Rachel? How many of y'all got kids? <laughs> How many of y'all know about Miss Rachel? <laughs> How many of y'all got kids and y'all know about Miss Rachel on YouTube? <laughs> Raise your hand if y'all know about Miss Rachel. That white woman be teaching her ass off. My kids love her ass. Oh, well, we've been watching Miss Rachel all day. Can you say mama? Mama, can you say mama's name? Yeah, my kids love that shit. This white woman be teaching her ass off. Um, Let me see. <laughs> let's see who we got. Uh, let's get, um. what's your name? D dun, 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 uh, damn, I can't pronounce your name, sis. Danisha? Duntanisha, Duntania. Mm -hmm. I do not have an S in my name, Duntania. Duntania. <laughs> Duntania. <laughs> Who the hell named you some damn? Who so, named Duntania? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you, I oh. was born in LA and I was oh. raised in upstate New York in Rochester. So my brothers and sisters are way older than me. Everybody got regular names except for me. Lord. <laughs> That's so my mom said when she was in L.A., it was a girl named Olifia, and her name was Dantania in the middle for her middle name. But my dad wanted to name me Charlene, and my grandfather Dar wanted to name Darling. me Henrietta. <laughs> Henrietta. What what elderly people were raising you, dear? <laughs> How old is your dad? How old was your dad with him? Look, look, look I, I told you, I'm the oops baby. So my granddad, his name was John Henry. He wanted my name to be Henry. My father's name was Clyde. He wanted my name to be Charlene. <laughs> and my mama got so mad at my dad, she moved from L.A. to Rochester and named me Dantonia. 
these these are some Mississippi folks. <laughs> no, Where? my mom is originally from Montgomery, Alabama. Alabama. There you go. Okay. There you yeah. go. And my dad, uh, his folks is Texas, Florida, and Alabama. Oh yeah. Uh, there you go. Right next. Yeah, the, I heard those names when I was a child in Alabama. Those names, Lord, man. Now, how old are you now, dear? How old are you? I am forty three. Okay. You a good looking forty three. Where's your dude? Um, don't have one. Oh, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Oh, oh Lord, what's wrong with you? What what's wrong, Dantonia? Um, nothing is too much wrong with me. Um, I do have three kids. I have an eighteen year old. She attends LSU, and she's also oh. in the Air Force. Okay. I have a 15 year old. Um, he's in high school, and then I have one like me, a new uh, 2020 baby. She's three. Boy, you got you had a whole a whole wide range there. Boy, that's I, I did, and you might be a little disappointed. I feel like I got put some voodoo on by a Haitian with that last baby. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> So you, are you saying that that baby's hairline starts a little farther back? Hey, 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 leave my baby head alone. Leave my baby head alone, okay? Where's my bottle, nigga? <laughs> are you, are you... <laughs> leave my, you saw my, my cousins, y'all leave my baby head alone. Oh, God. Are you yeah. still with are you what so what happened with you and the Haitian brother? He, um, he... so he I I think it was I wasn't he okay, so when I started talking to him, he went really hard, you know, to get me. Like he was wow. I was like, Well, maybe this is it. Maybe I'm supposed to be with a you know, a Haitian guy. I wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. He had, you know, uh wanted kept urging to move me in. I was like, no. We ended up getting engaged. He had got me a car, moved me and my kids. And I was like, wow, like he is just. And then I think he thought I was supposed to be a maid at the house and stuff. And mm. that definitely is not going to work. Um, of course, after a while, you know, my FBA mouth came out. Oh, that was that. Oh, did, did, he, so, did he jump on you? Did he jump on you before he left? Um, he couldn't, can't jump. I would jump on him. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, and, but, but, you know, you, go, I you better go get, up with him. get Clyde and John Henry. In your, <laughs> his, his, his no, well, now, you know, I, I have to be careful not date cause he liked to be in the bushes and stuff. Oh Lord. Yeah. Uh, throw you with those niggas. You know? <laughs> Don't have those niggas around he, my baby. But, he, but guess what? He was raised in Brooklyn though. He was raised oh. in Brooklyn. Uh, so he done got real Americanized, I would say, a little bit. He still got oh. them, them, them ways. And after I started listening to y'all, I'm like, oh man. So ladies, <laughs> listen, y'all, y'all watch out for them, them foreigners. They be low key, real jealous of us, mm-hmm. and be wanting to lock us down. But anywho, man, you know. man, I, I wish you couldn't come out here to DC to the the event. I wish I could too. I have to work. I am living in Atlanta. I have to work. I got a lot going on. Um, if anybody wants to know my backstory, I will post my backstory and my books. I am an author as well. Oh, cool. I have a really, really deep testimony um, that I definitely want to encourage, especially our FBA sisters and certain things we went through growing up, which I feel like had a lot to do with a lot of our decisions. And so I'm teaching my children now about systematic racism and how that has dwindled down um, for generations or tried to, and it's up to us to stop it. I also wanted to make a point with the uh, guy when he said that Joloff Rice is not nasty. It is. It's (laughs) nasty. Um, I used to go to this lady who used to braid my hair, this African lady. She used to cook all this stuff and her her house smelled like toe jam. Um, right. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> even sorry. the restaurant was early, it had a little stench in it. I wasn't going, you know, I'm like, okay. Yeah, right. it, it smells like toe jam or something that's just like, I, I don't know. She did really great braids, but I couldn't wait to get out that lady house. Me and my cousins would go to her to get our hair braided. Um, also you made a comment about Miss Rachel. I do watch her. Yeah. I do want to know why all of a sudden they have her being this, um, 
L, what is it, the LGBTQ? Yeah, they got some stuff where they're talking about she's going to be promoting some LGBT stuff, and that right there is kind of like. I mean, it's like, <laughs> damn, like, y'all just can't have nothing just for the kids. Why you got, like, I got kids. Ain't nobody did a march because I done took some dick. You understand? Like, I just right. don't understand no, it. Right. I don't get it. Uh Right, yeah, man. It's so annoying, and even with my daughter, I have to watch her iPad. They had a download on their um, Disney Pride. I'm like, what the hell? This don't have nothing to do yeah, with Yeah, Disney, you know, when Disney had the Proud family on, and it was a bunch of LGBT stuff and boys kissing boys, I stopped really rocking with Disney+. Plus. I, I kind of chilled out. Oh, that. it's crazy. Even the iPads you get, you got to be careful because some of this stuff is pre-downloaded. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy out here. It's pre-downloaded. So, yeah, but I definitely appreciate what you are doing um enlightening us about this because for the longest we definitely thought our roots were in Africa and was kind of as time goes on you can tell that a lot of Caribbeans and Africans was taken over and we halfway was believing we didn't have any culture and then we had to step back and be like well wait a minute even in Jamaica, they used to listen to The Temptations and Mahalia Jackson and all of these things. So I really appreciate you coming out here with your ministry. I, I told you this before. You don't know it, but God has a calling on your life. And this is your ministry. And this is just the start. So see you guys later. You guys have a good evening. Thank you, dear. And put some of that, um, your whole <laughs> old, your son's hairline to get it. Leave right. my baby alone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful sister, man. Beautiful, beautiful sister. Man, man. But um, yeah, man. You know, us appreciating our heritage and, and our lineage, that's very important. Just you know, me being a historian and just when people try to come around us, talk because I, I was one of the people like, hey, we, we'll let's share our culture. Whatever we do. That's a win for all of us globally. I was on that. Hell yeah, I was on that. And I'm like, because we're not, we as foundational Black America, we're not insecure. We create stuff and hey, everybody can share. We can, we're very creative. We'll create some more stuff. We know how to create. We're not one trick ponies. We create new stuff all the time. Yeah. And just like with, with movies, like our documentaries, I had one in Tethers. You just make movies as a money grab. They always projecting their little scammy one trick pony mindset on us because they they can only pick one scam and do those one licks. They got to find one scam and do that scam and then project that on us. We don't we know. We do good, legitimate business. We can do things over and over again. Because we're going to do it with integrity. Like I, I, every movie I've had has been number one. Every single one. All of them. You understand? So we, we can be consistent and we can share. And we've shared our culture to the point where people will take it and act like they did it. That's why we're starting to say, no, we're not going to let people disrespect us. And don't let people shame us for saying we're going to start gatekeeping our culture now. We're going to play this culture game. We're going to gatekeep our culture. And then we're going to start tallying up who really has the culture. And that's because of y'all over there, you guys who are non-FBA. Y'all wanted to play this game. Let's be very clear. Y'all wanted to play that game. And that it didn't work out like you thought it was going to work out. See, y'all weren't saying nothing when Fat Joe and Busta Rhymes were saying all that weird shit. When people like Busta Rhymes coming out here talking about, yeah, y'all Americans ain't got no culture. You got hip hop from Jamaica. It was Jamaica y'all got that from. That came from Jamaica. Y'all got it from us. Y'all ain't got no culture. When y'all get that bold and start talking like that, and then none of the other people are checking you on it, okay, we going to check you on it. And unfortunately, when we catch, when we check them. So, Miss Heather, hop on, Heather. All right. All right, Miss Te um, Heather. Uh oh. You all right over there, Heather? Okay, something going on with her phone. I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, 
Let me remove her from here. All right. Okay, I don't know what that was. Okay. Sound like her vibrator was just going off in the background. I don't know what that was. All right, let's get Belly Bell, Detroit in the building. Belly Bell. All right, Heather, you want to try it again? Heather, well, let's get Heather on. Heather wanted to, I don't know what's going on with her phone. Heather? Okay, Heather? Heather, yeah, yeah, something is going on with your phone, ma'am. Uh, you might have. Can. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you hear me? I can hear you now, Heather. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Sorry. Oh, Hi. Okay. Hi, I'm good. How are you, Heather? I'm fine. Can you hear me okay now? Oh, yeah. I can hear you great. I can hear you great. Heather, what city are you in? I'm in, well, I'm in the suburb of Toronto. Oh, there you go. You're in Canada. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But just out of curiosity, what did it sound like before? What were you hearing? It was like um, kind of a uh, kind of a buzzing, weird buzzing sound. Oh, that's weird. I'm yeah. glad you took me back on because yeah, yeah. That, that was definitely not intentional. I stuck my my I suck on tech. Just saying. It's cool. It's cool. It's um, cool. So what's going on, Heather? Well, I just wanted to say hi because this has been really interesting, and I think I'm the only. Like, by the way, I'm an idiot. Okay. So I'm so, about to say something that could be idiotic, but no, I'm, I think no. I'm the only cracker. I'm glad that you're laughing. It's you're, okay. You're you're our cracker, so you're our special cracker. So oh, that's yay! Our... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So what's going on up there in Canada? Well, you know, I think there was another speaker and they were saying it's boring. No, it ain't boring. It's ridiculous is what it is. So, yeah. it's. Now, what do you do up there in Canada? What do I do? Uh, you mean, like, Just for, for a living? living? I mean, are you, do you work for the phone company? What do you do up there? You know? Do I work for the phone company? I don't know. Just what do you do? <laughs> the phone company. That's funny. No, I don't work for the phone company. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, uh, I work in finance. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah. But cool. um but I I think I just wanted to say that this has been fascinating listening to you guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're we're chopping it up, we're doing what we do. Oh, we're just having a general conversation here. But thank you so much. Yeah, let me get some more folks on here. Thank you, dear. Um, let's get um let me see. Uh we got a lot of people in here. A lot of people. How many people we got in here? Um shit, we got almost twelve hundred people in here. We're in here very, very heavy. Let's get a um, kind reader. Kind reader in here. All right, kind reader. And then we'll get Reem. And then we'll get Kamal. A lot of folks in. All right, kind reader. Hey, Tariq. What's up, kind? How I'm good. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Now, where are you from, brother? Uh, I talked to you before. I'm uh, from a, I'm from Cali. I'm in Cali right now, Southern okay. Cali. Now we talked before. I don't remember talking. What yeah, we I was babbling a bit about Trump. I apologize. I went on a tangent. Uh, okay. You had uh, given me free way to talk about <laughs> politics. I wanted to discuss it further. I feel like I, I'm uh, passionate right now in the moment. I work in the education system. Okay. And um, I want you to speak on. Uh, I, I we spoke on it before. Uh, how our power can be used by not voting, and uh, how much of an impact it could be made. That it is known that we do make a difference, and we can choose not to vote. But um, I'm just really disgusted lately. Um, in these last four years. Uh, by the white supremacy system that's in working. And I really just feel like if we are able to vote, I know there's foundational black Americans that will vote. Uh, what is something that is encouraging for us uh, that do want to vote? I know there is power in us not voting. That is a power by us choosing not to vote. But if we do want to vote, I mean, what can what can you say to the community that do want to vote, that do want to make a difference and say, this is not okay. 
Um, what can we do? I mean, I feel like voting for anything else than what we're living under. I'm just, I'm really disgusted right now. Um, I feel like our community is really just being marginalized more so in these last few years. Me in particular, working in the education system, I feel like, uh, you know, it's affecting our youth. Our youth are being more marginalized. I feel I've had to go through things and experience things that I've experienced um, as someone who's grown up in the South in the education system and, and being discriminated against. I've had to witness things that I'm truly disgusted by <clears throat> working as a teacher in the education system. Now, how long have you been, how long you been teaching? Um, just a little bit for a year, a year. Okay. okay. And, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to eat some lemon here while I'm talking. Um, now to your point, cause well, you, you I got to land your plane. You, you're a talker. Boy, you you were going on and on. But y'all better learn how to land those planes and get to the point. Um, we gotta vote for tangibles, man. We gotta vote for something in exchange for our vote. We gotta vote for some damn tangibles. Um, we're gonna have to make these people prioritize doing something for foundational black Americans. That's where it is. We, we, we can't do none of these little side deals and let's just wait it out. And well, the Green New Deal, that affects black people, too. No, we know. No, we're going to have to say this benign neglect nonsense that y'all have been on with us for the last 50 years. That ain't going to work. We have to stop going along with it. This is why we keep getting these injustices because we're sitting here still going along with the damn program. Stop going along with the program. Say, hey, look, if y'all are going to sit up here and drop bombs on the community and the survivors are still alive and you're not going to produce justice, we don't need to be voting for none of you. We need to be here circling our wagons, getting on code based on our lineage. We start building things among ourselves because we can trust ourselves more than we can trust you. Now, they look at that as dangerous because, see, that's how you start nation building. When you delegitimize their system, the only natural recourse is for you to start building your own. Just instinctively, you'll do that. And they don't want that because we have the, the intellectual and the historic capacity to build. We're the only group that has been forced to rebuild over and over and over and over again. No other group has just repeatedly rebuilt their communities and their lives over and over again like Foundation of Black Americans. We've been forced to do that. You understand? We can get things popping even with obstacles thrown our way and we can still get things popping. Other groups don't have these obstacles thrown their way. So that's why I don't want to hear about people bragging about what well, the Asians did this and the Arabs did this. They don't need, you're not throwing obstacles in their way when they come here. There's no equivalent to a Tulsa, which y'all did with the Asians over here. The closest thing was when you were putting the Japanese in internment camps during World War II when they bombed the United States. And even then you compensated them. You aggrieved them for like, what, a couple of years and then wrote all of them some checks. You see? So there's no competition. There's no comparison. Kamal, hop on. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Kamal. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, um, I have a couple of questions to ask you. Um, the Tulsa massacre and the rosewood massacre just to name a few um would you be interested uh by chance be able to do a uh documentary on those two uh massacres no because they've already done a movie on rosewood and there's a bunch of documentaries on tulsa i think lebron james or somebody produced one and it's pretty good it's pretty good so there's already documentaries on that okay I like I like to do stuff that's just not that hasn't been touched on before. 
you know, yeah, I, I would do a documentary about the same thing. You know, if I do talk about a subject that's been talked about, I talk about it from a different angle, just like slavery. Like, you know, we did a documentary about slavery, a couple of documentaries about slavery, um, like Buck Breaking, that touched on slavery, but we talked about the sexual exploitation that went on during slavery. So we took it to a different angle. Um, in American Maroon, we talk about slavery, but we talk about what's not talked about is brothers and sisters getting the hell off them plantations and slaughtering them damn slave masses and how that was more common than a lot of people want to believe. So I like to talk about things from an angle that's not being touched on. Yeah. Reem. Let's get Reem in the building. Hey, what's going on, Tariq? What's up, Reem? How are you? Well, I'm pretty good, man. Good to catch one of these spaces. Super late out here on the East Coast, man. I'm out here in Georgia. Oh, yeah. And uh, no, I'm excited. Also, I got your microphone check, Blu-ray in the mail. So I'm excited to check that out with my family, you know? Oh, yeah. That's love. Yeah. Uh, wanted to uh, ask you a question kind of on my mind. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes I tune into, you know, a lot of different uh, conversations. And uh, for the most part, it was mentioned that Trump had this anti-whiteness bill, you know, kind of in, in the back pocket. And I wanted to know how you think we should prepare for something like that if they want to start coming after uh, pe folks who want to kind of speak against, you know, the establishment. Yeah. So I've been there's been rumors about them possibly having like an anti-white hate crime bill, you know, so that they might try to pull something like that. They might try to pull something like that. And if, you know, they pull something like that, um, you know, we can turn around and be like, OK, you guys already have white privilege and white supremacy. We can pull up all of the case studies to show that um, their Supreme Court statute stating that uh, this white white supremacy is the law of the land. Black man don't have rights that a white man is bound to respect. So, yeah, there's already been laws and benefits and privileges that protect whiteness. Yeah. So we have to flip that to say, OK, if you're going to do that, then you definitely got to um, get a hate crime bill and reparative justice for us, too, especially if they're going to try to give people compensation because you're not supposed to give race based compensation. And if they start giving stuff to people because they're white, let them open that door and we'll use that as a precedent to say, OK, since we're starting to make racially based quotas and racially based programs, which you said we're not supposed to do. Okay, let's do it. Let's get these reparations then. Let's get it popping. But we can still fall back on lineage. So that's why when we talk about reparations, we always talk about it from a lineage standpoint, because when you start saying, okay, reparations for black people, they immediately strike, strike it down. They immediately use the um, um, constitution and everything else to strike that down because you're not supposed to... Um, have racially based uh, uh, preferential finances, but you can go around that again. Stick to lineage base. That's where the term freedman and all that comes in. So we got to know how to work this thing and word things the right way at the right time. All right, we got to know how to juggle words and we got to use our words as weapons. All right. Let me see who's in here. We're in here deep. And by the way, people can still support the rally for reparations. We do still need people to hit the GoFundMe, ladies and gentlemen, since we have almost 12. Well, we got over 1,200 people in here. We still need people to hit the GoFundMe to help make this thing pop off um, this weekend here in Washington, D.C. Go to rally, the number four, reparations.com. Rally4Reparations.com. Let's get Iron Mike. Iron Mike, this guy, he's over there in Asia with his Asian lady. And he has a... Iron Mike seems to have an issue with our lineage. Mike, Iron Mike, what, what do you have a problem with our lineage, brother? Oh, I don't... Oh, man, come on. Not even. I actually came up to um, talk about microphone check. Yes. I don't have a problem with the lineage. So I've been doing my research... Uh, trying to find scholarly academic pushback on microphone check. Yeah. And um, I got to keep a 100. And as you probably know, ain't nobody have any pushback. Like, nobody. Oh, you can't. It's right. Zero. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, nobody. I, I was thinking somebody from 
you know, the hip hop professors, but you know, from the black professors. But um, other than a couple of these Latino cats that you already addressed, there's actually yeah. zero. It's all positive reviews. Yeah. And nobody has a critique. So yeah, because you can't argue. You. you can't who you can't argue with the pioneers who were really, really there. Nobody was there before the people in microphone check. That's a fact. Nobody was there before them. So that that can't be argued. That's why you can't debunk it. You're going to tell Chirac, the first female rapper, was she lying? Then find somebody before her. Who you're going to tell Coke Rock, the hip-hop's first MC, he's lying? Find another one before him. You, you know what I'm saying? You're going to tell Trixie, he's not telling the truth. Find another breakdancer before Trixie. You're going to tell... Um, Cornbread, he's lying. Find another graffiti artist before Cornbread. You can't. So you nobody can refute it. Yeah. Have you seen the movie yet? No, nah, brother. I'm waiting for the Chinese bootleg to come out. Yes, so indeed. That happens. Like I, I can't get it. So yes, indeed. You know, but yeah, you yeah, take yeah. R&B. You take Chinese uh, uh, currency. Um, I don't, but I would like to get it out there. Though. I would like to get the movie out there. I'd like to have it play in Asia and places like um, China and Japan and places like that. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, like to... you, I, I think, seriously, keep it, keep it 100. I think I've said this before. You you have to do an international tour for this film because yeah. the people will be very receptive. It, 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 it's it's important. And I know mm -hmm. in China, they'll, they'll actually love it. Like, they want to hear this knowledge and, would uh, we have to would we have to get it translated over there um it, they can translate it really quick and easy actually yeah okay, okay. they got the ai that's crazy oh that's right so, yeah yeah uh, you can play stuff with ai real quickly now okay i'm uh, gonna look at the yeah, I, I i think it would play big over there in, in some of those asian countries who are real big fans of hip-hop and um yeah i think it would do real good over there but i'm gonna look into that man but thank you so much man yeah, yeah, you can't. Nobody can debunk um, microphone jet. You know, you, you know, you know, you got the Derek Colones and people like that who be trolling, but nobody can really debunk. You're not going to debunk the pioneers. And y'all saw the film. It's a beautifully done film, man. Again, we we put our foot in that. Yeah, we did that, but we we went deep with the elements. We broke that shit down so heavy. Yeah, we we stopped all the lies. We stopped all the lies, fam. All the um, Jamaican toasting. Uh, we didn't got the sound system and the sound class. Hey, man, please. Yeah, we did. We carefully debunked that stuff. We took our time and just meticulously debunked all of it with respect. We didn't. We didn't dump on it. It was all respect. You know, it was all respect. Memo. Let's get memo. Memo, whatever your name is. Memocrati. I right, want to unmute your microphone, sir. All right. This guy doesn't have anything to say. All right, let's get um let me see who we are, who we got. Um I want to get some people we ain't had in before. Let's get um Okay, who is this? I'm trying to get some new faces. Let's get um Twitter World. Let's get Twitter World in here. I'm gonna get some people we never got in and get some new faces. Twitter World, what's happening? I'm waiting on Twitter World's phone to do what it's supposed to do. All right. Let's get um DR. DRS one. Okay, let's get these microphones going, guys. So we ain't wasting time. I don't I don't want dead air over here. Okay, what's going on with y'all phones, man? We got some janky connections over here. All right, let's do this. Let's get um um Roland Martin's forehead. <laughs> Let's get Roland Martin's forehead in the building. Let's turn your microphone on. All right, good lord. Let's get on. Okay. Hello, Tariq. There you go. 
Okay, you didn't say me, so that's why I didn't speak. Oh, this is Dr. Short. Okay, okay. I didn't know that, that was your, your account, Dr. Short. Yeah, well, you? that stands for Dr. Randy Short 1. Okay, got it. There you okay. go. I'm sorry. See, I don't speak out of turn, so I'll mute myself if you want someone no, else to go. You know, go ahead. You're here. We got you here. Okay. All right. Brother Tariq, everybody needs to know that thing they did to those old people, those elders in, in Tulsa, that's that's beyond monstrous. Yeah. Yes. That's beyond monstrous. We should be outraged. People should be calling for, uh, I know y'all don't agree, but they need to boycott the whole state of Oklahoma, tell people to not put any money in there, break yeah, those crackers financially. They, they need to be punished to treat our elder mothers like this. It's an act of war. Yes. And we're going to have to start recognizing that war has been declared on us. And I'm not asking folks to be violent or hurt anybody, but economically, we need to wage war on these people. A lot of folks, let me tell you, the day that these billionaires and folks start jumping out their penthouses and committing suicide is the day of black liberation. We have to stop investing our dollars in people who hate our guts. We need to be buying this some. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. Whoa, oh, Dr. Short. Dr. Short. Uh oh. He was speaking some hot fire. He, his thing got shut out. Uh oh, what happened? Hello, can you hear me? There you go. There you go. Oh no. Well, I told you I you know, the Twitter people are pedophiles and I um I denounce pedophilia, so I've had problems on this platform. They have a lot of freaks running this stuff. Freaks wow. running the country. Freaks running that court that did that stuff to our mothers in that yeah. courthouse. We need to punish the whole state of Oklahoma. The day that some of these people lose all their stocks, the day that these people start doing family side, oh. where they shoot up their families because we stop giving them our money, we stop rewarding people for hating our guts and wanting us all aborted or incarcerated or starved or homeless. The day that we get tired of subsidizing them, kill us, they're finished. The question is, when are we going to get tired of giving everything to people that hate us? When are we going to get tired of that? And so, brother, you're so on point. Everybody has to buy, not just this film, everything that this brother makes should be selling in the millions. You know what? I mean, if he were a white man, if he was, whether he was a conservative or supremacist, he'd be a billionaire. Yeah. Okay. And the people complain, oh, Tariq got this, damn it, Tariq worked for it, bastard. Right. What's your problem? Uh, Tariq, I'm so sick of the haters. Uh, if yeah, we man. stopped hating for Oh, uh oh, you keep going out, Dr. Short. I, I get you back, Dr. Short. Your thing is, your phone is going in and out. But I feel, Dr. Short, yeah, they, they, when the haters, oh, Tariq, you know, Tariq is making this money. Well, Tariq works 24 damn seven. Yeah, Tariq works very hard to put things together. Putting together films is not easy. Putting together large events like we're having this weekend is not easy. Shout out to the team. Shout out to Brother um, Afro Elite, who's been helping us behind the scenes. Shout out to our sister Brooke, who's been helping behind the scenes. Shout out to our sister Layla, who's helping behind the scenes. My brother Ola, helping behind the scenes. You know, we, we're working around the clock making this thing happen. You know, these things just don't happen. There's a team of people, and we got to just... We're on the phone and calling venues and calling equipment stores and calling the porta potty people and calling the permit office. And it's a lot of damn work, family. And we're doing all this stuff for free. It's a free event. So we're not making any money back. We're only getting donations and it's grassroots. When we, um, I did an interview with a reporter today, where they're talking about how are we financing, and hey, this is from the grassroots. We're not. They were asking, are we working with a super PAC, or we were, we're working with a political party? No, we're not working with no political party. We're not getting no money from anybody. We're not getting a dime from nobody. 
this whole thing, the rally that we got, the rally for reparations, Juneteenth celebration, no corporate sponsors, anything. It's the, the family. It's just you guys. We're just grassroots. And we're making it happen. We're getting it from the grassroots. So that's why I like for us to do things like this to show us, man, when these people try to play this little denial of justice game, we got to start getting into the mindset of us getting things done on our own. That's where we're going to get our power, circling our wagons and just building things and organizing things on our own without their intervention, in spite of their sabotage. Ric Flair, hop on, man. Hey, what's up, everybody, man? Great conversation. Uh, it's, it's definitely a tough conversation uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, what, what I will say is that, <clears throat> you know, what's happening right now when they've been denied justice uh, for the Tulsa massacre is it's all it's all part of the agenda. You know why? Because it's what what they do is they take hot topics and then they uh, they make sure that they get everybody's attention by doing the opposite of the right thing. And then it, it sends us it sends the average average person in a frenzy. And it's important for everybody to stay focused, um, you know, f you know, f fight for what you believe in. Uh, but don't fight how they want you to fight because they want you to be wild, untamed, and they want you to be in an unmild manner so that way they can point you out. Um, that's that's their whole agenda with this whole thing is is to spread everybody more thin, create more narrative, uh, create more segregation, and point people out against each other. If you, I mean, if you haven't seen already what 2020, 2024 has been, uh, it, it's been – even more labels. They cannot wait to label stuff and label people. The more they label people within a uh, within their own society, within their own race and and background, then they can start to separate everybody more and more and more. So you got to be careful uh, to stepping into their agenda. You got to outthink them. Don't go. Don't get too crazy, but stay smart. Create a game plan and attack. Uh, you know, in, 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 a, in a, you know, obviously I, I'm all about nonviolence, but like obviously in a, in, in a, in a smart way um, and, and be smart, but don't don't fall into the agenda that they're doing, because this is this is all if you think they didn't plan this, if you think they didn't plan this outcome on purpose, if you think they don't have think tanks that know what's going on, you know, they, they definitely do. And this is all part of the agenda to continue to segregate people into a section uh, where they can start to control them. Uh, they don't care what race you are, what nationality, what kind of culture you come back from. They're trying to infiltrate and then break you up from your own people. So you gotta be very careful with with, um, with reacting to uh, what they're trying to do. And I like what Tyreek's doing, like he's doing his own thing and he's doing it, you know, um, you know homegrown and creating something that can actually bring some substance, but going out there rioting, breaking, that's what they want. That's what they, they can't wait for you to do that because they want to put you on the news. They want to interview you. They want to make sure they, they want to give the dumbest person a platform that's angry, that's out of control. So they can say, look, see, see what we're talking about. So they can, again, push their agenda. Um, and that's, it's, 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 it's a really sick, uh, like kind of tactic. It's a very psychological tactic and they're preying well, on the emotions of people. Well, I'm not. My thing is I, I can't tell people how to react to an unjust system because, you know, if people react how they react, um, however they see fit, because, yeah, I, I'm not the kind of person who will say be violent or be nonviolent because we never know what the circumstances are. I'm not a proponent of nonviolence at all, but I'm not saying to be violent, but I'm saying sometimes people are gonna have to defend themselves. And if you are in a situation where people are, are declaring war on you, you don't have a nonviolent mindset because we're not just gonna sit down and just be genocided. So we, we have to protect ourselves by all means. We have to defend ourselves by all means. And we have to let people know that we're not going to let them sit here and just pick us off like sitting ducks. Um, by the way, you have a Hispanic accent. What part of South America is your family from? Uh, I, I'm, I'm from, I'm, I'm from originally from the Bronx. 
Uh, I'm Puerto Rican. Right. Uh, I, I grew up in the Bronx. One six thirty in Sherman Avenue. Shout out to all my Bronx, my BX boys yeah. and girls out there. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, and um, uh, now now I live in a uh, South Carolina Myrtle Beach uh, in a Republican red state, uh, mm-hmm. which I can tell the difference. Trust and believe, and I'm you know I don't get I don't get too into politics. I believe it's all a circus and it's all controlled to control a narrative, but. Things like this really piss me off because, man, I grew up in an African American community, Hispanic community, and then I then I moved to here in uh, South Carolina, and you know they already have a perception, right? And they're waiting. They're what they want to is they want verification of that what they think that that people are. That's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for people to verify who we who they think that we are, and uh, it's upsetting because it's a very silly mindset, uh, but. Unfortunately, you know, I think the, the, the larger picture is the government has brainwashed a lot of people that we just can't, we, you know, it's, I mean, we can to a certain degree, but there are certain parts of the group where, uh, in, in the United States, where they're looking to look at you in a certain way and categorize you, and they're just waiting for you to act like what the news told them that you act like. Now, let me get Ant CEO, because Ant's been giving thumbs down. Let's get Ant in here, because he don't, he he doesn't like what he's hearing. Ant, are you here, brother? Yeah, Flex, I'm here, man. First of all, he was talking about these think tanks that want us to be. You, like you said, Tariq, we gonna we gonna react and be however we be. That's not for you to negate, for you to even give an opinion on because you ain't us. So for you to bet is for so for you to say how are we supposed to or not supposed to react based on what the public's view. We don't give a fuck about a public's view. What's good for us? We're going to react and respond however we need to respond. So all of that. And then, all right, you, you see right. that and, 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 and respect. I just, I, I just. I didn't cut you off. My, my bad, my bad. Go ahead. I'm still talking. There you go. And then another, and then another aspect so I want to add to, you're, you said you grew up in an African-American community. I doubt it. You lived in the Bronx and grew up in the Bronx. Everybody in the Bronx, most of them, not FBA. Most of them are Caribbean and African. So what African-American community did you grow up in? Or did you just grow up somebody that's melanated that looked like us, but not really us? You know, and 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 I and I appreciate that statement. You know, um, I wasn't trying to speak or speak for a bunch of people. So if I if I sounded like I was, I was not trying to do that. What I was trying to say is that I grew I grew up in an African American community, primarily Black community, Hispanic community, where the only time you saw somebody who was not your color or not your skin set is when you went to school and it was a teacher or it was a, maybe a law enforcement officer. So I'm, but I'm also not, well, here is, to, but, but I'm what, also not here to speak for everybody because yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm not trying to speak for a large, a large population. Cause that's not what I'm trying to do. I don't know. Again, I don't want to take over. I want to take over Tariq, but again, like you, you grew up in a community that you grew up in the Bronx, but nothing against the Bronx. I know we got family out there, but like majority of the people in New York in general are not us. They just not respectfully. They got mixed lineages and they not fully us. So when y'all be saying that and you, you, you Hispanic, it's like, you not really us, and you ain't grow up around us for real, respectfully. There you so, go. But I hear you. I guess. Thank you so much, Ann. There you go. Uh, that's interesting. Let's get after our lead in the building. Tariq, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. What's going on, fam? Uh, uh, first off, I want to say to what you said about the space. I think this has been a really good space so far, and I'm glad you're holding it because. Yes. A lot of people are looking at the situation that I've seen on Twitter and they're looking at it from kind of like a see, we ain't ever going to get reparations type of energy. And I think that's the wrong way to look at it because, you know, based off the laws of physics, with every action is an equal or greater reaction. Right. With the thing with Trayvon Martin, there was a reaction that they didn't expect. The thing with George Floyd, there was a reaction that they didn't expect. They couldn't handle and they had to concede with this. With they're gone, there's going to be a reaction that they're not going to be able to handle. I think that them not giving the reparations to the Tulsa survivors, I think that they did that out of desperation. I feel like they feel like if they do that, they're going to completely um lose the lose the power yeah. i feel like it, it's it's very difficult to explain and i'm trying to be brief but the thing is is that they're doing these last clinch things where they feel like they can't let anything go because they're slipping their power is slipping away from them yeah. and what they don't understand is that we're not gonna let this slide 
they don't understand that there's going to be a greater reaction to this. So I don't want anybody to look at this situation and and feel like all oh, hope is lost. I feel like, see, this is an example of we'll never get anything. I think that we should look at this situation as a morale boost, as a motivation to push us forward. Like this weekend with this uh, reparations rally, we should come in there with even more energy because of yes, this. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. My man, thank you so much, Brother Afro. Yeah, man, this should, this should put a battery in everybody's back even more. We got to go harder in the paint. You understand? And also now, I bet not see nobody running up on me talking about, hey, what about free Palestine and let's do this for Israel? That man, if you don't get the hell on, you better get far away from me with any of that. Y'all really better not try to get us to get on board with none of that. You understand? That's why I ain't been caping for none of these other folks, because when it comes time for justice for us, we get justice damn denied. So if we everybody's holding their own nuts, that's fine. That's fine. All right, you hold yours and I hold mine. We'll hold ours. All right. Well, we got speaking of agents here. What's up, agent? Agent Tubby. I, you always come around every time we do a rally. We see you pop around. So I see they got you on assignment, Agent Tubby. What's up, Black? Turn What's going mind. on, brother? What's up? Awesome. So they they didn't they didn't give you your assignment. I knew. I you mean, were... man, you know, uh, it's fucked up what happened with the elders out there in Tulsa, isn't it? Uh, it's just it's just it's just a reminder of how white supremacists think about African American people, uh, and why we have to be serious when things like this happen. Uh, we can't we can't come here and bullshit and ah, he, he, uh, like we normally do. No, this is a time to reflect about where are we at. Uh, what what is justice for African people uh, in America? That's that's something that we have to start thinking about. These folks live through that. They, this ain't something that is abstract to them. They have to study it. They experience that. And the Oklahoma Supreme Court said, uh, kiss, kiss our white ass. Uh, we don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, take your black asses and die. Uh, that should make us all feel some type of anger. Uh, don't you agree, brother? Yes, I do agree. Yes, I do. So uh, now what, what steps uh, do you think we take? Because I was just reminded about the white woman uh, that called, called the police on the black brothers. You remember that? And she Which got one? fired uh, oh, yeah. from the Starbucks. And she got $25 million. Right, right. She got oh, yeah. $25 million, brother. Right. So These folks can't get a red penny. Right. So that's why um, we're going to go to Washington, D.C. this Saturday to stand on that business, to strategize and signal boost the message to say, hey, look, that didn't stop us. That ruling that you did, that's not going to stop us. You think you're being slick. You think you're being fly. We're going to stand on this business even harder. The Democrats, you guys should be out the paint. Because all of those symbolisms and running around there dancing and shucking and jiving, and you guys can't do anything to help produce justice, we are no longer supporting you. That's one of the messages that we should send or anybody or any one of these political groups, um, if you're just going to sit here and play the symbolic gesture game, we're not going to support that. But well, we're going to come to D.C. and stand on this reparations business. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to stop and we're not going to back down. Um, the Beat, the Beat, what's your name? The Beat Nick? What's up, the Beat Nick? All right, to beat Nick one more time, man. One more time. Let's get it. Are you ready to talk? If not, let me get you out of here. Let's get um, Camazon. Just the name Camazon in the building. What's up, Camazon? Um, let's try unmuting your microphone, ma'am. Hi. Hi, Camazon. Hi, Mr. Tariq. How are you? Good evening. 
I'm good, dear. Camazon, where are you calling from, dear? I'm calling from Florida. What's up? What part of Florida are you in? Um, I'm in South Florida. Okay. Um, are you, is your family from the Caribbean? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, they are, but we're, I'm, I was born here in America. I that deal, but what part of the Caribbean y'all from? Jamaica. Jamaica. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. When did y'all? I, I have a question. Go yeah. ahead, dear. So I I really do like enjoy your space, and I was listening. It was very entertaining because you're also really funny. Mm -hmm. But I always wonder, like, why why don't you like? Do you have any type of like dissent against Pan Africanism and just unifying Black people? Like globally, I always wondered like why you were just always so primarily focused on like just nationally versus like Africans and Black people from other countries. Um, well, because well, I have tried to focus on um, Black people globally, and the problem is when you go to these people's homelands. They're split the hell up. They're so tribal, they're not even trying to be together mm -hmm. within their own homeland. And what happens is they'll come here with that same tribal mindset and it undermines us. Mm -hmm. So we're saying, hey, we can't have people come among us if you have a tribalistic mindset mm -hmm. where you're cutting everybody's throat in your homeland and y'all want to bring that over here to us. That's not going to work because you're going to turn us into a damn third world country over here. So we're not allowing people to get us off code. We're supposed to be codified as far as certain things. And the people who are the most on code are usually the people from our lineage, because that's the commonality that we have. That's why in the 1960s, when it was primarily foundational black Americans out here, we could have a successful bus boycott and shut down the whole city because we all got on code. You understand? Yeah, I understand, Mr. Tariq. But like... I mean, how do you know if everyone, like all the Black people right now that preside in this nation that are foundational Blacks? Because there's so many, you know, people who have came from different countries and they've intermingled and it's so much kind of like mixing. So how are you able to kind of decipher who's a foundational Black here versus who has some type of extension? We know, we know, just like y'all know. When we go over there to Jamaica, y'all know when we ain't Jamaican. Y'all know when I go to Africa, they know I ain't African. They know, hey, hey, nigga, where are you from? And they know I'm, I'm not from there. <laughs> <laughs> just like they can tell I'm not from there. We can. Do, this is the thing. Y'all think we don't know. We, we, we know. We can look at y'all and tell. Some of y'all think you blend in more than you do. Some of y'all, we don't look. We. Y'all take some hats <laughs> off. We the lines. We're like, wait a minute, nigga. <laughs> it's just you being super funny, but you yeah. entertain me, though. I appreciate you. We, we see some of that cake soap. Hold on. Y'all walking around with the vibe cartel face. And okay. Eight. Okay. <laughs> How did you niggas know? Yeah. Hey, we, uh, yeah, nigga, I see you. I fucking see you. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you do OnlyFans because I'm looking at your page and there's a whole heap of ass just all over your page. What do you got going on? No, I don't. Why do you think I... Why can't I just be a free, a carefree person? How can oh. this... Why can't this just be my burner account? Like, you trying to expose me. I'm not trying to expose you. I'm not... Was that exposing <laughs> you? I didn't know I was exposing you, ma'am. <laughs> no. No, I don't do that. I don't do it, though. Well, thank oh. you. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, you 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 you, th you slapping your clappers together in, in a lot of your. <laughs> Wait, I'm doing what? <laughs> slapping your clappers together. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she is really throwing that ass in a circle all over the place. All right, you need to get an OnlyFans, make some money off that shit. All right, let me get out of here, family. All right, man, look, it's going down Saturday. This Saturday, family, y'all need to be out here in Washington, D.C. We need to be standing on reparations business more than ever. Man, we need to be standing on it more than ever. We, hey, This got a battery in my back. We're going to be out here stomping hard, ladies and gentlemen. We're going we're gonna to get some justice. And we need to send a message to the country that we're standing on justice. We're not just going to take 
these little janky unjust rulings laying down. Everybody needs to be out here in D.C. to say, hey, no, 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 no. Y'all not going to throw reparations out the window. No, reparations is going to be right here. We're going to still stand on that business. If you want us to move or you, you want us to support any of these things you got going on, you better get this reparations thing going. We're not going to falter from that. We need to stand stronger than ever. Kimmy, Kenny, I know you're going to be here, Kenny. Miss Kenny T, the lovely Kenny T. Miss Bronze Melanin. But anyway, let me get out of here, man. Go to microphone check. Dot com to get the film microphone check. Also, go to rallyforreparations.com, the number four. All right, and support. Support the Rally for Reparations event because this is 100% grassroots, so we need you, family, to support. Anyway, man. Uh, cruising through in the black on black with my family. Bending corners, triple tinted with hella B. Before them, I didn't think this could ever be. Pan-Africanism and what goes on in Africa. And the Pan-Africanist always comes in our mix trying to shame us into upholding a false Pan-Africanist narrative that they're not holding up over there. Nobody over there is really trying to link up with us in real numbers unless there's a scam. And again, we've been pointing out all of the scams that's been going on when brothers and sisters go over there to Ghana, when they had that, oh, everybody come on the year of return, y'all come on over here. And family, there's video after video after video after video of black people going over to Ghana and getting the the scams, scams, scams put on them. They're getting scammed left and right. And that's just the reality. That's nobody hating. This you, you can look at the videos. People are going over there. They're la- buying property, spending thousands of dollars. The land is getting finessed from them. That that's why they wanted us over there so that we can be fresh scam meat. And that's the long and short of it. Let's keep it a buck. Because my thing is, if I see my folks getting scammed, I'm not gonna sell you no dream, man. I'm not gonna sit up here, um trying to be the the king of Wakanda and all that old bullshit. I'm I'm gonna, I'm going to keep it a buck. And and I've been over there. I've been to some of those African nations and, I, and I've talked to them and truth be told they're not really trying to um have us come over for real for real and build with like dual citizenship cuz look, I I've, I've been all around putting that dual citizenship bug in their ear and they're just not biting. And I'm telling you from first-hand experience. They ain't really trying to to build like that unless we can come over there with a bag. That's all they're interested in. And that's not Pan-Africanism. That's scamming. It's not our duty to sit up there and be scammed by folks. You dig? That's the long and short of it. And we're not trying to denigrate nobody. But don't let these so-called Pan-Africanists come in the rooms and try to shame us into not upholding a, a false non-existent pan-Africanist ideology that nobody else is upholding. I would like some some pan-Africanists to call up to prove me wrong. Show us what some pan-Africanist organizations actually got going on that's thriving and successful. You understand? Let us know. Let's get some of these calls in here. Let's get... um. Let's get some calls in here. Let's get um Ethan. Ethan, you ready? All right. So let's get ethnic in here. Oh, I'm ready to read. My bad. Okay. My bad. Go ahead, Ethan. Go ahead. So, so I wanted to pose this question, right? And I kind of want to ask you this one. So wouldn't true Pan Africanism be um telling the Oromo tribe to stop genocide in this tribe, or telling this tribe to stop genocide in that tribe? And true Afri- true Pan Africanism is uniting the the uh, African continent from top exactly. to bottom. Not telling us what the fuck we need to be doing, sorry, Tariq, or what we should be doing and who we should be united with. Exactly. It, it, that's the thing. They only bring that to us, by the way. You never say that to all of them damn tribes over there. You're not pan-Africanizing none of them. My thing is the answer to your pan-African is to start with the tribes first. Start with all of those gazillion tribes banging each other in the head. Start with them first and then holler at us. When y'all get it together, come show us the pan-African package. 
they don't go to the Caribbean telling them, y'all need to be Pan-Africanists. We all got to link up. No, you don't do that to them. But a lot of, see, here's the thing. A lot of the Pan-Africanists are actually here. The pan people who talk about pan Africanism and these pan African organizations, they're here. We got to ask some real questions, family. If you have these pan African groups always in our mix, they ain't never got nothing going on in Africa. What the hell is their purpose? Because people don't do things just to be doing them. You understand? I'm telling you, a lot of these pan Africanist groups and organizations and people are people who are operatives for the FBI and the CIA. We better be very clear about that. We better understand how the op game is real. There's some real ops out there. And when you have people who come in our mix and with these Pan-Africanists, the only thing they do is come among us and try to disrupt things. Do you notice that? The only thing they do is come around us trying to disrupt any momentum we got. If we try to get something going on with reparations, their job is to come around here and try to disrupt the energy and talk about some non-existent pan-Africanism that they got going on that ain't nowhere to be seen. Let's get Ethnic in here. Oh, hello, sir. What's up, Ethnic? Hey, um, I just want to say, firstly, I'm a massive fan of yours. Uh, have been for years, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, we have, we have a bit in common. Like what? Well, I actually hail from Detroit, despite my speaking pattern. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, wait, 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 no, no. Where'd you go? Where did you live before you lived in Detroit? Um, Jamaica. Jamaica, there you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. But, um, but I've got, like... Um, my mother ha- comes from Bessemer, Alabama. Okay. So, so, and our family actually, uh, original name was. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Your mother came from Bessemer, Alabama. Yeah, she came from Bessemer, Alabama. Oh, because then why? Okay, she is she Jamaican? No, she's American actually. Okay, where'd you get an accent? Because you 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 get your accent from your mother generally. So why why are you talking with Jamaican? Well, not even Jamaican. You have a British accent. So yeah, I, I grew up. I grew up in London a long time ago. Okay, but you all over the place. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually quite old too. I'm. I'm like fifty something years old. So, um, and you know, I've lived in Detroit, and I've lived in London, and I've lived in Singapore, China, visited most of Northern Africa, popped down to South Africa, you know, bumped mm-hmm. down to Asia, EMA, the whole EMEA thing. So, you know, and, and I went to went to you know school in Boston. And I wrote this little um, thesis a um, long time ago. I'll just, you know, I won't spend take up too much of your time. I'll just kind of get quick into, you can look at my Twitter, kind of like well, X, whatever it is, and dig deeper into this whole thesis concept that I've been just fucking around with over the years. Um, it, it was called Ethnic Assets, and then I actually published it. Well, now, what's this? What's the ethnic assets about? What's what's the thesis about? Yeah, like I, as a, as a, well, like I said, I don't want to like distract from your your Pan Africanist uh, theme here, but well, ethnic assets is more conceptual. Um, I, it's complements, hopefully, complements what you're doing. I think you're on the right track. To be honest, I think what you're doing is not unlike what Ken Ken Hendry is doing. In London, you may have heard of this guy. He wrote a book called um, uh, "It's Like the Disease of Whiteness." I mean, it's just really, he just really goes in on whites and the whole colonialism and of uh, of the Caribbean and Africa and Americas. Really, it's Ken Hindi. Uh, God, that's the same. Name. Okay, get get your thoughts together, brother. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to. I try to give you a chance, but you're just babbling, bro. Get your thoughts together. All right. If y'all call up, get your thoughts together. Because I try to give you a chance. You know, if you say something interesting or sound like it might be interesting, all right, I'll give you a shot. But you, you just can't get up here and babble. All right, you just babbling. All right. And if I'm getting bored, my audience is getting bored. All right, I got to think about the audience. They don't want to hear that. I feel my audience. I feel them. They feel me. And I don't want to bore them with, with babble. See, I, I, I got this, um, it's called Ethnic Assets, and um, 
hello, um, Pip Pip, and um, he, in, in, it's sort of like Kinji. Um, have you have you, have you heard of him? Uh, yes, it was something something along the lines of. Uh, hold on, let me get a spot of tea. Um, oh, yeah, yummy! But listen, I am something along the lines of this. I want to um, elaborate on the. Uh, Something similar to Cornel West and uh, Degrassi, people of that nature. Well, you just kind of like to hear your goddamn self talk, man. You come on, bro. You you kind of like to hear yourself talk. You know, flesh your stuff out, brother. Flesh it out, man. Get it together. Get that Peppa Pig shit up out of here. All right. Now let's get Arthur in here. Arthur, what's up, man? How you doing, Tariq? Uh, Hello, how are you, sir? I'm just drinking, <laughs> eating an English muffin, reading some Maya Angelou. <laughs> you know you missed your calling as a stand-up comedian. You know that, anyway, two things. The first one, real quick. I, uh, I'm in Chicago. I just... I went to see Microphone Check. Excellent work, brother. Excellent. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, okay. Second thing, to your point about Pan-Africanists being disruptive, the prime examples of those are NARC and COBRA and First Repair. Yes. Who are contractors to the Democratic Party and whose sole purpose is to keep reparations an issue, not an accomplishment. Right. Right. Man, and, and I, I remember doing a lecture in Boston years ago, and some in Cobra people came up there, and they were trying to g give me pamphlets and try, oh yeah, at Cobra, man, we got a lot of good things going. They came up to one of my lectures trying to sell me on the in Cobra stuff. And I'm like, all right, y'all ain't really, I'm looking at their pamphlets, and it was all about, well, reparations ain't all about some money, it's all about um, um, repatriation. I said, oh, hell no. Repatriation? Hell no. Sending us back to the motherland. A nigga, please. They are, they immediately turned me off. So yeah, man, we, we got to watch these groups that come around with this stuff. We got to watch them, man. Let's get um, Burn It Turn. Burn It Turn. And then we'll get um, XL. Burn a turn and XL. Burn a turn first. Burn. Hop on, brother. It's your turn. All right. Hey, Tariq. It's, What's up, I'm bro? sorry. Uh, it's burn it earn. But uh, yeah. Um, I just want to let you know, bro. I've been, I've been, I've been following you for a minute, bro. I, I, I went back to school in like a 2014. I seen the first hidden colors in a classroom, and ever since then, it just changed my life. Yeah. Um. What I wanted to talk to you about, oh, I was going to let you know, so you know who I am. I'm the dude that was at the uh, L.A. premiere for the uh, microphone check, and I sitting on your same aisle, and you kicked over my soda. Oh, are you the big dude? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, my bad, brother. I, yeah, my I want my $5, too. Nah, fuck with you. <laughs> cool. you, you, you with your lady, weren't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's your queen doing, man? Oh, she's doing good. She's doing good. She, she's at work right now, but yes. she enjoyed the movie as well. Yes, indeed. I kicked over this brother's soda by mistake, and he paid. He was like, "Oh man, ain't no big deal." But he looked thirsty. He's a big brother. He looked like, "God damn it, I gotta wash this popcorn down." And Tariq fucked me up. Oh no, they have free <laughs> refills, so it was gravy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So how what's um, going on, brother? Uh, so what I wanted, to, I seen the topic of the the of the space. This is my first time in Twitter space. I'm just learning how to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? I, but uh, I seen the topic and um. First thing I thought of, the only thing that they really mattered, um, that they really managed to do was just water down our movement. You know what I mean? Yeah. They come over here and then they 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 claim to be part of us, but then they kind of vote against us. Yeah. I kind of learned this when I was working in a boys' group home, and you know, in boys' group homes, they have a lot of African people that work there. Um, and I was just talking politics with one of them. And I was just like, man, it hit me like you guys are so far from our actual politics and the way that we move is just crazy. You know what I mean? It's yeah. How they can look so much like us, but not actually be us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yes, indeed, man. I feel you. Thank you so much. Speaking of, he reminded me of something. Y'all remember the other day I had that, um, that tether nurse that, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, Nate. That um tether nurse, that Sudanese chick, she was from South Sudan, I think, and she was a nurse in Arizona. 
Um, yeah, I think people found her identity because she tried to hide who she was after we did the broadcast because she's a nurse, but she was talking real greasy about Foundation of Black Americans. Talking about, yeah, I got to take care of y'all. Y'all be all fat and all them chemicals y'all be eating. So she was talking real greasy about Foundation of Black Americans. Yet she's a nurse and she's in charge of taking care of sickly Foundation of Black Americans. So a lot of people were like, hey, man, we need to see who this woman is and, and kind of report her ass. And some of y'all actually found her little old musty self. Um, I need to post that information up because people kind of found out who she was. And I think they found out she'd been arrested before. They they pulled up her whole, her whole little tether rap sheet. But yeah, that's a dangerous thing, man. We got to understand. A lot of these tethers work in the medical industry. You know, a lot of them tethers be getting them fake nursing degrees. So they be scamming their way into the, the medical field and the nursing field. And they bring that vitriol with them. And then they end up being in charge of watching over sick foundational black Americans and family. I've heard horror stories about these folks beating up on patients, doing real weird stuff. You understand? So we got to keep our eyes and ears open, man. Us kind of looking at how these tethers roll. That's not us being xenophobic. That's us being very cautious because we look at folks and think, oh, he, they black like me. They're going to be on code like me. We don't understand how some of these tethers identify with the white supremacists and they'll do real devious stuff behind our backs. We don't really understand how deep that thing is. Let's get um let's get Danielle and then we'll get Nate. Danielle. Thank you. Um, I really want to unpack this for all of us. When you, uh, the minute we all got on the boats, we were written off. And you could tell, by the way, that how no one came looking for us. I don't think any, not one boat from Africa on our behalf came looking. We were written off. So now mm -hmm. just imagine when we were, you know, under pressure like we are under the pressure of <laughs> white supremacy, you can't help but become a diamond. Now that the... The coal has been cracked open and the diamonds have shone through. They, because they made a deal with white supremacy on top of white supremacy, making that deal with them. Can you imagine how cheated they feel when they made a deal with white supremacy that they would have a safe place under it? And yet and still, we're the ones who came out from the belly of the beast with all of this. And we're doing things that have exceeded everybody's expectations so what does that come up as that comes up as cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. and now that you have cognitive dissonance on top of being a professional victim a professional victim is someone who blames others for what they did to themselves so they held on to a belief that we were in fear, <sighs> and now that the we are proving otherwise to their belief now they have themselves to feel well, the white supremacist tab. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. I land. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Yeah, you you were cooking. It was just a uh, the white supremacist popped up here making flushing sounds and all that. His, his um, he had moved his thong around and his bussy was queefing. That's all that was. That's all that was. A little bussy queef. All right, let's get Nate. Nate in the building. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, Nate? Hey, Tariq, how you doing, brother? Uh, long time listener, long time fan. Uh, you put me on the consciousness back when uh, I saw the first Hidden Colors, uh, maybe 12 years ago. Oh, yeah. So uh, I've always been a fan, and man, I've been putting other people on it. I, I, every every movie that you, you that you drop, I have people come over, and we watch, We have a, like a, a, a watch party. You know, we, we put on a big screen, and we got the, the family and people on the block, and I got I got a lot of people that's that's you know that's that's up on your movement and up on your your work and everything. But I wanted to say um, I'm, I'm from Chicago um, and I was out there at the premiere with uh, I saw Afro Elite and everything. Oh yeah. And um, it was crazy because when I first came in at the beginning, it was some uh, some of them folks and some uh, some uh, I want to say Latinos, but you know they was in there and they were down more in the front row and everything. 
And I guess we had more of a presence. Uh, you know, the FBAs was coming in. So they, they stood on the side and then they said, oh, we must be in the wrong movie because this, this, this ain't what we came to see. I said, mm-hmm. oh, so I'm kind of seeing the vitriol. Like y'all knew the movie theory y'all was coming in, but y'all had thought it was we weren't gonna be up there like that. It kind of seemed like that. So mm-hmm. it, 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 yeah, it, it is what it is. Though they 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 cleared out early, and we had a ball. We had a blast. It was off the chain. Uh, yeah. man, great work, great film. I think I think you can get it. I think you can get it nominated for an Oscar. Uh, for yeah. um, yeah, Oscar. For, yeah, Oscar. Yeah, man, because it's one of the best documentaries that that came out in a long time is factual and it's on one of the biggest subjects in the world right now, which is hip hop. And yeah. we are the founders and co-creators FBA all day. I rock with you. You got mad support, mad love from Chicago to Milwaukee. So keep doing your thing, brother. And I'm Thank right. So back. Yeah. Thank man, you. Chicago really showed out heavy. They showed up and showed out heavy for the film, man. And people loved it, man. Just rave reviews for the film all the way across if you have not seen microphone check you really got to treat yourself man and we're really we're going to really push for this thing to be oscar nominated because it is it's that good people really love it man just the reviews are just top notch even from the media um because we invited the media to the new york one and um the media man they've been raving over it and i'm talking about the mainstream media and you know what's interesting man um a lot of the hip-hop radio the corporate hip-hop radio they're still somewhat quiet about it. I want y'all to understand the corporate hip hop radio. They're still kind of quiet about it, which is very interesting because these corporate hip hop radio entities that set up here and let folks lie about the history. They had no problem platforming the lies. Now that the truth is out there on a big screen and big technicolor. Now they want to get quiet about it. Interesting profit. Go ahead, brother. Hey, what's going on, bro? How you? I'm good. What's going on, Prophet? Doing good, man. Uh, I'm here in Atlanta. I wanted to say uh, congratulations on the success of Microphone Check. I was at work. I didn't get to check it out, but I'm ready for that thing to uh, come out on streaming. Um, As far as, like, kind of on topic, um, I'm curious as to why... Well, a few things. I want want our people to continue to dive into their their lineage and their history because the... A lot of people are breaking down that slave trade theory and, you know, some people did come on ships, but I think that is, you know, aggrandized to an extent. I don't think it's as much as, as people would, people would seem. I don't think we all came over here on ships and things of that nature. Um, but my other thing is why are people from the diaspora or, you know, mostly Africa, why do they feel like so much, like we need to get black. Why, why is it so much bitch we all toward black Americans? Why are you black Americans or African? Why don't they give that same energy towards Jamaicans, Caribbeans, um, Brazilians? Well, you know, Brazilian has, Brazil has like the second largest black population in, in the world next to Africa. Why are these people aren't going to other black populations and telling them that they're African? Why is it always you black Americans are ashamed of your lineage? They don't give that smoke to anybody else. Why is that? Exactly. That's a very good question because you never have them go to Jamaicans and say you're supposed to say you're Afro Jamaican. Yeah, they don't. They don't do that. You're supposed to be Afro Haitian. You're supposed to be. It's only us because we're the ones. We have been the global icons. We've been the ones that will change and shift cultures multiple times over. We are the progenitors of so many different trends and accomplishments and cultures. No group of black people has accomplished and built more than foundational black Americans. Even John Henry Clark said this. So it's very important for them to tether onto us. See, us claiming them is them tethering onto us. Seven God, what's up, man? Yeah, what's up, sir? How you doing? I'm good. What's on your mind? They got a lot of noise over there. What's on your mind? You were saying, talking something about... um, Africans coming, um, FPH. Uh, do yes. you have any? But that's a lie. That that's wrong. How come? Are you um, saying that not wrong? That y'all not scamming us when we go over there? Uh, probably when you're trying to uh, buy lands over here, maybe you're going through the wrong source, or you're going through the back door. If you go through the government, or if you go through um, the Ministry of Lands and Urban Development, I don't think you get scammed. Really? So everybody, so all these dozens of black people who go over there, they're lying about being scammed? Can you hear me, please? 
I can hear you. Are you saying that all of the black people who are making videos just by the dozens saying that they're going over there to different African nations and getting scammed? You think that they're all lying? Yeah, because this um, accusation you you put in is, is a very um, disastrous okay, so accusation. Why, because why would dozens of people, why would dozens of people who don't know each other lie? Why would they lie? Because you're trying to say the government of these countries, these African countries, are the ones scamming you, because they're they're the rightful ones to um, sell you land. So are you trying to say the government is scamming you? Not me, because I'm not going over there. But several other people are claiming that they're being scammed over there. You and you're saying they're all lying. So why are they lying? They're they're being scammed because they're not going through the right source. They're going through the back what, door. What Maybe say, because some of these people are going through the government agencies and when they're getting their land confiscated, the government there ain't doing nothing to stop it. So they're complicit, sir. Well, I've not seen anybody testify about that. Uh, going through There's the government, the, the, government can, the government cannot scam you because if the government yeah. does such, you can um, sue the government. The government will never do such a thing. Sir, so you got police over there who's a part of the government that's always forcing people to give them bribes. What do you know? No, that's that's a normal thing for police worldwide. Police are no. known for that worldwide. But I'm talking about the government. No, the, no, no, no. High no, authority. That, no, that is not normal worldwide. See how these tethers think? They think everybody's supposed to be damn scamming. No, police here in the U.S. don't walk up to people and say, hey, give me, give me $100 and I'll let you go. They don't do that here. No, they don't do that in Britain, sir. No, everybody don't have this dusty, musty, scamming mentality, sir. What are you talking uh, about? Okay, well, what about? What about what? Lord, boy, these tethers. What What about what, man? No, anyway, I, I'm, I'm tired of this lying tether. I don't want to hear no more lies. I'm sorry, guys. That's okay. I, I, I don't want to hear no more lying tether. Let's get Brother Sage in the building. Sage, Sage, Sage. Let's show light, brother. Peace to the family, brother. How's everything going with you? I'm good, man. What's on your mind, bro? I'm chilling, brother. Yo, um, how did that empanada mama digest in your system? You good? I was worried about you that night. I ain't gonna it lie, brother. It was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty good. It wasn't that bad. It was actually good. Okay, I was worried about you. I'm like, dog, don't eat nothing out here in New York and then have it fuck you up, man. You're going to go back to L.A. shitting on us? Crazy, man. <laughs> no, it was cool in the gang. It was good out there. Where you at, man? You got the babies with you? Nah, so my, my aunt, we, I'm just getting back now from my aunt. Um, You know, we're just celebrating her 89th birthday. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, so, you know, shout out to her, man. I'm just literally getting back, man, uh, from it. You know, it was an amazing, you know, get together with the family. We all had, you know, good. A lot of people came up from South Carolina. Shout out to them. Um, I put her on to you, man. I was playing, you know, some of your stuff earlier and she's sleep now. But, you know, um, definitely shout out to you again, because she went through because I was she was telling me about watching the Little Rock Nine on television. And yeah. obviously, you know, we wasn't around then. I know you're 75 years old, bro, but we wasn't around. <laughs> Stop. But we wasn't around then. And yeah. she talked to me about, like, you know, segregation, her not being able to go to, like, certain schools and all that. And there's certain things that she just doesn't know, even though she lived for 89. Oh, my Lord. Yo, oh. shut that video up, bro. Okay, Sorry okay. Man. I'm gonna, we're going to get back because them kids are, okay, yeah. Them, we got to get you back up, say, y'all got to give them kids some cookies or something. And what it's what okay, what time is it by the way? It's you know it's almost two in the morning, Sage. What are the babies doing up this time? <laughs> what are them kids doing up this time of night? You gotta put them to sleep, Sage. You gotta you gotta put on cocoa milling and give them some milk. <laughs> it's two o'clock in the morning. They them kids are showing out. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's get a hot boy in here. Let's get a hot boy in the building. Hot boy. Hey, Mr. Nasheed, how are you doing today tonight? I'm I'm good, man. How are you, hot boy? I'm blessed. Um regarding the topic, what have Pan-Africanist groups accomplished? I I'm inclined to agree with you because 
uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to say not much. And I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, not much. They haven't accomplished much. Um, I'll be brief. Or I won't take up uh, <laughs> your platform. I, I, w- I have not gotten a chance to see microphone check yet, but congratulations on your new production. I'm still politically at odds with you. I think most of what you're saying political wise is a bunch of shit. Trump like what? Huh? Elaborate. Elaborate. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll elaborate. Um, like this war that you're pioneering between um quote unquote FBAs and tethers. I think it's kind of productive and divisive. I now how is it that. Before? and I also no. disagree. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. You're not gonna trauma dump. You gotta elaborate. You gotta no 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 no. No, no, because y'all have all that trauma dumping on us. You, you're not going to act like our grievances are not legitimate. Some of the tethers, they are a problem. They are a problem in your homeland, and they become a problem to us. Is that factual or not factual, Todd Boy? That's not <clears throat> factual from my experience. Uh, yeah, that is no, from- no, no, that, that's disingenuous, sir. You got people from your home because you're from the Caribbean. I can hear you. I'm Jamaican. I know that I can hear your accent. You got people who come from the Caribbean who are actively lying about our culture, trying to co-opt it. That's a problem. And that's that is that is very true. That is very true. And I really wish that we could uh, reach some middle ground because just today alone, because see, I am a Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica, but I was raised in America. So I consider myself um, FBA, basically. Uh, for no. Term. no. Hold on. Let me finish. No. Just a oh, point. No, I'm... no, no. It don't work like that. Sir, sir. Like, let me finish because you can't really, uh, really respond to me if you don't hear the entirety of my statement. Okay. Well, so right, you don't want me to right. use your term. All right, fine. But Hold that's on, that... taking up more no, air time. No, 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 slow down. How 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 does that work? How could you be FBA and you're from Jamaica? How would how would that work? I want to hear it. We just got to slow down and make it make sense. Being a Jamaican who immigrated here, how would you be a foundation of Black American? Make it make sense. Sure. Uh, so, um, FBA, the term you're using, a foundation of Black American, I think is a bunch of bullshit. No, 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 don't start because you're whining. I don't want you to be a beta male. You can't be a beta male. You want now you... people in hell one. Uh... No, no, you're trying to troll your way out of it because you know it sounds ridiculous. Because you're, it sounds like you're upset with it because you can't co opt it. That's why you think it's bullshit because, see, you can't tether off of it, right? Wrong. No, no, no. Because, see, that's the thing. If y'all can't tether off something, oh, that's some bullshit. It's not legitimate if you can't co-opt it. And that's the problem. The term foundational Black American can't be remixed or co-opted. And that's why you have a problem, sir. Let's be real. Just tell the truth. And we can start with truth. And that's how we can meet middle ground. That's why you have a problem with it. Because yeah, that that's means, a that's an that, interesting guess, but you're not, no 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 because that means you can't get something that we get, okay? Because see, you guys and my my guy Mikhail is making a great point. See, here's the problem with Jamaicans. Let me get on you, sir, because we're gonna speak truth to power. Whenever we get something going on, y'all are some of the first ones to jump in with the handout. Y'all wait for us to kick in the door and then you go running with them little ashy feet and beating us to the punch. When we foundational black Americans went over to Ethiopia and helped the Ethiopians fight to keep their independence and Holly Selassie said, hey, you black people in America, I got some land over here for you to give you things. Your people in Jamaica heard about that and ran over there to Jamaica, to Ethiopia before we can even set foot over there. They ran over there and took it over. You understand? Based on what we fought for. So a lot of things, even with Marcus Garvey, we built Marcus Garvey up. Marcus Garvey became a thing because of foundational black Americans. Y'all didn't even like Marcus Garvey. but 
now that we built his legacy up, y'all tether off that. Like, oh, the great Marcus. We we gave you Marcus Garvey. We gave you the great Marcus Garvey. See, yeah, there's a lot of things that you guys are used to tethering off of, but you can't tether off foundational Black Americans. And Hot Boy, even your name, Hot Boy, you're tethering off our brother who was on Cash Money Records. If you can't tether off something, you got a problem with it. Ain't that right, hot boy? That is 100% incorrect. I just think the term FBA is a bunch of forced uh, terminology. You know, it's a bunch of forced lexicon. Because How so? Um, we're at, see, when a cop stops me and a judge adjudicates me, oh, he doesn't Lord, see a don't, don't or an FBA. He don't. just sees a that doesn't change your lineage, sir. Our lineage isn't based on our interaction with the dominant. Yes, so, uh, our lineage is based on how we're perceived by our government. When the government uh, no, at us, they see no, all because the no, that no, 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 no. You're going to be a Jamaican no matter what, sir. No matter what happens, no matter if you go to jail, no matter what, if you and I are driving down the street and they mistake us for each other, that doesn't stop you from being Jamaican. You're still Jamaican. Even if that cop say, okay, these are two niggas, you're still Jamaican. I'm still a foundational black American. So what makes my lineage different than yours? Why can't I own my lineage like you own your lineage? Huh? Well, anyway, as I was saying, uh, the way a third party perceives you or perceives us says more about our us than we perceive ourselves. So you that separating us with labels like FBA and ADOS and Tether. I mean, the I know who's not going to use any of those terms, Joe Biden and the rest of those racist motherfuckers in government. They're not going to be calling you an FBA. They're not going to be calling me a tether. They're going to be calling both of us black. And that's that how I can. But y'all, and y'all don't even consider yourself black if we're going to keep it a buck. Because y'all be saying, yeah, I, I'm black and Jamaican. Oh, I'm not black. I'm Jamaican. So y'all don't even consider yourself black. So it doesn't matter what you're called. It's how your lineage is. Your lineage is Jamaican. It goes to a particular island. My lineage goes to a particular landmass, North America. I'm a foundational Black American. No matter who perceives me or what, my lineage doesn't change. And that upsets you because you can't tether off of it because we've gatekept our lineage. You see, that's where the real anger is from. All of this other stuff you're saying is just babble, hot boy. You're just well, upset because... I mean, that doesn't... Well... What you're saying says a lot more about you, Mr. Nasheed, than it says about How me. So? You're saying that I'm How angry, and I don't see where you get that I'm angry from because I'm not angry. And yes, you're, very it's, angry. It's, you're, very, you're very hostile. You're trying to be, you're very passive aggressive with it, but you're very hostile. Huh? Boy, you shouldn't be hostile. You know, that's going to work up your must. You don't want to be hostile. Um, you have a lineage. Be proud of your Jamaican lineage. I am be proud, very of. proud of, uh, I'm proud of all black things. You know, I'm proud of. Black America, um, Jamaicans, Haitians, the indigenous African Americans, uh, you know, I'm saying Foundation of Black great, but yeah. you and the FBA are not great. You are a made up organization. Um, Jamaica is made up. Somebody made Jamaica up, sir. Somebody made it up. Somebody made up your flag and everything. Your flag came from Scotland, by the way. Your flag is basically the Scottish flag in a different color. Some white Scottish man made your flag. So Jamaican is made up. Your food is made up. And then up. you're your food... talking about you've gate kept your... Hold on. No, no, no. Look. You're going you're gonna to get this word. You want to talk about made up your food that you're so proud of. That's made up by East Indians. The curry and all of that. Come on now. That's made up too. Everything is made up, but we're determining our lineage name. We determine that. That's a power move when you name yourself, sir. Okay. Well, Tariq, I mean, it may be a power move based on what you've gone through in life. And you also said that you are the gatekeepers of your culture, but nothing could be further from the truth. 
you are not the gatekeepers of hip hop. Jimmy Iovine will tell you any day what to do. I mean, no, he won't. No, he won't. Jimmy Iovine ain't got nothing to do with what goes on on the hip hop grassroots. Jimmy Iovine controls what hip hop record or what rap record goes on the damn radio. Y'all better get it right. Y'all, a lot of the tether class, y'all don't understand the record industry from hip hop. They don't control hip hop. Hip hop is and has always been controlled by the streets. My film Microphone Check is hip hop and that's 100% independent and it's the top documentary in the country right now. We control that. Y'all tethers are so used to finding a white daddy to tell you what to do. You don't understand how to be independent. Y'all want to run to white mommy, white daddy and flee all over the place. You don't understand about standing 10 toes down and getting on code with your lineage and then building something and creating something and putting something out there that's successful. That's what we did with Microphone Check. That was foundational black Americans getting on code, funding our own film, promoting our own film and putting our own film out there so that people can enjoy it and it's successful. We don't bow down to the Jimmy Iovine, sir. That's what tethers do, okay? Well, that is a very poor example of being on code and so on and so forth and gatekeeping because, yeah, like I like I noticed, you know, I love all Black people, you know what I'm saying? With me, I can say for you, of course, but... Uh, I don't hate Yo, nobody. the Asians infiltrated your culture. They sell all their beauty supplies in your neighborhood. The a did you did you really try to go there with Asians, dude? You do know we have been to Jamaica, right? Did you really go there? Brother, there's an Asian woman on Twitter and TikTok who's in Jamaica sunning y'all ass. There's an Asian woman over there talking about how Asians are really running Jamaican culture and how y'all got a lot of stuff from Asians. There's an Asian woman in Jamaica right now shitting on y'all. Most of those business out there in Jamaica are Asian and East Indian run. Did you really try to play the Asian angle, sir? And you guys are the majority over there. And the Asians are sunning you in your own homeland. Did you really try to go there? Well, it's an FBA attribute to be loud, strong, and wrong. Um, when you contribute a majority of the finances to the household or the nation, you get a majority of the say-so. And that's that's the problem. You guys, y'all tethers, will sit up here trying to whine about what foundational Black Americans create, yet anything you got going on, the Asians finance it. The tethers over in Africa love trying to talk crap about our foundational Black American museum that looks better than theirs, and their little janky museums are put together by the Asians. Their little monuments and statues are funded by Asians. Their little anything they have has to be funded by the damn Asians. We don't sit up here wait on, waiting on them to fund our stuff. We can fund our own things. We know how to get on code with each other because we're deeply rooted and we know the power of codification and not fleeing all over the place, sir. So you can learn a thing or two, couldn't you? Absolutely incorrect. I will never learn anything from you, Mr. Nasheed, because... Well, you need to because you fleeing and coming over here being disrespectful and then talking about how the Asians are giving the money so they're supposed to be over there running your black asses and you're the majority. That's a coward-ass mentality to have. You don't even understand what you sound like right now, sir. Are you listening to yourself? Well, actually, I am listening to myself and I'm also listening to you. But anyway... Jamaica is, uh, like America, it's a capitalist society, so whoever puts in the most money will reap the most benefits, and that's just the way it is. You know, and why as far do, as them and why, running shit. And why, do, and why do millions of y'all sitting over there, black folks on that island, y'all can't get on code and put your resources together and control your own economy, sir? Why do y'all have to let a handful of Asians come over there and run shop while y'all sitting over there getting sunned by them? Huh?
the same reason America has to let a handful of Israelis run their country and call the shots for them and their military. But that's not the point. The point is, y'all have, you said that y'all are some great gatekeepers to your culture and y'all have been yes, we are. heinous gatekeepers to your culture. So I don't know where you get off all of a sudden talking about your. Oh, uh, yeah, we are great gatekeepers because we learn that sharing our culture with little disrespectful, ungrateful tethers like yourself, it's been a mistake. That's why the delineation movement is so powerful. And this is why we're taking control of our culture, just like we're taking control and we're gatekeeping hip hop. We did it with the microphone check film. That's why so many tethers are shook right now, sir. Listen to yourself. You sound like Candace Owens. Listen to yourself, hot boy. Go ahead. And you're a political scientist. You Are you down with Candace Owens, by the way? Yes, I think uh, Candace has some good political opinions. There it is. There it is. Tethers of a feather flock to damn gather. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, but but this is the thing, though. I just want you to clarify for me, and I'm being respectful. There's no need for name. I'm me like, too. Me too. Yeah, you I'm are. You are for sure. But I just want to mm-hmm. understand why you consider yourselves your your organization, which is not black people. Don't put that on all black people. FBAs don't represent. You know what organization you. We're not a part of your make believe organization that you didn't concoct it in your head. Just because you didn't concocted some janky organization in your brain, you're not going to make us members of a non-existent imaginary organization. There is no organization. We have a lineage that we're upholding. You're sitting up here creating fake organizations in your brain. Just like you had to sit up there and create fake meals and food in your homeland when you were starving. You had to fantasize about Sally Struthers coming to get you. We don't do fantasy football here, sir. Ain't no organization. That's in your imagination. We have a lineage, sir. And a lineage can't be shaken, remixed, or taken away. Our lineage is our lineage. You understand that? Sir, chitlins and collard greens are fake food. Do you understand that? Now, to the point, you're saying that you're and bush meat and bammy is fake food too. But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, hot boy. Because I know you're not going to try I mean, to seriously. get on the food. You're not going to try to. I know, I, know you, I know you ain't going to try the food game on us, okay? I know you're not going to try to have a food war with us. Are you really going to try to go there? Go ahead. But sir. I'm Go. saying though, you you said that you have been, and you did clean that up a little bit, saying that after you seen how people abused our culture, the the black culture, the African American culture, then y'all had to start the delineation movement. But mm-hmm. you're saying that shit as if you you're doing such a great job, or you're you're we're doing a phenomenal job. Look at how the tethers are getting triggered. We are gatekeeping our culture. We're saying, no, this is ours and this is going to be responsible. Your homeland. You know how how shameful that is. Y'all can't even go to certain beaches on your own homeland as black folks. They keep y'all away from certain beaches. Ain't that sad? And that's your homeland, right? Go ahead, hot boy. What's sad is your ability to habitually and pathologically lie because you're saying that- Where's the lie? Where's the lie? You know we've been there. I've been there, dude. For the right, oh, for the right price. So you got to pay your way to get up on those beaches for the right price right. on your as, own. Home. As is as is the case all over the world. If you come to Miami, you 
have to pay to go go to the beach. To be honest with you, and no, also, you don't. And those, no, 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 you don't. No, you don't. What beach do you have to pay for in Miami? You can walk on any beach in Miami. What beach do you have to pay for in Miami? What beach do you have to pay for in California? You can walk on any beach in California. The natives, there are certain beaches you can't even go to. They won't let you go to them. Well, the as it is all over the world, you have to pay in many countries over the world. No, 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 no I'm just not going to let you see you telling a lie over and over. Don't make it true, sir. Just uh, there's a jealousy and envy and, and vitriol that you have to get sunned like that on your own homeland. And then you come over here and have to tether on to us. And now that we're gatekeeping our lineage, you can't tether on to it. And that's where this hostility is coming from, sir. That's all this is. Y'all can't tether on to us because we ain't going to let nobody tell us where the hell, what beach we can't go to. We're going to step to them and we're going to do some pushback as foundational black Americans. We don't have sir. a history of that. We don't, no, no, we don't have a history of letting these folks tell us what the hell we can and can't do. We turn up. Sir. So you want to get around us oh. so that you can be around the turn up. Turned up, huh? So you're talking uh -huh. about somebody getting sunned in their own country like those uh -huh. illegal immigrants are doing the people, the black people in Chicago. They and that. And the uh, black people in Chicago are pushing the hell back. There's a reason. There's a reason why Biden's numbers are trash right now. We're fighting back on that. We're pushing back on that. The Biden's numbers are in the tank right now. We got a huge rally going to Washington D.C. in a few weeks, sir. We're getting that packed up and organized. We ain't fleeing the country. You understand how that works? That's why we're organizing now. You're just putting you your see? neighborhood into homelessness. And that's equally, if not worse, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. But the illegal immigrants, they're pushing you out of your neighborhoods. They're taking your parks and high schools and using them for shelter. And, that, and that's why we're pushing back against you, Tethers. That's why we're saying no more. There's a pushback right now. We know what you Tethers are doing. We know. This is why we're saying no. We don't want this. And that's why you're upset, because we're pushing back from tethers and people trying to come and undermine us. Immigrants have felt that way about you since the beginning of time. They've hated you, and you're just now starting pushing. And they hate themselves. That's why they've had to flee. And the thing is, the immigrants wouldn't be able to come over here if it weren't for us. That's the problem. You, you're, you're saying everything that we're saying. These musty immigrants and tethers who we help and we help them flee from these raggedy homelands, they come over here and have vitriol to the only people who help them. And then we're wrong for delineating. Listen to you. And they don't listen. You just, you just confirm why we should delineate. You just confirm why we should delineate. These people come over here hating us, and then you're mad at us for delineating? I'm, I'm mad at you. The first thing I was going to say was, because I am Jamaican, I, I do agree with you that these people from Haiti, ex Jamaica, especially these old ladies, they come over here with the most putrid hatred against y'all for no damn reason. They're we know this. Their country. You know, that uh, the only thing you, know, you have to do to succeed in America is go over there and not act like the niggers and put the niggers down and treat them poorly. And you, uh, no, no, no. It's the it's really the opposite. You got to come over here and act exactly like us. You have to assimilate into foundation of Black American society and act like us to come up. That's how you come up. You understand? That's yeah, exactly how. That's that's how that's how an immigrant comes up and holds uh -huh. down at the same time. Uh huh. Exactly. That's called tethering. So you're admitting everything that we're saying, and that's why we delineate. We don't need that. So why do you think we should allow that to continue to happen? Hmm. You just admitted everything we've been saying that you have a bunch of degenerate opportunist tethers who come over here hating on us and trying to undermine us after we help them. And then you question why we want to delineate from that? 
Make it make sense. I'm not questioning why you want to delineate from that. Then what's your problem? You should why, have then why, then why, why is, then why is us looking at our lineage and saying, hey, look, our lineage is different? Why is that a problem? We we want to delineate from that. Why is that a problem? Come on, hot boy. Well, um, it's not a problem for me. I'm just saying that you, the F the people who call yourselves FBA. No, no, no. You mean the 40 million foundation of black Americans that's here. You're not going to make up some imaginary group. When we talk about foundation of black Americans, we're talking about 40 million non-immigrants. That's what we're talking about, sir. And tethers have been over here trying to undermine the 40 million non-immigrants. No, no, they saying, are not trying. They're succeeding in undermining you know, what I'm trying to show you. They have succeeded. Um, not quite, because we're still here and we're still pushing back. And you have to go back and fix up those homelands because we're not going to allow the undermining of foundation of black Americans. We're shutting that down, sir. We're not letting that happen. We're not letting that happen. Yeah, all right. I feel you. I, the struggle is real, but yeah. You know what? The, and, and, hey, listen. When you saw them beating them people at the border, your, your Caribbean brethren who were trying to come over here and were getting whooped at the border by them white supremacists on horseback, and they start looking to us like, FBA, niggas, come help us. And we were like, hey, man, do you? Yeah, that they, they kind of felt that. Right, they no, kind of felt that little they, right? like that. I mean, it like most things you talk about, it didn't happen that way in reality, it only happened that way in your mind. Okay, how did it happen? Because it was on video, and the photos and the video was out there where your, your Caribbean brother was getting whooped on. So, what part of getting whooped on did we not so see? Why, if y'all could delineate. Jamaicans can't delineate and we have to be lumped in with Haitians and indigenous Africans and all that. that because that's your, no, that's your Caribbean brethren, sir. That's your Caribbean brethren. So you all immigrants. That's the common thread that you have. And then they start <laughs> shipping them. They, and then they start shipping them back in large numbers too, after that whooping, because we weren't sitting up here putting a cape on for your fellow, fellow Caribbean, sir. How did that work out? When FBAs weren't there for the rescue, how'd that work out? Huh? Ask Eric Adams. It worked out fantabulous. We got jobs as lifeguards, uh, ten thousand dollar debit cards, and y'all still ain't got shit. Y'all up there in New York getting rounded up, thrown in jail, left and right, sir. They're throwing y'all up in the jails up there, left and right in New York. By the way, don't leave that part out. They're rounding you up. And How yeah, can yeah. I? CNN ain't yeah. doing anything like that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. They, they getting some of y'all locked up up there. They getting some of y'all locked up, and then they shipping a lot of you back. And, you wrote, uh, and you're riding, Trump. And you're riding And you're riding for Candace Owens, and, you know, she's on the Trump train, I think. And Trump is, you know, he, he can possibly get back in office. You know Trump is going to send a lot of your cousins back. He's going to send a lot of y'all back. You know that, right? He 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 should throw a lot of y'all niggas under the bus, but he he's not. Trump really didn't do anything to harm foundation of Black Americans when he was in office. Stupid shit, y'all be doing. Y'all should be Trump, throwing off. Trump. You no, know, it shoulda, woulda, coulda. Um, Trump. That's why I don't really have that much of a problem with Trump politically. Trump really didn't do anything to harm foundation of Black Americans. But your, your little musty cousins and those folks, if he gets back in office, it sounds like you don't have a problem with them getting thrown back across the border with their little chicken dinners in their hand. When they were whooping your little Caribbean guy, he had a little chicken dinner in his hand. He didn't let them. Uh, no. He didn't. It was funny. Your Caribbean guy, when he was getting whooped on horseback, when the guy on horseback was whooping him, he never let go of the chicken dinner. All right. But, oh, ouch, nigga. Oh, oh uh, nigga. Uh, F, 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 us. And that chicken dinner did not go nowhere. It stayed in his hand. He was not going to let go of that chicken dinner. So I want y'all to look at the video and look at the picture. That chicken dinner was not going nowhere. He was going to take that wherever he went, whatever border he went to, that chicken dinner was going to go with him. 
So anyway, anyway, my talking brother. to you, bro. But I mean, to, just to wrap it up, you know, like I said, um, the Asians and the Muslims they only set up shop in black communities, and it was like your homeland. And they're over there wrecking shop in your homeland. They're sunning you. Y'all are the majority over there, and the Asians are taking over. You guys got that coon spirit. I remember when the Queen of England died, it was y'all Jamaicans running around, rolling on the ground, crying like big old musty coons over the Queen dying. So that shows your mindset, sir. God bless you. Any any last words, hot boy, with your coon family lineage? Any any last words? Yeah, yes. Um, thank you for letting me come on and say my piece, but... Um... Yeah. You all are the dumbest organization ever. But we don't flee. Okay. We don't have an organization and we don't flee like cowardly tethers like you did, sir. And the only reason you're over here is because Foundation of Black Americans gave you a lane. And if it weren't for us making it possible for you to flee, you'd be over there in Ocho's Rios scratching your ass, eating some Bammy trying to fuck a fat white woman for a green card. All right? Thank you so much, hot boy. I appreciate you, okay? All right, I appreciate you too, bro. Have a good week. There you go. All right. (laughs) Ungrateful tethers. There it is. Boy, these tethers are so damn ungrateful. Lord, talking about Asians. Asians over there running stuff in your homeland. Got you fleeing from your own homeland. And you're going to come over here telling us about some Asians. Man, if you don't stop. Boy, these these tethers are so mad. Boy, don't stop. Boy, these, these tethers are so mad. Boy, us delineating and... I'm telling y'all, family, how powerful the term foundational black American is. Remix it. He wants to tether on that term so bad. That term is so codified and it's so Trump tight. You cannot latch on to it if you're not of our lineage. So that's why they have to try to turn it into an organization. You think it's all a group. It is a cult. They got to They got to play a make-believe game that it's something else. It's a lineage that you cannot tack on to, sir. That means you're going to have to hold your own nuts. And the fact or the thought of these guys having to fight for themselves, it terrorizes them. They're terrified to have to fight for themselves and fend for themselves if they don't have us doing all the heavy fighting and lifting. I want y'all to understand the mindset of a tether because he admitted everything. He admitted, yeah, we immigrants come over and we take over y'all and we, yeah, we undermine y'all. They, they admit it. They know. They know, family. And part of them being able to do that is for them to tether as us to come into our circles and tether as us and then work their way up the ranks. That's what the anger is about, family. So when we delineate and say, hey, no, you, man, where are you from? You ain't of our lineage. So we are not going to just let you come in here and be our spokesperson. So you're not going to wiggle your way up our ranks like that. So we're cutting off the tethering at its tracks. We're cutting them things off. And they got a problem with that. Let me get John Horse in the Let me get John Horse in the building. Then we get um um Thug Spike to John Horse. Brother John Horse, hop on. Yeah, what's good, Tariq? I'm good. How you doing, fam? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Man, I don't know what they uh what, what the tether's gonna uh do come November, cause uh you know you know how the white supremacists go, bro. They're going to specifically target the tethers first. They're going to target the dark yep. immigrants first. Mm-hmm. For yeah. And they don't peak yep. game on it. They they going to come for them first. They ain't even going to look at the Latinos. They coming for all them uh, the dark-skinned immigrants first. Right. And them dark they're going to be looking at us for help. And I'm going to be like, well, you're, no. Mm-hmm. You know, no, no. That's 
no, no, you, you guys are the ones. You guys are, y'all got it popping and you're the model minority. No, no, no. Get your little chicken dinner. Hold on tight to your chicken dinner because they're going to whoop that chicken dinner out your hand. So knock yourself out. Let's get Thug Spice in the house. What's up, Tyreek? You are so funny, bro. Um, how you doing, dude? I'm good. I, you, you are hilarious. And I love how poised you are. Every time yes, you give a solid read to anybody that doubts exactly who we are and why we are who we are like you you can't infiltrate this but i was so mm-hmm. interested in your film because i do a lot of film festival work okay. and um i'm in north carolina and i would okay. i would love to know how i could get get the film how i could see it is it on a theatrical run or are you on a festival run um we, we're doing a theatrical run and it's on blu-ray you can get it on blu-ray you go to microphonecheck.com microphonecheck.com mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah check it out it's a very good film very very good film but check it out beloved it's real good microphonecheck.com let's get latte what's up latte let's turn your microphone on latte what's your name latte liberal okay latte liberal you bounced okay you ain't gotta say nothing you shouldn't have brought your ass up here the minute I call your name, you're going to bounce. Let's get the Atavis. Brother, the Atavis in the building. And then we're going to get East Siders, Black Jack. Let's get Atavis. The Atavis, what's up, brother? All right, let's get East Siders while we're waiting on Atavis. Hey, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, man, I wanted to tackle so many things that that teller said, man. First thing, it's funny that we talked about from day one, when they start coming here, we told them about how white supremacy works. And they just yep. told us to shut up and, and don't say nothing about it and just pretty much lay dead about the subject. Now, when they starting to feel the heat, now all of a sudden they want to talk about, oh, we're all the same. And more to the point, you know, to show you when they started, when we started delineating, that really put a bug in the ass about that. You know, because they can't, like you said, they can't tether on to what we're doing. And for the record, right. we're not just talking about black immigrants. When we say tether, we're talking about anybody who tether off of anybody else's culture, particularly right. ours. Because everybody does that, even the so-called Wiggers, the whites. So we yep. want to make sure that everybody understands what's really going on about this. And also, for the record, we don't hate everybody. We don't hate anybody. But we're done with the disrespect. It's just that simple. And I'll land there. Thank you so much. Real okay, talk, can man. You, can, yes, um, Latte? You can hear me now, huh? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you now. Okay, so I, I really didn't bounce. Um, but my okay. mic was off. Um, I am a Black American. Mm-hmm. Um, and... I I really don't like the word foundational black American. Why not? Well, the the ideology uh, with the group. There. What group? Wait, wait, wait. What group? With with your group. There is no group. I have no group, man. Well, see, that's the thing. Uh, you say there is no leader. There is no leader or no group. You just made up something. No, come on. Yeah. L- l- no, listen, come on. Nothing. Listen, no, listen. no, ma'am. I, no, listen, ma'am. I, I've been ma'am, around. No, ma'am. Listen, ma'am. Let, let me ma'am, talk. Ma'am. Can no, I? no, no, no. You, you're not going to start lying. Okay. Let's, we're not going to do that. Let's, let's slow down, ma'am. You just made up a non-existent group. There is no group. If there's a group in your mind, you go deal with that in your own imagination. There is no group, nor am I the leader of any non-existent group, okay? So you can't pretend that there's a group and then make believe somebody's the, the leader of a group. Life don't work like that, ma'am. And then you want to build a straw man argument based on your imaginary group. We don't do that because your premise is already starting off wrong. Everything else is nullified, Okay. If you starting off on a false premise, everything you say afterwards is nullified. It doesn't need to be spoken if you're going to start off with a false premise. Um, ma'am, you are, you said you're the latte liberal. You are a, a, a Democrat. You sound like some kind of um, Kamala Harris, 
Biden type of Democratic shill? Are you like clicked in with the Democratic Party? Unmute your microphone, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, I put this little note in. Uh, ma'am, are you part? Of, are you a part of the Democratic Party? With like, are you a part of an organization with the Democrats? Let's be real. We talk truth to power here. I'm an independent, and I know you're not going to let me say anything. No, no, no. I, no, you're going to have to tell the truth. No, ma'am, ma'am, you, ma'am. You have to just tell the truth. Okay? I'm trying. You know? You're not going to let me speak. Uh, Marie. Am, but you're, you're not. But you're not going to, ma'am. You're not going to. You're not going to lie though, especially lie on me. Okay. How can there how can there be discourse if you're not if you're gonna talk over me? That's the discourse. You can't start, That's but, no, discourse. No, no, you can't, we can't have discourse if you're going to lie. We can't have discourse if you're going to mute my mic. Now, Ladies Ms. and Lady, gentlemen, Ms. I put Lady, a note in the chat. Read Ms. my Lady. chat. There cannot Ms. be dis Miss Gladys, Auntie Gladys. You can't start lying. You started off on a false premise. We don't do lies here, ma'am. All right. Well, you can say what you need to say, but when you start lying, we have to rewind and we have to start over with truth. Okay? Because I don't I don't do lies. I don't really I don't justify anybody lying. If you start lying, I'm not going to even validate that conversation. The conversation is invalid, ma'am. So you got to start off with truth. Now, let's start again. Now, let's start off with truth. Okay? Now, I know you used to running shit at the bingo games, but this is not the bingo game, okay? We're going to speak truth to power, Miss Gladys. Now, let's start. Unmute your microphone, ma'am. Your grandkid should have told you how to work an iPhone a little bit better. But go ahead, Miss. Please Gladys. stop with the sarcasm. It has no valid point here. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Now, now, why don't you like the term foundational black American? And don't pretend that there's a group that doesn't exist because that's not true. Why? What's the real reason? First of all, the ideology that you have. What ideology? First of all, Tariq, the terminology saying there is no leader. Right. When you know there is a leader. No, there's not. Sir, How can a person be a leader of a lineage? Please let me finish. No, you're not going now, to lie. Ber Bernice, if I, son, how can you be the leader son, of a lineage? When you throw Gertrude, how can you be the leader of a lineage? You can't be the leader of a lineage. What you're saying makes no sense, ma'am. What are you talking about? Do you have Alzheimer's, ma'am? What are you talking about, ma'am? And I see, hold on, somebody sent me a picture of you up here with, you got a picture of Biden and Kamala where you're gushing over them. So yeah, you're one of these Biden Kamala bots. Okay. Bernice, hop on. So you are Democrat. Another ship. thing, when you said you're going to take a busload to... Uh, stand against Biden, Biden for uh, against immigrants. That I is your that. interest. That is your interest. What? Okay, I didn't say that. You are an old pathological, depends wearing liar, ma'am. Uh, do you have grandkids? Do they sit up and let their grandma lie like this? I never said I'm going to take a busload of people any damn where. I've never said anything remotely like that, Gertrice. Ma'am, you Democratic shills are pathological liars. And that's what, let's, let's keep, let's, let's keep it a buck. You're upset because you're a, a Biden-Harris shill and 
we are looking out for our lineage and we're saying that we want certain things tangible for our lineage. And you can't really refute that. So you are making up a non-existent organization and building a straw man argument based on that. Now, ma'am, speak truth to power. Unmute your microphone, Bernice. Your socioeconomic status is totally different from a percentage of the people in this group. That may be there is no that group. may be your self-interest, sir. Ma'am, whatever group that's in your imagination, you deal with them when you're at the VA hospital getting your medication, ma'am. Deal with that non-existent group there. We are from a lineage. We have a lineage, and it's 40 million people in that lineage, ma'am. We are non-immigrants. So I don't know what group in your imagination, if you want to deal with an imaginary group, you have to deal with that on your own time. We don't deal with that here. Now, how long have you been a Democratic shield, ma'am? How long have you been shilling for Biden and Kamala Harris? See, this is one of these women who um, helps um, Clyburn fry catfish nuggets for the get out the vote campaigns. She's one of them. Go ahead, Gladys. Third thing, sir, your definition of lineage is totally wrong. How so? Sir, when you say lineage, you are taking it to one generation, America. Sir, you are totally wrong. You really well, need, to do, what, some, you need to do some research. What okay, is your Google lineage? Google. You have several you can, you steps to right. a lineage. You really need to go back to school, sir. School me. When you school say, me. You when you say lineage, you just take it to one generation. People school in me. this, people in this session, some of these people can go back five generations, and you're saying, "What is your lineage?" Now that's just four things that I have to We're say. Talking. That's four. What are you talking about, Gladys? You will never know because you put me on mute. And, and you're then not when muted, you don't want to hear not it, muted. you throw names. Gladys, like you're bully, just saying stuff. Like a book. But you can't even pronounce lineage right. You're like, this, you four generations from your lineage. Your lineage. You don't know what your lineage is in South Dakota. Your lineage is something special. I spill blood in Sama. You don't know what your lineage is, baby. You're just granny babbling. You're just granny babbling right now, ma'am. I'm giving you a platform, but it's just bad. You're just granny babbling. Why don't your grandbabies come get you and put you somewhere? The nursing home is calling, ma'am. You lost it. You shouldn't be driving. Ladies and gentlemen, you see how the bully reacts. Now he spent, Nobody's bullying he spent you. 30 minutes with that guy talking about Jamaica. Go, wasting go ahead. your time. Wasting you, you, your precious time babbling. because he has go ahead, go, nothing go ahead, to Gladys. say. Go ahead, Gladys. He has Gladys, nothing. Gladys. He's a comedian. Gladys. He's a go comedian ahead and, and he's Gladys. a grifter. He takes your okay. fun. He's not in the same socioeconomic uh, demographic. Ma'am, the, only, the only thing that's grifting are your dentures from them gums with all of that granny babbling. Ma'am, you're just saying stuff. Now, now, Glad, are you a black person, by the way? Somebody said you might be a white person cosplaying as a black person. Are you a black person? Gladys. No, listen. I, are you a black person? I am black. I am highly educated. That's why I know that. Really? That's why I know wait, wait, that. Wait, 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 any... wait, 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 wait. You're highly educated and you can't pronounce the word lineage? You keep talking about lineage, but you're highly educated? Okay. It, it, lineage rhymes with spinach. Okay. All right, education. Where'd that education come from? So I can keep my kids away from that institution. Go ahead, um... Gladys. And Gladys, are you, do you come from an immigrant background, ma'am? 
See, that's the first thing right there. When there's uh -oh. nothing to say, it's uh -oh. where do you come from? Uh oh. Where is your lineage? Uh -oh. And then where where is your lineage? And, and, and the then where is he your living? Comical the clown. He's the clown. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, family, y'all know when you ask somebody where their background is and they get to babbling, you know what that is. Uh oh, where her lineage from? Uh oh. Okay. Okay, I think you answered without answering, ma'am. Somebody has a different lineage. Uh oh. That's why you have a problem with foundational black Americans, because nobody would really have a problem with their own lineage. You understand? Nobody would really have a problem with that, but a tether would. Go ahead, Gladys. Let's hear you, dear. Go One ahead, of these days, you. I'm going to meet you. Oh, oh. And, um... And do what? What are you going to do? Please, don't, <laughs> don't do nothing sexual to me, <laughs> don't <laughs> what you gonna do lord <laughs> you're, you're gonna see that i'm a black woman okay because a lot of these aunties be trying to get no no, no oh god i no, you're married and and i'm I, married, I, I, and I'm married I, I don't want your but, i don't want your i don't want no I, granny i pants. really I want, wish i don't want granny i don't want granny pants, no no no, so, no but no. go ahead listen okay. sweetheart no go ahead dear. No, no, go no. ahead dear. are I, you are you married are you married to a white man no, 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 no. Okay. no. My my husband is black. He's, what's his What's he's his chocolate. lineage? He's chocolate. What's his lineage? What's his lineage? He's a black American. Okay. And and listen, I I wish that you would use your knowledge in a better way. I I wish you like how listen. How am I not? You using you, it in a you started. In Africa, or 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 Jamaica, or in the Caribbean, you were somewhere else, and you tried to um, make a living with those brothers and sisters, and and then you started again here. And I I guess you were what? doing well. What, what? Listen, let me. What what are you talking about? Where where did I try to make a living with somebody in Africa? What the hell are you talking about, dear? What are you talking about, beloved? What What are you talking about? What are you saying, dear? I know you're older and you, your mind be slipping away. You just be imagining stuff. What What are you talking about? Beloved, these people know you. So, like I said, um, don't become a clown. Don't be comical. Don't be a bully. They know you. And, and like right. I said, and they know you, man. We hear you. We hear you sound crazy. You're just making up things and saying stuff, ma'am. You're just saying stuff, ma'am. And you're a mature woman. The, you know, I have a lot of young people listening. They don't need to see granny just saying weird stuff, ma'am. You got to set a better example, ma'am. You can't be misleading people by saying things that's just deliberately false and deceptive you're way too old to be lying like this ma'am you got to be speaking the truth you're not going to be here that much longer you got to speak truth to get to heaven you're not going to get to heaven with these lies you're going to be down in hell you and your bingo cards just burning up with lies ma'am you can't be this kind of pathological liar you're too old for that ma'am Anyway, girl, ladies too. and gentlemen, he could never intimidate me. And Nobody's I wish you it. would feel the same way. He could never. Um, so man, I, man. I can't waste my time trying to get through to him because I already know his because pattern. And I hope you know his to pattern, too. He will mute me and he'll go through the same two or three personalities, bullying intimidation, same two or three, you know, types. How have so, I bullied you, dear? Listen, How have I bullied listen, you? Have I, I, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to try to make a mockery of the conversation. There's not no going to be any discourse. You're going because to silence my conversation.
because you started off lying, ma'am. I can't have you just sitting here lying. I just can't do that, man. We, this is a truth forum that we speak truth to power. I just can't let somebody sit here lying. But anyway, Gertrude, let me let you drink you some soy milk and go to sleep. Um, thank you, dear. Let me get you off here. Lord, this is a democratic shield. Citizen, Citizen K, hop on, brother. Good evening, brother Tariq. What's up, brother? How are you? Good evening to everybody. I am from Ghana, West Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I've been listening to you. Uh huh. I think it is important on a global platform like this to be respectful of other people's ideas, even if they contradict with yours. There's no need to make mockery of other people like you did with this lady and the guy before he, before her. Right. Now, now let's, let me finish, wait. please. Okay, hold on now. You're going to have to wait now. If you start lying, yes, you will be made a mockery of because we do not lie. And if you lie and you deliberately lie, we have to slow it down because a lot of these people, y'all come from these backgrounds where you're used to lying and scamming and manipulating and scheming, and that's why your societies fail. We don't want that energy here. We want truth to power. We don't want scamming, lying, and manipulating to be normalized. So when y'all start lying, we pump the brakes and we clean out the, the chimney so that we can get real clean smoke coming through. Now go ahead, Citizen K. Go ahead, Citizen K. Okay. Brother, can I speak without being interrupted? Uh -huh. I would appreciate that very much so that people can get educated and get information and they can make their mm -hmm. own minds. But if you keep stopping uh -huh. people, every sentence they make, you stop them, then the actual of thought is distorted. And that's not a way now, to have this kind of conversation. No, 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 no. Let me, let me explain something to you, sir. Um, we run this over here. And we run this forum and we have decorum. And we have order. So when you say something, I like for people to stop and elaborate. If you make a claim, you stop and elaborate on your claim. You don't make claims and then dictate how we're going to react to your claims, especially if the claims are false. So we have a real truthful dialogue here. Now, go ahead and continue to what you were saying, sir. Go ahead. Truth can be subjective. But anyway, no, let's put that aside. No, no, truth is, <laughs> let, let, truth let me, the point I want to make is this. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can personally decide or would, the, would your group decide that you don't want to have anything to do with shithole Africa. You can. Nobody can stop you from doing that. But there's a lot of people who have affinity to where they come from. If they came from Scotland, they came from Poland, they came from wherever, there's that affinity, that relationship. And I think there's a lot of African Americans who appreciate their lineage to Africa, their original okay. lineage to Africa. Now, yeah. hopefully, I, I pronounce the word right for you. Yeah. You're making yeah. a mockery of the lady, the lady, finish, you know. Let, let me finish, it. please. So 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 stop on, bullying so people. Let me finish. Can I finish? I'm agreeing. You're trying to it's bully sure everybody. Good. If you don't want okay. to listen to people, Slow don't come down. on Twitter spaces. Slow, man. I'm slowing down. I'm not mad. Don't, and don't try um, to insult me because I'll insult you back. You're getting musty mad. Do I need to get you some work? Do I need to get, don't you say F me. You don't say that to the green card people. Slow down. Now, what I'm saying, Mr. Musty Man, I agree. If people have an affinity to Africa, that's perfectly fine. But don't try to shame us into doing it, too. Now, go ahead, Mr. Musty, sir. Oh, he bounced. Okay. Yeah, buddy. No, no, no. Don't you try to get musty mad at me, sir. That don't work on me. I'm not one of your, your 13 hostage wives that you have that you beat on. You can punk them out. You don't punk me. No, no, no. Y'all used to yelling at women and all that. No, no, no. I'm not one of the, the, the wives you got hostages. You don't do that. We don't play that game. I was actually agreeing with them. 
and I wanted him to elaborate, but he thought he was going to kind of come in here and call shots. You're not going to call nothing, but you're an Uber to come pick people up. All right. Let's get um, Moshi. Moshi in the building. What's up, brother? What's up, Moshi? How man, are you, Man, I enjoy listening to your space, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way you well, handle these people, fun. man, I'm telling you, sometimes uh, when I had conversations with these folks at work, and I try to explain foundational black Americans to them, and they get this attitude about it. And, you know, they, oh, I'm Jamaican, oh, I'm from Haiti. And I'm like, I don't give a damn about either place. I'm from right. here. I'm from Washington, D.C., right? Mm-hmm. My family been here before America was created. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Your family has been here before Jamaica was created, truth be told. <laughs> so, and then the Ghana guy, I'm sitting here listening to this dude, like, do you know... We know the whole trick of the 400 year return back to Ghana, how y'all was over there selling black Americans land two, three times to the same people, defrauding the people that was coming back over there. They don't really want to mm-hmm. tell that truth. You know what they really was doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They don't want to own up to the little scams that they got going on over there. We're calling that out. We're not playing these games. We're, going, we're telling the truth. All the truth, the power. Now we're telling the truth. And people are making videos left and right talking about they're going over there and the scams are just nonstop, man. That's the long and short of it. I'm, we're not going to sit here and keep walking people into scams. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the truth. I don't want my folks to go over there and get scammed because they always run these little scams on us. Uh, uh-oh, is this Johnny Somali? Uh-oh. Speaking of scam, it's Johnny Somali again, guys. Well, all the tethers are coming through. Well, so this is the internet tether troll Johnny Somali. What's up, Johnny Somali? Oh, Mr. Tariq Nasheed. Hello. What's going on? King What's going Donkey on, Kong Gorilla Rifter. How are you? I'm good, my fleeing, musty tether troll friend. How's What's going on? I, am no, I am no tether. I am no troll. Yes, you are. You are fleeing. Brother, can we tethered. stop with the mutes? Why you keep muting? Oh, no, no, slow, slow down. Slow down. You're, you're always trying to cosplay as us, and you can never do it. You can never be us, sir. You can never be a... It, a listen, if I was African-American, I would kill myself. Uh, sir, the only thing you're killing is us with the must. Sir, you go around to different countries getting beat up like a tether. And fucking all the you women. Never, Don't forget that. Oh, no, I know the tricking, tricking off your little tether money. It ain't tricking if you got it, nigga. Oh, uh, yeah, it's tricking, and you ain't really got it. The only thing you got is AIDS and Ebola. So you can never be us. You don't have the game. You go around and beat up all around the world, okay? And that AIDS and Ebola, I'm going to come spread at your little march. Um, no, you're not, sir. No, you're not. Because we're going to spot that forehead a mile I'm away. I'm going to come to your march. What are you going to do in person? That's gonna. Well, that's great. We're gonna use your forehead as a jumbotron so people can see the performances. So that we do need you there. We need you to stand in the front. Okay. Yes, yeah, so so we'll anyway, play your jungle. Anyway, anyway, I don't want to hear tether troll must. Okay, this is a loser musty troll who gets beat up all over the place. Who's extremely jealous of foundational Black Americans. All right, he's so jealous. And runs around claiming that he's a black American. He tries to cosplay as us. A little musty child soldier, former child soldier. All right, let's get turned in the building. And we're in here heavy. Um, by the way, rallyforreparations.com. We still need everybody to support the Rally for Reparations. Rally, the number four reparations. And Johnny, definitely come on up. Come on up to the Rally for Reparations. Come on up. We, we'd love to have you up. It's going to be a phenomenal event. Hey, how you doing, man? What's up, Turner? What up, bro? Hey, is my shit glitching or am I like the only speaker on this motherfucker? Um, no, no. There's a lot of people speaking. You can't hear people? What happened? Oh, no. I just said I'm the only speaker. I thought I was like privileged and shit. I was like, thank you. No, that's fire, bro. Yeah. Now, where you from, Turner? Uh, I live in Cali. Cool, cool. So what's on your mind? Now I just saw Johnny Somali was in here, so I was like, oh, this is this must be a turn space. So you know I joined up. Oh, oh, so you're a feather tether like I'm him. not really what like part, him. I just think he's of, a interesting What part what part of um Africa did your family flee from, by the way? What do you mean by flee? 
flee, flee. They fled from somewhere in Africa. Where, what country did they flee from? Well, I wouldn't say flee. I mean, they leave and they go back. You know what I'm saying? But I, like I said, I don't support. Wait, what, what, which which country? Which country? Like I said, I don't fully support Johnny so much. Which country does your family leave and go back and forth to, sir? Uh, my country go back and forth to um, Eritrea in East Africa. It's a nice little country. Okay. Why, why were you so ashamed to say that, I sir? wasn't ashamed. Should... It was more of just like... You, sh- you shouldn't be ashamed of your homeland. Sir. Yo, you wait, really hold should... up, hold up, hold up. What do you mean I should be ashamed of? Like... I said you shouldn't be ashamed of your homeland. And I and I knew that you were a tether because you know, FBAs don't listen to Johnny Somali. You don't. We don't listen to unfunny, unwitty trolls. We that's not our culture. So only another tether would listen to that. You understand? So that's why I knew. Wait, so. my fault, uh, sir. What do you? What's a tether? Okay. Um, do some googling. But but okay, thank you so sure. much. You Google it. Google it. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? You can tell by a person's fan base. Foundation of Black Americans, we don't listen to unfunny, lame trolls. That's not a part of our culture. Only other tethers listen to that cornball nonsense. So, yeah, you look, and, and white supremacists. White supremacists like witty, un, well, non witty, unfunny troll shit. You know, white supremacists like goofy shit like that. We can tell that, you know, these people are not our, our audience, they don't come from us. It is. You're like the butt of the joke to white supremacists, you know. So yeah, you don't. We don't like you in our circles. What's up? I see you over there, Stacy. Only fan, Stacy. Lord, Stacy. I know you're probably in here trying to promote your Only Fans because you know, your 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 page is a little thirsty. Because well, Stacy, let me get you on. I'll, I'll I'll get you a couple of customers. Stacy, hop on. And Stacy's kind of out there. She just kind of babbles and says weird stuff. But she she has her hand up because I think she wants to get a couple of customers for her OnlyFans. Stacy, you want to say something, dear? You want to promote your, your OnlyFans? Stacy, you want to hop on, dear? And she has an OnlyFans, but her her shape is very weird. No disrespect, no disrespect, but she's very funny built. And I don't think she makes that much money on OnlyFans. I think she works at Starbucks to supplement her OnlyFans income to do that. Well, Stacey, she's not saying that. Stacey, I was going to give you a shot to really promote your OnlyFans, but you're not saying nothing. Okay. You need some Ozempic to do something with that shape. Um, let's get some, um, let me see. Let's get King... Tone in the building. Let's get King Tone. All right. Let's get King Tone in the building. And then we'll get um, Epic. We got a lot of people in here. We got like 1,200 people. King Tone. Hey, what up, though? What up, though? Detroit in the building. What's happening? Most definitely. Hey, man. I just, um, so I'm FBA, but I also consider yeah. myself. A pan African, so okay. I don't know if you. I don't know that this is like the topic of the group, and I don't know if you said this already. But do you consider those two things to be like problematic to be at the same time? No, my my question. No, if it's no, 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 it's not problematic because your lineage is your lineage. No matter what, if you are a crackhead, if you come from an FBA lineage, that's your lineage. So my question is, um, what has Pan-Africanist groups, what have they actually accomplished? So that's the question. Could you give some examples of people accomplishing some type of Pan-Africanism? Well, me, to be honest, I don't, I don't really know a whole lot of history of Pan-Africanist groups, but I do see the benefits in, the, you know, in different, different Black people from all over the world just kind of getting on code and supporting each other. You know, and I, I've experienced that that you know in some ways you know on my journey in life so that's why probably why i I lean more towards that but i can't i can't say i know much history about it though like i can't i I don't know okay all right but thank you so much well people say they got a personal journey usually that means they don't you know went somewhere and got with a chick from jamaica got with some 
got with a chick somewhere. Okay. Because usually that's where pan Africanism kind of extends. You go date somebody from another country, and that's the pan Africanism. Eric, what's up, man? Or Epic, not Eric, Epic. Yo, Epic, hop on. Tariq, can you get me? Uh -oh. I can hear you, sir. What's up, Epic? Thank you. Thank you for if you can hear me. I'm on IPC. I'm not on the phone. So can I ask you something? I've realized how you've great those guys. You, you realize what? I, I realize what, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Doc. Go ahead. I mean, the way those guys came through, I mean, that girl who you just created and the other guy from Ghana was defending her. Do you have some okay. predetermined predetermined thought about what someone is going to say or their perception and how you are going to process it? I mean, the truth, if someone says an opinion and maybe that does not match up to your expectation, does that mean they are wrong? Well, opinions and lies are two different. I don't let people lie. You're not going to lie, especially lie on me. If a person lies on me, we're going to have to shut the conversation down and bring it back to truth. Um, we don't do that. I know in your culture, a lot of people just sit around lying, and lying is normalized. We don't do that in foundational Black American culture. This is how we maintain integrity. If people are lying, we have to shut things down and stop the lies and then bring truth to power. You see how that works? Yeah, I get that. Um, personally, I'm a black, black African, I'm a Kenyan, you know, and I'm you proud of any black movement. I don't support it. You know, what I'm trying to say is the You're opposite of lying is the truth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, the opposite of lying is truth, right? All right. So, like, if someone does not tell what in your perception think is the truth, does that mean they are lying? Sounds like no, 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 a no, predetermined. No. no, 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 no. So a lie is a lie. When you say something that you know is wrong and you know it's false, that's called lying. There's no misinterpretation. Uh, the woman called up yeah. lying. She called up lying. She told several lies. And I yeah, stopped her Yeah, yeah, I lying. agree. I'm not a I'm not a misogynist, of course, I would call a lie a lie. But that other guy who came to defend that lady, I think he had an open mind. Um, well, he just started. I'm guessing. He got, he, got musty, he got musty mad and just started kind of babbling. I didn't get him out of here. So he just, he kind of had a temper tantrum and he thought he was going to control the dictation of the conversation and that just didn't work. But thank you so much, Epic. Yeah. It's, 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 Thank you, thank you. You're, you're taking a long time to get your sentences out, and um, you know, you know, the tethers like to try to justify lying. There is no justifying lying, guys. That's what the tethers you see. Y'all so used to lying. Y'all come from these cultures where you don't really have anything, so the only thing you have are your lies, and lying has become normalized. You got to come up by any means necessary and lying and scheming, so be it. And we don't do that. That's that's not how we do business. We don't get down like that. You dig? We do not get down like that. I, I don't. We don't want y'all to bring that mentality over here where that normalized lying, everything out your mouth is a damn lie. Then y'all want to project that onto us. You niggas are scamming. When we do business, y'all try to project this stuff. No, we don't. We don't do that. We don't do that. We got to have integrity with whatever we do. Let's get um, calcite. Let's get calcite in the building, and then let's get um, he who remains, either calcite or he who remains. What's up, Torrain? I saw Torrain. Did I? I'm in Atlanta. I could have swore I saw you at the mall in Atlanta today. Torraine, were you at the Linux mall today? 
I could have swore I saw somebody look just like you at the Linux Mall today in Atlanta. Um, he he who remains. Yo, what's up, Flex? What's happening? I'm good, man. How good, are you? Good, man? good, good to speak with you tonight. Uh, I wanted to say, uh, in answer to the question, what have Pan Africanist groups accomplished? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, mm. In terms of paradigm shifting with international culture. It's been foundational black Americans that have always moved the needle. And I do want to say yes. that uh, <clears throat> I'm a Gen Xer. My mother and father were from the silent generation. And I would always wonder when I would ask the question about Africa, people that are older, that are foundational black Americans would always say, I didn't leave anything in Africa. I don't know anything mm. about that. And I used to always wonder, like, why are they saying that? You know, why are they making these these comments? And after becoming more informed and listening to you, now I totally understand why. So I just want to say thank you, brother. Appreciate everything you do. Much respect, brother. Appreciate that. Let's get um, B E B Timmy. E B Timmy. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ebi Timmy. Yeah. I really think that I'm an African here in Nigeria and. On my own perspective, I feel like Pan Africans have not really achieved much. Because they have uh, or have Hello? They have or have not achieved much. They have not achieved much. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because of their still ethnic nationalities within themselves and most Africans still dis uh, how would I put it? Like uh, we consider the white people to be like racist, but also here in Africa, too, we have such things within us, so it doesn't let us to attain our full, our full gift as Africans and as Pan Africans. Yeah, and that's our view. There Thank you, you very much for this podcast. You know, Th Thank us. you, brother Ebitimi. Shout out to you, brother. All right. That's our good brother from Nigeria, Ebitimi. All right. Let's get Phil in the building. I couldn't understand the shit that Ebitimi said, but shout out to Ebitimi. I couldn't understand nothing. Did y'all make out what he said? Um, Phil? Hey, hey, Tariq. It's, yeah, it's Phil. Um, What's up, Phil? How are you? I am uh, doing all right. It's a, it's a good night. I'm just driving around. So, um, yeah, I, so I just to let you know, like, I'm Ethiopian, right? I'm, like, first generation okay. American. Um, and like, I, I just really want to understand like what your, what your like problem. Yeah. I don't want to call it a problem, but like, what, what's your issue with like, you know, black people from Africa and even like specifically East Africa, like what is like the Nothing. Main problem? Nothing. Nothing. You're out of sight, out of mind. I literally don't think about you. You're not one problem yeah. at all. Yeah, you, why would you be? Why would you be a problem? It's it's like the tether thing. I, I, I like you know what I mean. It's like the, the right the tether thing. It's like we're different from you guys. No, in, you being from East Africa doesn't make you a tether. Yeah, a tether is okay. based on an action, and so it's based on something you do. Okay, and if you undermine it, that makes you a tether. Tethers right. are a problem. East Africans are. Not so and there are a lot of tethers who do happen to come like, from East Africa. You what? You what now? What? What can? The, go ahead, brother. What now? I don't have you muted, Phil. Um, Phil. Well, I have a problem with your phone. Your phone, y'all phone never works. Y'all, your phone's always going in and out. Phil, I, I don't have you muted, sir. What's on your mind, Phil? Now you say what 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 problem do we have with you? We don't have a problem with you, sir. What what can what would I do that would make me a tether? Um, come over here and try to undermine foundational black Americans or show any form of disrespect yeah. to foundational. Okay, so so okay, so just to understand you, if um if I were to start a business and I only hire people from my tribe, would that make it be a problem? 
Not really, because people hire folks they know. You know, because I, yeah. I hire, you know, I, I hire people from L.A. and people from my community, so I make sure that they're taken care of, and then when I make sure they're taken care of, then we get other people. You know? So there's nothing I wrong see. with that. People look out for their group. But but I the see. problem is, you have people trying to undermine us. See, that's when we don't do that. We don't go undermining people. A lot of people come over from parts of Africa and the Caribbean and come among us, and they do things to undermine us while they benefit off of us, while they get things that we help them fight for, or we fight for things for them. And then there's a, a lot of disrespect. <laughs> so that's a problem. What happens is y'all bring over, unfortunately, some of the tribalistic mindset that you have there, you bring that here. And trying to use that tribalistic stuff on us is tethering. So you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Um, you, you, you made a, you, it makes a lot more sense now. Uh, thanks for all that. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much, brother. All right. All right. Let me see. We got a lot of people in here tonight. We got a lot of people in here tonight. Let's get um Charles. Charles, your lunch is ready. Go ahead, Charles. Brother Charles. All right, then we get... um. Matro, Matro wants to get in, but he's from Canada. I don't know what you got to say. Um, Matro, you keep raising your hand. Matro, what's up, man? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Matro? Yeah, uh, just a quick question. Um, just wanted you to expand on the definition of FBA because I heard you last week. You were talking to, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but you, you guys were talking about Drake and you were mentioning about mm -hmm. the fact that he is not an FBA person, but I thought FBA was based off of lineage because Drake is father is African American that for that makes him mm -hmm. half FBA. That's that am I getting that wrong, Gore? Mm -hmm. Um uh -huh, but um he um is from another country. Right. See. So then if you're let's say I'm just bringing out an example. Let's say your kids decide to live in Japan and they had kids out there, would that make them non FBA now? Um, they would not be of the lineage, for example. Well, now it would not be of the, like, let me give you an example. I'm a foundational black American. I got lineage that goes to Nigeria or the West Africa, so to speak, where Nigeria is now. Um, Nigeria didn't exist thousands of years ago or whenever they got my lineage there. Now, even though my lineage goes to that part of West Africa, I can't go to Nigeria and claim to be a part of their immediate lineage. You understand? I can't be a part of that because the nationality is different. I got to try to immigrate there. You understand? Well, to be, Drake, to be fair, Nigeria Drake, didn't exist when you were, when your ancestors were there. So, right, right, exactly. But, Nigeria has a lot of lineage based um, things as far as tribes and all of this stuff, but that doesn't matter. I'm not a part of any of those tribes, even though if you go to ancestry.com and all of that stuff, it'll say that, okay, you came from the Igbo tribe. You came from this tribe. If I go over there and try to say, Hey, look, ancestry said I'm part of the Igbo tribe. They're like, ah, oh, nah, nigga, but you left. So they're not going to let me be down. You left. You ain't a part of it no more. You understand? So when you go to another country and then you kind of have to immigrate back, just like with the Liberians, they try to play the whole thing with the Liberians. But yeah, when that lineage, when you go to another place, you have another ethnogenesis. Drake had an ethnogenesis. OK, he's Canadian. Even his his mannerisms, his voice and all of that. He had he had an ethnogenesis, you see, because he left. When you stay on the land and you never left from that land, you, you're still part of that lineage. But Drake is a Canadian, even though his dad is a foundational black American. Drake is Canadian. So then what about yes. what about Nipsey Hussle? Um, Nipsey, that brother, he's part FBA and he stayed on the land. His mom stayed on the land. He was 
He's from the land. He was born here. So even though his father is Eritrean, he's more FBA uh -huh. than his Drake. Mama, his mom, right? His mama stayed here. He was born here. Nipsey was born here. You see, and he's Foundation Black America. Yeah, but if if, if uh, let's say a Somali person was born in America, they wouldn't be FBA, right? It doesn't matter where you're born; it's your lineage that counts. Right. So that's that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to understand. Is it based off of lineage or is it just based off of culture? Because a Somali person that grew up in Compton, or in this case, an Eritrean, it's, can be an FBA. It's lineage, it's lineage, culture, and nationality. See, all of that plays into it. Like a Somalian, if you if your parents are from Somalia and you they came and anchored you here, you, you're still Somalian. You're just a Somalian anchor baby. You know your lineage doesn't really go here to America. You see. You see how that works? But then th in that case, Nipsey Hussle is still an Eritrean. He's not an FBA. No, no, because he was born here and his mom is FBA. You see? So you just, okay, well then you're going back to the lineage part. That makes Drake an FBA because his lineage is FBA too. But he was born in Canada. But FBA is not based off of where you're born. It's based off of lineage. So, you know, that's why the librarians are trying to claim it. But really, it's hard okay. to... Well, fact check the, the librarians but with Drake you can easily fact check that you know his father was born in America therefore that makes him an FBA no he, he has FBA lineage but he's not of this land he was not born on this soil so he had to immigrate here you see he had to he had to immigrate here himself you see he had to immigrate here. I do. If you had an ethnogenesis, if you had to immigrate here, you had an ethno ethnogenesis. No, that's you understand. No, I, I understand, but that's why I'm trying to bring up the argument of if you had kids outside of this country, would that make them non FBA? Because I don't think that would make them non FBA, but you seem to think that would make them non FBA. No. Uh, no. It depends on who I have the kid by. But you're FBA, so your kids are still going to be FBA. It doesn't matter where they're born. They're going to have FBA lineage. They're going to have FBA lineage. If I go to Korea and have a baby with a Korean woman and the baby's born in Korea, technically that baby is not FBA. The baby's going to have FBA lineage, but that's not going to be an FBA baby. That baby's going to have to immigrate over here. So you're not FBA. If you got to immigrate here, you're not FBA. I feel like this is kind of like the one drop rule. Like you're you're implementing the one drop rule when it comes to FBA. No, it's, like, it's just like other ethnic tribes, like Native American tribes. Um, you can't be a chief of a certain tribe if you don't have lineages that goes to both of the tribes and the land. Um, bloodline and land. That's why they say blood and soil. Uh, that blood and soil is a real thing. But... Um, you being on that land and you having the bloodline is very important. All of that has to factor in, sir. But you, you understand? But you, but you can claim native, uh, you know, like checks and stuff like that, even if you're a percentage. You don't have to be fully native. No, 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 no. Some of how those you got the whole bunch of five dollar Indians doing all types of janky shit. But a lot of the Native American tribes, in order to be a chief in some of those tribes, both sides of the family had to come from the lineage of that tribe. Um, for example, the Seminoles, um, there was a guy named Osceola. He couldn't be one of the main chiefs of the Seminoles because um, he had half white lineage. It was some real jank stuff going on. So. Um, certain tribes and certain ethnic groups, their real funny style about the lineage. Hell, even certain, um, the mafia, and, and they're not a, an ethnic group, but I, I give you an example. They are, in order to be a made man, you have to have both bloodlines tracing back to Sicily, to Italy, something like that. Because uh, um, they can't have people who are shot callers with dual allegiances. So this is why we talk about having dual allegiances in foundational Black American culture. If a person has um, a foreign lineage and an FBA lineage, their leadership has to be questioned because they have dual allegiances and they might have an allegiance to uh, an oppositional ethnic group that might try to undermine us. So you know, all of that factors in.
when no, it, you're talking you. about that. I agree you, you know what I'm saying? I agree with you 100%. That's why I brought up the you're argument. So, you're so, and, and, and by the way, you're Somalian, right? I'm Somalian, yeah. Now, you know this better than anybody, sir. You know how those tribal groups are over there in Somalia. You know how those groups are when it comes to people belonging to different ethnic tribes. You know they have the same types of rules. 100%. Of how the, right. So it's, you already know. It's, it's based off of your father's lineage. You, you, you like right. It doesn't matter what your mother is. It's You are what your father is. So even if, mm-hmm. like, let's say that Somali person married a, a white woman, that Somali person can still claim that clan, but if if uh, if a uh, white man marries a Somali uh, woman, uh, he's just considered a white man at that point, even though he's half black, half Somali. He's just considered a white right. man. And 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 I've seen some um, West African people sit here and look at anchor babies over here who got um half FBA lineage and half like West African lineage. They don't even consider them West African no more. They're like, well, you're you're an Akata now. I've actually heard that yep. from some of the people. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're an Akata now. You were born over there, and you're not one of us no more. They're real big on that over there. No, you understand? It's, so it's the same thing with East Africans. You know, they they have a terms. Uh, you're talking about the Jarer part, but there's terms for right. Somalis and East Africans that were born in the West. They call them Dakan Ellis. You know, certain stuff like that, derogatory stuff. Uh, Right, right. If they have, if they have a lineage of ours over here, yeah. they disown them over there. No, no, I'm not, they don't give. I'm not talking about lineage. You, I'm talking about like if they were straight up born there. Even if they were born by two Somali parents, they're still looked at in a negative connotation. Right, I did, exactly. Especially if it's half and half lineage. Especially, many of those East African countries will say, "Hey, they're not a part of us no more." They'll pull that, even though the 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 lineage goes there. They're like, ah, not really, no more. It's, it's you different now. You did so, that, that, so yeah. Same, so that's why same thing with Drake. Same thing with Drake. No, but that, no, but that's why I brought up Nipsey Hussle. I'm like, you got to You can't go, you know, fifty fifty on it. If you're not Drake accepting Drake, Drake, you can't accept no, no, Nipsey no, Hussle. No. That's all I'm saying. Oh uh, no, 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 because Nipsey was born here by an Eritrean father. Uh huh. Not but, by but an FBA father. father. But with an FBA mother, well, I know, but it's fifty fifty. It's 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 not a hundred percent. It has to, the lineage has to go no, both ways was, for them to be fully FBA because no, no, then no, they're going to have different. You, you don't. No no no, 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 no. That's you using Somali rules. We don't use Somali rules here. He has an FBA mother. He's born on FBA land. He's FBA too, and he's part of Retrian. You know that's fine. But you know we consider him my FBA brother. That was and that's that was my guy. That's my guy. No, but you and you, he respect- just, you just brought up the fact that. There's question. There's questionable, you know, loyalties when you have the fifty-fifty thing going on, and so you, you uh, never really the, know Nipsey Hussle which way he's going to go when it comes to that loyalty stuff. We we did what? You, you, like you never know. Like is he more loyal to his Richard side or to his FBA side? You don't know. Whereas a person who has parents that are FBA did, on both no, sides, you don't have to question their loyalty. You know, I I I knew Nipsey personally. You know that, right? No, but I'm I'm just giving you him as an example. I know him know what his allegiance was. Nipsey was a rider for the community, for, for black people here. He was a rider. That was my guy. He was a rider, for real, for real. He was a rider for us. So he had a 100% loyalty to his foundation of black American lineage and the black people here. And that was a 100% rider. Drake, not so much. But you don't know him personally, so how would you know he's not a rider? Uh, we see his get down. And plus, he's Canadian. And we've seen some of the stuff Drake has done. So Drake, the... Uh, Drake is cool. I don't know him personally, but we've seen some of the stuff that he's done publicly. Yeah, Drake is Canadian. All I'm right. Just, I'm just saying. I, I feel like you're going halfway <laughs> with Canadian. his FBA stuff. Like, I like Drake. No, 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 no. You, you, it, it is what it I, is. I, Drake, I respect the FBA. I, I want FBA. I want FBA. Like, but you're talking about a Canadian citizen. He's a Canadian no, guy. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm not saying you have to accept yeah, yeah, yeah. Drake. Simple. I'm just saying you have to hold down the line. You can't go halfway just because you personally knew a person whoever is an fba fully 100 percent, you accept them whoever is 50 50 you gotta have a like you gotta look you have to have two but eyes you on have to, yeah but you can't compare drake and nipsey drake wasn't born here drake is canadian no you but, keep trying to crowbar you keep trying to crowbar comparison no but it doesn't matter where you're born if a somali is born yes, in america that doesn't no, make no, him no, fba even no, if he's no, no 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 
no, no, no. You can't give us Somali rules, dude. No, no, no. You, we don't do Somali rules. No, okay. Rules. Let's say it's Eritrean. Good. You can't say an Eritrean is born in America. Therefore, dude. he's an FBA. Um, if he has an FBA mother. Yeah. So you just have to have one FBA parent and be born in America and you're 100% FBA. Is that the, is that mm -hmm. the rule? You're an FBA. If you're born here, you got an FBA parent. Yeah, you're FBA. If you're born on this soil in America with to an FBA parent, you're considered an FBA. You understand? What? Now you're in Can now you're in Canada, right? I'm in America. No, 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 no. I kind of hear a Canadian accent there too. No, I, I'm I'm from Canada, yeah, but I'm I'm in America right now. There, there we go. Yeah. There. There we go. Now, but, no one, I'm like, why is it like caping for Drake so hard? That's not, that's yeah. not really the reason why I'm caping for Drake. Nah, I'm, I'm more so I'm questioning yeah, like FBA loyalty here. Oh, yeah. Because I, I feel, yeah. you know, I feel like Nipsey Hussle and Drake are more kind of in the same kind of attitude. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. I, I'm talking no, lineage wise. I'm not talking about who's repping FBA more. I know Nipsey Hussle's repping no. FBA more, but I'm thinking from a lineage perspective, no. they're both the same. <laughs> well, listen, listen. And as far as any ethnic group, there's going to be a couple of outliers that are somewhat questionable that need special attention. You understand? When people are, this might be people born with to military parents, there's always going to be some kind of outlier. You, you, you understand? If somebody's deployed somewhere and they're born on a military base, there's going to be an outlier here or there, but that doesn't dictate the vast majority of foundation of black Americans being born on this land and our lineage going back to the founding of this land. That doesn't change that. A couple of outliers don't mean anything. Um, and also, you know that in, in, as far as, part, oh, excuse me, part of Somali culture, you got certain situations where people are born in a refugee camp in another country, but they're Somali, but they're part of this tribe. And there's, there's different little outliers, but your lineage is your lineage. That's not nothing to really negotiate. That's your lineage is your lineage, especially if you're born on this land and you didn't immigrate here. When you start having to immigrate here, that's when it gets murky and questionable. You, you see? See how that works? Yeah, no, I, I the, the thing is, uh, and most of us, and most of us, don't have to immigrate here Dr from somewhere. The thing about Drake is he's one generation removed from being FBA. It's not like Liberians. Like like Liberians, you can make a case. Hey, look, you guys were mm -hmm. you, you were you were gone long enough. We don't know if you're really FBA. There's no receipts. How can we prove it? Like, there's actually a receipt that can prove Drake is one generation removed from FBA. So for you to say he has he's not FBA, FBA it's kind of like like who are you to say he's not FBA? Because it's not. Because he has F because he had to immigrate here and foundation no, of black America. I'm talking about his lineage. I'm not talking about where he right. was because I said I made the right. he, I made the argument. If if a FBA yeah, has an uh, listen, I have West African lineage, but I ain't West African. Okay. Yeah, your West African lineage dates back 500 years. That's even further than Liberia. Right. right, right. So yeah, there's no date or whatever. I, I I'm not West African. Okay. Yeah, well, we, we 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 wouldn't have the receipt for it. Like, even if that right. was the case, like, how how can we prove you're West African? Yeah, well, my DNA says that I'm somewhere. I got some West African DNA somewhere. But does it give you an exact location? Somewhere in West Africa, because those countries don't exist no more. You know, so they can't really be that accurate because the countries don't exist no more. You can't say what landmass. Or what specific tribal group? Because those tribal groups were nomadic; they moved all exactly. over the place. But you, you understand? But but you can prove your FBA because you can date back almost a century. Yes. I remember you saying you yes. can date back a oh, century. Oh, I can date back. I can date back three centuries, dude. Exactly. On paper, on paper. So yeah, and, my lineage, and, both sides of my family. So can, go, I'm, a, I'm I'm full FBA, 100 percent both sides, and never immigrated to or from anywhere. You see? And so is Drake. He can prove the same thing. No, Drake had to. Okay, you. Okay, I didn't said this about twenty times. He's immigrated. He immigrated here. So you keep saying, but he FBA too. That doesn't. Well, he immigrated here. So not no, but really. You, you, you're talking about immigration. I'm talking about lineage. His okay, lineage talk, is FBA. 
Okay, you, you're talking in circles. You, you're saying the same thing over and over again. Okay, all right. You're just saying the same thing over and over. I'm not going to keep repeating the same shit now. All right. All right. He's just saying the same thing over and over again. But do, do, he's really trying to make Drake. Drake immigrated here. Okay. So, yeah. So he had an ethnogenesis up in Canada. Drake is Canadian. All right. Sandra, what's up, Sandra? Hi, um, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on the time you guys are at. Um, hi, hi, Tarif, and hi, hello, everyone. Uh, oh, well, hello, Howard. I'm all right, thank you. Um, it is really my first time to participate in, in your space, and um, I'm finding it interesting so far. And um, I just wanted to to talk on Pan-Africanism. Yes, ma'am. Now, Sandra, where are you from, by the way? Um, I'm in Canada. Are you from Canada, too? Yeah. Not a Canadian. Uh, Canada by way of what? By way of... Um, I am Canadian. Kenya? I'm Canadian. Ghanaian? No. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. No, sweetie, sweetie. no, no. What part of Africa did they go to before they went to Canada? Um, I actually um, moved to Canada from the uh, Republic of... Democratic Republic of the Congo, so Congo, there you go. yes, I'm from the there central um, central part of Africa, and I'm so proud okay. of where I come from. And uh, yes, indeed. I'm proud to be African as well, African Canadian. Okay. So yes, I just wanted to uh, speak on pan um, pan Africanism. Um, pan Africanism uh, movements that are um, in Africa with the goal to eliminate uh, colonialism and to kind of um, stop the Western power over African, African economy, I believe, and African leadership. So um, in regards to the subject here that says, what have an Africanist group accomplished? I would say there's still um, baby, baby movements. We need to give them time. Uh, we all know that African countries were colonized for many, many, many years. And now most of the Western powers do have power and control over um, African countries. So that's why the um, Pan-Africanism, that the movements are fighting so hard to um, to kind of eliminate all of those, um, the powers that the, Westerns, uh, um, the Western powers have over Africa. So um, I think the idea originated from, um, from Gaddafi, who had this idea of uniting Africa, having one currency, and um, also the Pan-Africanists, what they're thinking is to not have borders in Africa, have, uh, to have Africans unite all of African countries to just be one as a continent, and uh, to have uh, one leadership, and then to have one uh, currency. So uh, these are movements that really are focused into Africans appreciating Africa, loving Africa, working for Africa, and creating um, stronger um, economic system in Africa, education, and all of that. So I think they're doing okay. a good job. Like They're really working hard, but it's going to take them time. And recently, there was a movement in Zambia where um, the Africanists were, um, they, they, I think they marched because they want all the borders to be like just open so that Africans can just go everywhere they want and to just be okay. free in Africa. So we need to give them time and I think they're doing a good job. So I just wanted to add on that. Okay, because that, that's kind of an ideology. How come you don't think they've accomplished like none of that at all? Like none of the borders are open. Um, even within the countries themselves, the tribal groups are still very divisive towards each other. There's not really a camaraderie within the countries themselves. So why do you think they have not um, completed any form of the open border policy, even within the nations themselves? Uh, Tariq, look, Africa, as I said earlier, um, most of the all the African countries were colonized for many many years, and I said that the Western powers do have power over 
African countries. So it's going to take a long time because most of the African leaders are still kind of working for the Westerns. So it requires them to understand that we don't need the Western powers to, to control Africa. So it will take time for those leaders to understand that and start working for African, for their countries and for their people instead of working for the, the, the Western powers, working for uh, USA, working for China, China, working for Canada. So those leaders have to come to that understanding that we don't need them. We need ourselves. We need to strengthen our economy. We need to educate our people so they can know how to build their communities so they can become good leaders who are not expecting um, the Western powers to come and tell them what to do. So it's going right, to take right. time. As I said, it's still a baby movement, but let's give them time. And I think they'll do great things in the future. Now, why do you think they, they, a lot of people who are on the Pan-Africanist thing, They a lot of them really come to us, foundational Black Americans, to try to really shame us into being a part of it. It's always us. They never go to the Caribbeans. They never go to the South Americans. It's always you foundational black Americans. Y'all need to really get on top of this. Why do you think so much focus is on us to promote Pan-Africanism? But I think that should be something that should give you pride. Uh, you should be proud of because if they're coming to you, that means they've seen something in you. Maybe they've seen that your help will be really needed and then that you can do something. So I think it's something that you need to take pride in. So I don't personally know what they come to you guys for, but I think it's something to take pride in. And if you guys can help one way or the other, because at the end of the day, whether you are American, you, you came from Africa many, many years ago, or your lineage is in Africa, you are still Africa because we also know that even the white people themselves came from Africa. They originated from Africa because humanity started in Africa. So be, whether you are blue, you are yellow, you are Chinese, you are Indian, you are, you are whatever, you are, your origin is in Africa. So if they come to you, that means that they know that you're one of us and you're going to help unite Africa. So that's why I so, my answer. So then if that's the case, how come Foundation of Black Americans have such a hard time getting dual citizenship over there and we can't get citizenship unless we have a big bag of money we drop off there? Why, why is that? I don't think that's... Uh, that's I don't think that, that's... Uh, that's right to say because um, I've seen a lot of um, Americans that have gone to Africa and they've gotten, you know, African citizenships and they've gotten African passports and even um, uh, Hollywood stars or even rap people and whatnot. So Africans are very easy they people. Bring and, money. Mm -hmm. They have to bring money, dear. They have to bring a lot of money, Bam. Mm -mm. You have to go over and start a business. They they got to look in your bank accounts. They got to see how much money you got. We got to go over there with money. You just proved it by saying rappers and all the Yeah, if you have money, if you're a rapper or a superstar with money, Stevie Wonder, yeah, they gave him citizenship. He has money. When you drop a bag off, why do we have to drop off? We got to pay you to give us citizenship if that's our family. Why? Well, because we know that at the end of the day, money is important. We need money for everything. So even when you need a passport here in Canada, in America, you need to pay for it, even though you are Canadian, you are American. So money is important. Recently, just recently, we saw Harry and uh, and his wife, Megan, went there claiming that she has some kind of origin to Africa, 43% or whatnot, and she was well welcomed and whatnot, which some people are against and some people are for. So you can come to Africa. It's it homeland to everybody who wants to come to Africa. We Africans yeah. are really... Yeah, go ahead, please. And yeah, they were kind of dissing her. They were, they were kind of dissing uh, Megan Markle. They were kind of dumping on her, talking about they don't like how she dressed. And then they threw us under the bus. They're like, yeah, we don't, those black Americans dress like that. We don't dress naked like this. They kind of threw her and us under the bus, ma'am. So we, we don't want to do that now. We got to gotta tell the truth. But thank, thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is this, okay, she, she's saying stuff that ain't true, all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm about to stop that. See, people start saying things that ain't true. Oh, no, you can go over there. No, you know, you got to bring a bag to go over there. They're not letting us over there with no bag. Oh, they're welcome making market with open arms. Not really. What was that? Who was that woman who was shitting on us? 
and Meghan Markle talking about she was dressed naked and I don't like the way she dressed. Man, please. Uh, see, and, and, and the, the woman who called, she just gave a bunch of cliches and fantasies. One day it's going to take time. Okay. Could I? You, you uh, can't. Sh- Hold on. Oh, wait, who's this? Who's this? Uh, they, they call me Brown Dog. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead, Brian. Well, hold on. Let me finish what I'm saying. I get you on. But yeah, um, yeah, man. No, you know, people say that type of stuff and are very hostile when we go over there. Yeah, the first lady of Nigeria. Okay, shout out to Macau. Yeah, the first lady of Nigeria. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that was the first lady. My brother Macau just told me that. Yeah, the first lady of Nigeria shitted on Meghan Markle. Yeah. I thought it was like a random politician. I didn't realize it was the first lady. Yeah, they are very vitriolic towards us, dude. But but I digress. Um, brown. Yeah, brown, brown dot. <laughs> can you can you hear me? Brown, I can hear you. Are you Canadian too? No, no, no. I'm I'm from East Africa, but I, I live in South Africa oh. right now. Okay. What part of East Africa are you from? Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya. Kenya. Okay, there you go. What's on your mind? Um, well, I, I I've noticed the conversation has revolved now back to. Uh, pan-africanism but before we go there I, I just want to confirm so the conversation you were having with the somali guy being fba is about uh lineage nationality and politics right all three of those that would quite no, i wouldn't i wouldn't say politics just lineage and nationality you being a foundational black american okay okay yeah i think i think it's important i mean let me just say i, I don't have a problem with uh, the fba movement i think it's necessary for uh Black people to in America to define themselves as a distinct group, because um, I've often said that sometimes uh, as a diaspora we kind of treat uh, the Black American culture like a like a buffet, like a cultural buffet where everyone can come right. and eat from it, and then they don't acknowledge or respect the people who created the, the food in the first place. If you understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying, right? As a, as a Pan Africanist, Pan Africanism is about building an African civilization, and I believe that that's the future of Wherever you see black people on the planet, that's oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's just go. Well, now we let, before, before we get into the Wakanda Akon city, the question <laughs> is: What has what have they accomplished? In past tense. What have they done already? What have they done to create this Akon city, Wakanda? What has been done with Pan Africanism? Well, a, a civilization is not a Wakanda. It's not a United States of Africa. It's a, for example, the Western world is a civilization. It's composed of different. Okay. Explain and explain. No, I'm trying to explain. explain trying to explain, explain to you it. what it is. A civilization. Okay. And then I'll try to explain what you know what we've accomplished. Okay. No, because no, because no, 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 no. You're just talking in circles. We don't want to do that. This is real simple. What is Pan Africanists and Pan African Pan Africanist groups? What have they accomplished with all of this Pan Africanism that's okay. been going on for what a century or so? What has been accomplished? What can people say? Hey, look, this is what Pan Africanism has done so far. Go. Okay. I think the first thing that we've done is we've been able to piece back the history of African people. The whole Afrocentric movement, all the scholars were Pan Africanists. And the lens that they used to interpret our history was a Pan African lens. And without them, we wouldn't have a knowledge of self. We wouldn't know where we. And many of those people were Black Americans, Pan Africanist scholars. Right. That's that's number one. No, number right. Th- I agree with that. Okay. Now, number two, when it comes to the policies and the structure of the African continent, the establishment of the African Union, although it has, you know, its flaws, has helped to foster integration between many African countries, creating trade routes, creating systems of commerce that have been tried and tested that will work time and time again. We have made developments towards uh, fostering diaspora unity creating uh, communities in different parts of the, the world that are for the diaspora. And a good example of not this... Really, not really, because the African Union, they don't have us in it, and they kicked Haiti out. But go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. In 2001, the African Union was the first, to my knowledge, on the public stage to take reparations to the table for black Americans in 2001 at the Durban Summit, where they invited Minister Farrakhan, where they invited all sorts of people who I think you would say are somewhat credible in the diaspora community, black Americans, for example, Caribbean leaders. I mean, these are, these are important steps. Um, let me try take, and think uh, what else Take reparations to the table as far as what? What did they say mm-hmm. about who should get reparations? Because we've been talking about reparations for the longest. So take it to the table as far as who paying what? 
You see. Well, I, I think if I remember correctly, just to say. The, the, yeah, so there was a continental discussion, there was a black American discussion, and then there was a Caribbean discussion. So this was the early stages of reparations. And the, the foundation, uh, foundational periods was well, right. establishing whether or not it should be given and how much should be given. I don't remember the amount, but I remember that the 34 nations that were there, all African nations voted in favor of reparations. And the foreign nations that were invited to the conference voted against reparations. So I'm, I'm trying to lay a base here in terms of what they've been doing, because the work needs to be done in levels, right? You're not just going to uni unify Africa in one stage. You have to get the knowledge right, then we have to get the philosophy right and the politics right, and then we have to get the technology and the commerce, and that's what's happening right now with these revolutions. Uh, Zimbabwe just came out with a, a, a currency that's backed by the gold. You know, uh, we know what's happening in Burkina Faso and Mali and Niger and how they've taken out the French and the military bases. Okay. Um, these are the kind of things that are being implemented right now that come from Pan-Africanism. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, brother. All right. So basically, one-sided, like Foundation of Black Americans um, basically got black consciousness popping. And my guys telling me they um, over there in Africa, they're not really developing. They're not really developing anything like that. They haven't developed a comprehensive plan for nation building. They they haven't really developed that. This it's kind of pie in the sky. That has not been developed. See, a lot of people are talking very idealistically about what should happen, woulda, shoulda, coulda, and all of that, but they haven't developed no comprehensive plan. No, they haven't. Sincere love, the God. Hey, what's going on, Sarit? What's going on, man? How are you, fam? Doing all right, man. Pretty late over here, man, but I just happened to wake up and see that you was on, so good good to chop it up with you. Yes, indeed. But, um, yeah, Pan-Africanism, man, um, basically has been a failure because like you've pointed out and we've pointed out, you know, for a long time, it's been very one-sided. Um, Pan-Africanism was basically created by a foundation of black Americans. And we would, we have been the only ones really upholding it as a group. You know, you have individuals throughout the diaspora who have been riders and try to make moves or whatever the case may be. But as a group, we're really the only ones that have that mindset just just baked into our culture you know what i'm saying we just see black people no matter where they're from as being you know connected to us somehow you know what i mean for a long time at least anyway you know the delineation movement has started to shift that a bit but i always point out because you know i'm a hip-hop artist and uh you know my music oftentimes gets labeled as conscious hip-hop or whatever and so i'll get booked to do shows at a lot of pan-african events and, you know, me and my brother RP, we show up at these events and we do these shows or whatever. But one thing I always notice, there's never no Africans at the Pan-African events. Wow. There's really wow. no, there's really mo um, not really too many non-FBAs at the Pan-African events. You'll see some um, Jamaicans who are Rastafarians, you know what I'm saying? That's probably really it besides us. But for the most part, yeah. it's just us there wait waving this whole pan-african thing you know with the red black and green and all of that it's really just us you know what i'm saying and i told i spoke to um dr maat about this also and we all know you know she's a pan-africanist and yeah. she agrees with me you know she does these events she holds these events she attends these events way more than i have and she agreed with me she like you're right you know they're not there it's mostly just us so it's been a one-sided thing, and that's why we don't really see too many tangible accomplishments that we can point to. No doubt, my man. Thanks. So, and are, are you in? Are you here in Atlanta? Or are you in um, Maryland? I'm in Atlanta. I'm I'm um, I'm in Gwinnett though. I'm in Gwinnett. Oh, cool, cool. yeah. Did you um you hear about the whole water thing out here? The water pipes busting up. Out yeah, here? man. Yeah, yeah. Did they have that fixed? Uh, I'm not sure because it's not affecting our side, and so I just seen I just seen people talking about it on social media, but I don't know the details. Got it. All right, my man. Thank you so much, sincere. Appreciate All it, right. bro. Let's get um sunflower. Then we're gonna get Patrick sunflower. Hello, hi everybody. Thank you for having me on stage. It's been nice listening to mm -hmm. the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an American. I don't live in America. I'm actually live in Australia, but I'm a Somali, and. I okay i would have to agree with the last speaker i think um 
as a person who's grown up in a Somali household, who also has, uh, there's quite a few different migrants here from African backgrounds who live in um, Australia. I think Pan-Africanism means something different, I think, to people in Africa and people who grew up probably with, like, from Africa. I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like with colonialism, um, there's also still a lot of bickering between African nations and often there's just so much to deal with in one African nation that like other than kind of like when you see another black person and you know that hey we might face the same struggles there's not that instant kinship you know what I mean and I think that needs to be more acknowledged by other Africans because yeah. um you know, realistically, where whatever country that you come from has a heap of problems or social issues that are going on and, and that are engaging you. Um, I think sometimes having African-American culture, like I live in Australia, but that's, I think that's the, probably the biggest commercial that the U.S. exports, you know, outside to other countries. I think there's kind of like a... Uh, a lot of people don't know about specific African countries, but then they know about, like, black people. So I think sometimes yeah. it's easier. Um, and, you know, like also just as a consumer, I do love black shows. I think sometimes there is similarities about, you know, what maybe I've experienced or I've come across and whatever's like being portrayed on TV because there's sure, like there's not going to be a lot of white shows that are going to try to have that type of discussion as well. So I feel like sometimes it's shared experience against um you know, racism or the white establishment, um, which I think happens for everyone wherever you are. But I think this, you know, almost like a kumbaya for Africa, I think is very just like unrealistic because even within Africa, people like really disagree and have very different philosophies. Like just for example, like Ethiopia and Somalia, we're neighboring countries, but we're drastically different. So right. I think sometimes it's like, why do why does everybody expect Africans also to just be like, like a monolith? That's right. really like, you know, I feel like, yeah, the, Africa is not a monolith. The people on there are not a monolith. What the people want from there, how the people express themselves are not a monolith. And also what's really not taken into consideration is like most Africans, if you've migrated there or if your family is like a second generation or whatever, you're still a migrant compared to right. like a different history of an African-American. And I feel like you can't conflate the two. Like even if a white person still calls you like a nigger, like you're still, it's just a different, it's coming from a different, it's a place of ignorance from a white person, but you can't confuse the history. So right. that's my two that's cents. Good. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. People always try to make us the the bearers of Pan-Africanism, and we got to sit here and uphold this global Af African unity when it's not being done there. You, you see, the pressure is always on us to uphold this African unity, but they're not doing it there, and this sister just proved it. And they're not a monolith. They're not even on that there, to be honest. You know, that's that's the long and short of it. So I, I just hate that we always got to get shamed. If we're not sitting up here running around with a red, black and green flag, we ain't keeping it real. And all of the vitriol comes towards us, but not all of those gazillion tribes over there. So that's what we're saying. What's up, Patrick? <clears throat> Hop on, Patrick. What's up, man? Uh, I'm not trying to cold burn. Like, uh, I, I, I do support the. Uh... Oh, slow down, slow down. Oh, God. Okay, you coming in with the white supremacist little code, code burn. These are little white supremacist little slang terms. But go, go ahead, man. No, but you get what I'm saying. Like I'm not trying to glaze anyone, but uh, you are right about the. You were being slick. I I caught that. Okay, I just want you to know, I caught that. My audience might not have caught that. They don't know your little white supremacist code words, but I do. All right, so just to let that, you know, that, I know you. I know your white supremacist code words, but go ahead. Okay, go ahead, man. Yeah, I think you were right. Like, uh, the FBAs, I didn't realize the immigration thing. I lived in Africa for a little bit, and one thing I noticed about Africans when I lived there and some I talked to here is they are honestly, they hate black Americans more than white people, and they will 
try their best to uh, impress white people to, and like uh, think like this is what they think. They think like black Americans are uh, like punies or complain too much. And uh, they think America is made of gold. And so like they'll like uh, try to suck up more and like uh, try to uh, convince you that like uh, it's not black uh, Africans. It's that black Americans like are, you know, not oppressed because the white man gives them everything and they want to come to America so bad because they're hungry and they see like people with gold teeth and they're hungry and they're like, you, you guys feed them gold. I've never been to America, but there's beautiful pillows with awesome feathers. And at the same time, they're like telling you, you have to come have money to go to Africa if you want to immigrate here. But like, honestly, look what America does. They put us all, they put black people in debt for college, right? And then they don't even give them a job. They replace them with some African from Africa who has no money. And that's how they incentivize fucking over FBA people. So I just thought that was kind of real. You know, I don't, I don't know what your perspective is on that. Patrick, where, where, where did your family originate from? Are they from like Ireland or Scotland? Where'd they come from? And when did they immigrate here to the U.S.? Uh, I have some. I have how do you like check? Like, do you use like ancestry.com or some shit? Because I've done that. No, no, I mean, your, 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 your grandparents, man. You, you can just talk to your parents. Yeah, yeah, I talk I to mean, my grandparents. Right. They'll tell you when they immigrated or when your great grandparents, it's either your it, grandparents or your. Yeah, it goes back farther than that, right? Like, eventually, like, you have some like grandparents, grandparents, grandparents who like came here super early. You know what I mean? But like, how real is that to us? Because there's like so many different generations in between, right? But you, you would know. You yeah, yeah, no, I have some of them for sure that have came here super early. Yes, They're... yeah, but no, a lot of you, a lot of you in the dominant society, your people came after like eighteen eighty. So, where did your parents or great great grandparents immigrate from? They would know. That's not too far. Yeah, yeah, no, no, in... I know. Uh, I know uh, at different times, mostly from Europe, but some of them were here way before others. You know what I mean? Like uh... we know you're. Well, you, you would know by your last name. Like, is it O'Reilly? It's Reed. You, you My last know. name's Reed. Reed, okay. Ireland. That's that's kind of yeah, Irish, Irish English name. Yep. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So, do you know when they came? Uh, some of them, yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. Some of them okay. came before others. You know what I mean? Because like your grandmother's dad's grandmother's grandfather might have came here at one time, and then somewhere along the line, they uh, they bred with somebody who came here later. You know what I mean? Right, right, okay. Um, now, now here's the thing, because you know we we're a foundation of Black Americans. We 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 have a discussion going on with some of our cousins in Africa. You know, we, we're corresponding with them about what's going on. Now, in, in your community, where well, those birth rates, man, those birth rates are kind of struggling. Uh, absolutely, what right. Doing? What are y'all doing about them birth rates? Man? We're getting holocausted, man. Like it's, it's the truth. That's why I tell those African people in Africa when I talk to them on Twitter, because I don't really talk to anyone. I but I was, I was in Djibouti for a little bit, like in the army, but I, you know, so I don't keep in touch with any of the people I talked to there, but like some of the people from like, uh, Africa that I talked to, they all think like, Oh, America's like gold. And it's like the white man's so great. And I'm like, dude, we're getting killed. Like, uh, we don't have any babies. You guys have more babies and there's nothing really gold here. And I don't know. They just think like everyone, uh, like black people, in America are pussies and they don't struggle and they think they get police brutality harder. You can know they have kids. Flipped. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about your birth rate. So you just flipped it. Oh back yeah. yeah to no, no, no. Yeah. Their birth rates are way higher. Our birth rates, we're getting police brutality so hard when they use women to sterilize us. You know what I mean? The court system. So our, our you, birth rates are dying. You get, You're right. Police brutality. How, what, 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 by, what are you talking about? How they enslave us. How do they enslave you as a white man? So in America, right, they use the courts and violence because slavery is making people do stuff they wouldn't do and forcing them to do it with violence, right? What kind of violence are they inflicting on you? Well, they use money because money is a debt contract backed by violence. So it's super simple. There's always more debt than money. You can never pay back the debt because there's so, always more debt, so right? Imagine. There's only five types of non-dischargeable debts that they will force you to pay with, enslave you with, via violence in a court. And those, are, so you, you know, said, what those are right. Those debts are. So that's make violence. Huh? So you just you just pretend. No, it's not violence. Court. What happens if you don't pay this back? The police will come and use violence and put but you in cage. But they're not doing anything violent to you. What are you talking? So hold on. So this if, is, I, if the police come, 
Hold on. This is white supremacy 101, man. This is white supremacy 101. The violence to them is making them pay a bill. They look at that as violence. That's their violence. Okay? Making them have to pay a child support check is violence. Well, that's uh, white supremacy There's only five bills. They will use violence to make you pay. And if you don't do it, they'll throw you in jail, right? They don't. They don't use systematic violence against white dudes, man. Uh, they can you pay a bit? They use it against That's everyone, not, but whites seem to beat it that, better. I agree, but they're not having kids. But the five debts that, that they use violence. That's that's something white now say so. No, I was just gonna say the five debts. It's a portion of taxes, federally backed. Okay. Through. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm not gonna let a white supremacist sit here and lie to y'all, man. I just wanted to, you know, yeah, just to show you the I'm white and I say so narrative. Oh, Lord. Wow. These people, boy. Let me get one last call. Let me get my brother Mikhail. I know he has something to say about what they were talking about building in Africa. My brother is very well versed on what they're doing over there. Brother Mikhail, let us know what's really happening with the infrastructure and the plans over there to build communities in Africa, brother. Great Minister Cole. My I am so good, brother. How are you? I'm just uh, enjoying the uh the Barnum and Bailey uh <laughs> variety show. <laughs> Jeez. Man, man, man. Oh boy. Okay. Look. Let me unpack this. Less than two minutes. First of all, mm. Pan African, especially uh, in the coming uh, 20s. Oh, man, you're breaking up, brother. Ah, brother. Ah, you're breaking up. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm my brother's phone. The reception is bad. And I really wanted him to speak on that. Okay. Um, all right. Let me, let me, okay. I'm going to get them next time. I mean, let me close it out because I've been on here for, oh Lord, been on almost three hours. So let me shut it down. Everybody go to rally, the number four reparations.com. Get my top five a nice booties. I want to set the move on wide R&B grooves. Rock topless when we cruise on.